let's start IBC. So we'll do the basics. IBC is very important. Eight to ten marks minimum. Page number. Very very important. We'll finish it off. We'll take some time. Couple of hours we'll spend and we'll finish one eighty four. In that PPIRP part, I will uh, give later. That is hardly anything. PPIRP also they may ask, but main IBC if you figure out PPIRP is nothing. So yes, one eighty four. So basically, guys. Section 184, uh, sorry, page 184. This IBC code, that is insolvency and bankruptcy code. The fact that they have used the word code itself means it's a codification of all the laws. We had insolvency provisions in Companies Act, in Partnership Law, in uh, what do you say, in uh, RDD BFI, Recovery of Debts Due to Banks and Financial Institutions Act. So many laws had insolvency provisions. I had to merge everything and make it into one. Problem with other laws were used to be that if I was what do you say? Uh, if I sued you in uh, some certain uh, court of law, one other court used to put a stay order. That is through a debt recovery tribunal through a RDD BFI Act used to put a stay order. There was one more law. There is one more law called Surfacey Securitization and Reconstruction of Financial Asset and Enforcement of Security Interest Act, like a rap song, it is right. So that now that's a C A rap song, surfacey full form. And then, so if you see, surfacey also is a problematic area because again, there if I put a case against this company, somebody else will uh, put a stay order saying that no, I have a right over the asset. The problem was always like this: there was no resolution. Resolution is to take twenty twenty five years. So to put an end to it. Rather than Insolvency and Bankruptcy Act, they came out with the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. So predominantly, if for example an individual like you did not pay me salary for almost uh, four or five months, let's say salary due is five lakhs, I could have only gone to civil court. And I don't know your financial status. What is your status? I don't know. So to ensure that all these things are covered, whereby even an employee can sue the company. For when there are initial uh, signs of distress in the company, even employee can sue the company. That's why insolvency and bankruptcy court came. What's the difference between insolvency and bankruptcy? Insolvency is for companies. Bankruptcy is for individuals and partnership form. Insolvency is for companies. Bankruptcy is for individuals and partnership forms. For individuals and partnership forms, it is not yet notified. In this, if you borrow thousand rupees also, and you don't pay thousand rupees, that other person can, you know, sue you under IBC for thousand bucks. That is this part. On the other hand, if it's an insolvency case company, it was one lakh before. Now they have made it one crore. One crore. Act is decision made passed into law. Uh, code is collection of law. Acts already passed into law. Insolvency is for individuals, known as bankruptcy. Organization insolvency, and for non-corporate, it's called bankruptcy. For corporates, eventually it will go into liquidation. So this code will apply to any company incorporated under the Companies Act or under any previous company law. Previous law will be all the old acts under Companies Act. Any other company governed by any special act, LIC, UTI, etc. Any LLP also, yes, LLP also can go for uh, IBC. Any other body corporate incorporated, notified by central government. So I'll explain that full procedure quickly. What happens is three types of people can apply to NCLT. One is financial creditor, operational creditor, corporate debtor. Corporate debtor means company itself. For example, if if I take Kingfisher, Kingfisher, when Kingfisher happened, all this can happen. This was not there. Because of that only, this law was actually for one of the main reasons. So there, if Kingfisher, I need not have waited for Kingfisher to go down the drain for so long. When the moment I feel Kingfisher is not doing well, then only I could have applied, because that time the limit was how much? One lakh. So operational creditor means employees or anybody who has given goods and services. If Kingfisher has not paid employees their salary, one lakh. Could they have gone for IBC? Yes. Now the limit has been increased to one crore. So if all employees put together have not paid their salary one crore, can I go to IBC? Yes. 
in ibc financial creditor is a person to whom a financial debt is owed financial debt means what any money loans etc corporate debtor the company itself will feel that no i before anything can happen no i am only telling i do not have the money so please come and do the needful so these three people can apply to national company law tribunal any of them and what should be the minimum default 1 crore default must be 1 crore nclt after listening to the petition what will they do they will accept the application once they accept the application so in all other laws the debtors will still be in possession of the company correct in this particular case the creditors will walk in and they will take over the company so this debtors that is the board of directors will be suspended shareholders powers are suspended and the creditors will take over in the creditors which creditor will take over financial creditor operational creditor financial debt operational creditor cannot enter it enter he will just you know he can apply mind you he can apply but he cannot enter this process of taking over so one taking over means they'll form a company and that company and they sorry they'll form a committee and that committee is called coc committee of creditors the best part about ibc why it is a code is the moment nclt opens its door saying that let me open the door of the company also you go there and do your procedure i should be obviously uh, be given a free reign and some breathing space so the beauty of nclt is the moment ibc is the moment they open this procedure there is something called as moratorium during our childhood we used to play that statue game so like that that nclt will tell statue which means under rdd bfi act high court or any civil court or you know surface all those laws if they if the other people who are already laws are going on under that cases is going on if they bring a stay order will the stay order hold any value no they'll say statue stay order will not hold any value so they will just stop there so rdbfi i court etc it will not do anything it will just close there so it is called moratorium it is called moratorium basically nobody can sue and the thing is no further suit also will be instituted but the beauty is this entire procedure will be there for 180 days plus one time extension of 90 days but overall including the court delays 330 days you have to finish it it's not 180 plus 90 that 270 is already there plus 60 days extra no at 60 days is only for court delays court delays that's it now during this 180 plus 90 this entire process is called corporate insolvency resolution process what should i do the coc basically nobody will go inside like that directly they'll take a representative that representative is called as a in interim resolution professional and once you enter the company here this fellow will be called as i mean coc coc will appoint a person called resolution professional the resolution professional now his job is to find a resolution how will he find a resolution he will say rather than allowing this company to go down the drain let me now invite new people to come and take over so he will give all the documents saying why the company can be taken over so that is called as information memorandum he will give out this information memorandum to everybody and then say i invite you to express your interest if you want to take over this company so he will say inviting here by expression of interest so all potential companies who want to take over can give their expression of interest whereby they want to take over the company and along with their expression of interest they will give something called as draft resolution plan what is my plan for kingfisher how will i take over they'll give like that many people will give the plans ultimately you can decide the plan coc coc will decide the best possible plan what all should the plan contain first of all it should contain insolvency costs how it will be then how will the creditors be paid 
financial creditors, how will they be paid? Operational creditors, how will they be paid? Will they be paid full? How much? How much of a haircut I should take? Haircut means, you know, that 100 percent I will, will not get money. So whether I can, I am okay with 50 percent, 60 percent. It's again a compromise there, negotiation. So that is what they will decide, and then they will vote. Generally, in the COC voting, 51 percent is for normal items. 51% is for normal items, then 66% is for what? Special things, 66% is for special things, we will see. Then some cases 75% is also there and some cases 90% is also there. So this is what they will ask, you know, in the exam you have to be careful about this. So that's all. After that, this entire process should happen when? Within 180 plus 90. Using all those draft resolution plan, I will go to the COC. I means resolution professional will go to the COC and say, sir, these are the options you choose. So they will choose by passing a 66% majority. There it doesn't end. Final approval should be granted by whom? NCLT. NCLT approves over CIRP ends. If NCLT disapproves or for that matter, the COC only rejects all the plans then winding up. That winding up proceeding is called liquidation. Liquidation. So, CIRP ends, liquidation begins. For our syllabus, we have what all? Application is also there. CIRP is also there and liquidation is also there. All the three things are there. Now, best part of the story is here, Vijay Malya sends his son, Siddharth Malya to buy me buying the company through me, uh, that, that happens. So, Siddharth Malya, is it allowed? No, that's why one uh, Arun Jaitley introduced 29 capital A. Eligibility criteria for resolution applicant, the person who is applying that expression of interest who is giving is called as a resolution applicant. So, that fellow has to be eligible under 29 capital A. Now, this is all for big, big companies, okay, no problem. Small, small companies, correct? Correct, the thing is nobody will buy that company. I was a, uh, I was a company who, I was a person who started a company, assume. Then I moved on to other companies, I exited this. And, but this is my very, uh, you know, important company that I started. Now I realize this company is not doing well. So what happens? I will, and the company is, you know, going for IBC. Problem is, Nobody wants to buy. Who will buy any small company? I will go back and say, sir, that is my, I started that company. I moved on to other things. I was busy here. I appointed others. They did not do properly. I am not a defaulter, sir. They may be defaulters. But I am, I am definitely a promoter. I agree. So can you please allow me to take? Answer is no. Why? 29 capital A is there. You are, are you a eligible resolution applicant? No. You are a promoter, ex-promoter. Not allowed. So, the, especially this used to happen in MSME, micro, small, medium enterprises. For those companies, MSMEs, special provisions now, before going to this entire process, why, do, why don't we make a pre-packaged resolution, correct? That is nothing but pre-packaged resolution, PP, PPIRP. Pre-packaged insolvency resolution process, PPIRP. So that is predominantly only for MSMEs. There is a small off topic. This also, they may ask here and there, they ask. Okay. But it's ultimately it's the if you understand the main structure, and all this becomes very easy. Right? So that is the PPRP. This part, you know, I'll give you a video. It's all this a one hour video is there because we have to do other things as well. So this anyway, this part is very simple, guys. Once we understand the full procedure properly, then it becomes very simple. Let's see. So, that is the overall view of the entire section. Moving on here, any company incorporated under the Companies Act, done, done, all this done. This part we will explain in a while. Partnership firm and proprietorship firm, it will also apply individuals. F and G, as I told you, not yet notified. F and G, not yet notified. It is not applicable for partnership firm and all now as of now. But it will come in the future for sure. So, it is a very, very niche area for you also to practice in. Superb money is there in this. Whether you want to practice as a uh, resolution, resolution professional or simply as a consultant also, giving advice as to how to go about good money. 
So regulatory mechanism ultimately just like SEBI, RBI, here the entire regulation is handled by a person called or by an entity called IBBI. Whenever we use the word board in this law, it is not board of directors, it is IBBI, Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India. Under it you have insolvency professional agencies, ICSI, ICA, ICMA and all those things. They are the agencies conducting the examination. And I told you about resolution professional, interim resolution professional, etc. Who are they? They are insolvency professionals. So, CA, CS, SWA lawyers, all of them will sit across the table, will of course write the examination. It's the same, whatever the new syllabus, whatever syllabus you have, same thing is there, little bit extra. So, you can write that examination, you will become an insolvency professional. And tomorrow, nobody should give a loan to a person who's already taken loan and was not repaid. To ensure that happens, your entire history, loan history, repayment history, everything is now, uh, it is now obviously stored in a large company with 500 crore plus turnover called IU, Information Utility. So they store your information. You will get a number. Tomorrow this company, if you put that number, I will give the entire history of how much default etc. So it will be better. This is basically preventive measure. Tomorrow I should not give loan to a company who cannot doesn't have the appetite to repay properly, doesn't have the risk appetite, so to speak. That is one part. N, adjudicating authority, adjudicating authority for corporates, LLP, the other part we will explain. This is the only single window, a single uh, structure, NCLT, NCLAT, Supreme Court, no High Court and all, NCLT, NCLAT, Supreme Court, special bench of IBC, this is. For individuals, this has not been notified, right? So it is DRT, Debt Recovery Tribunal, DRAT and Supreme Court. That is what it is. The entire process I have already told. So, what we need to do here is understand financial credit or operational credit or corporate data, all these things and check what is to be, the, what is the process, etc. And if you see minimum amount of default here, how much is it? 1 lakh. 1 lakh from 1 lakh it has become 1 crore. During COVID, the onset of COVID, obviously people will not be paying. Right? So that's why there was a one year relaxation. Should not get confused with this limit of 1 crore. Limit of 1 crore is for default. But any defaults which were happening on or after 25th March 2024, one year. 25th March 2020 till 24th March 2021. All that entire one year. Any default more than 1 crore is what ignored means you cannot go through IBC, cannot go through CIRP, cannot apply IBC, not possible. What about the defaults which happened before 24th March 2020? Yes, you can. But now that one year period is over, now can I open those old cases? No, it is like a permanent relaxation. Mind you, this is not equal to this. This is also one, one, one crore only, but that one year is for, you know, this concession itself. The, this one crore still remains. After 24th March 21, all defaults, etc. are there. In the exam, try to see the date of default if they have given. If they have given any time between 20, you have to write the normal procedure, but as a note, you should write this. For that, specially one or two marks will be given. So you should be very alert as to if at all they have given date of default. So if the default falls between 25th March 2020 to 24th March 2021, then no, yes, no, IBC will apply there for that. Now, before we go into this procedure, we need to understand who's a financial creditor, etc. and all that. And if you see this uh, applicability of the code, okay, we saw all these things. Will the code apply to, what do you say, banks? Can I do IBC of banks? No. They said financial institutions are not counted. You cannot do IBC of banks. That 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 will be the end of it then. You know, if banks go into IBC, gone. So that's why they say no, not possible. But can I do one question they had asked? They wanted to do an IBC of a NBFC, non-banking finance company. Can they do it? So though financial institution includes an NBFC, but then there is a separate clause where they say, can I do an IBC of an NBFC? Yes. 
one second it is given here these are some miscellaneous points here page 209 the cent section 227 the central government may in consultation of uh, consultation with the appropriate financial sector regulator notify financial service providers which may go through cirp so this is divan housing finance limited was one of the uh, practical examples where it went to cirp so which such companies can go actually so asset size 500 crore or more you can just write down your asset size 500 crore or more In, as per the latest audited balance sheet those companies they are notified companies they are the notified companies any nbfc with an asset size of 500 crore or more can be can go through what corporate insolvency resolution process even though it's a financial service provider ibc does not apply to financial service provider a financial service provider can apply for ibc against other companies but other companies cannot apply for ibc against a financial service provider but the exception is this 227 if your asset size is more than 500 crore, I can apply for IBC. First exam, the best example I can think of is Divan Housing Finance Limited. Divan Housing Finance Limited. So coming back with this uh, basics, let's slowly begin uh, the first one, one by one. Corporate insult. So basically, we have to discuss all the three procedures, guys. Once we did the introduction, then the CIRP, then liquidation. How can apply from one by one? Occurrence of default, there will be a financial creditor. Financial creditor who will apply. So financial creditor is anybody who has given money for the time value of money, whatever has expended, it is called financial creditor. But the thing is, anything for time value of money, etc. So there was this uh, company JP Group that was the builders JP Group. They had one subsidiary JP Infratech or whatever. They built one you know skeletal structure, dream project, and they have taken the almost around uh, twenty five thousand crores from thirty two thousand home buyers, middle class people. So thirty two thousand people, twenty five thousand crores they have taken, telling that they will do. So what they did, they diverted this funds to the holding company and holding company invested elsewhere, many, many places. This was just a skeleton structure and it was called some uh, JP dream project or something. So these home buyers came and said, boss, what is this? You have not given me the house even after so long. Then they said, I will apply for IBC against you. So JP infrastructure said, but we already given you what you wanted. Like, no, how? You have... You have, you know, where is my house? You said, see, your house was your dream, no? <laughs> See the name of the project, dream project. No, already given. So, the thing is, the moment they went, it's true story. JP Infrastructure said, you do whatever you want. Are you a corporate debtor? No, I am a corporate debtor. JP Group is telling. Are you a operational creditor? No, you are not an employee. You are not the government. You have not given any goods. You have not given any services. Third one. Are you a financial creditor? No, you have not. You have given money, but is it for time value? Is it for interest? Is it a loan? No, you have given an advance. Advance is not covered here. Advance for the supply of goods, it is what you have given actually. For me, one house is a good stock. For that, advance you have given. That is not considered as financial debt itself. So that's why after this particular case only. What happened was they lifted, it went to Supreme Court, PIL was uh, filed. They lifted the corporate veil and made JP Group liable. After making this JP Group liable, 
by that time jp only went for ibc corporate data but who was the big loser these people if they had done dream yeah if they had done the ibc slightly before when initial signs of distress and they were transferring only and when one month delay also they had done it it was if there was a possibility then they could have saved some money because by the time this happened the money was completely exhausted somewhere so the problem was that's why they changed the law now they said any person allotty under rera if he has given allotty under rera which means rera should apply rera will apply only if it is more than 8 homes correct 8 flats or how many square square 5000 at 500 square meters or whatever it will translate roughly to 5000 only so yes square feet so then only rera will apply so all big big projects small houses two three houses seven houses and all if it's there rera will not apply so large uh, spaces obviously then if you are an allotty then obviously it will be deemed to be what financial debt and you are a financial creditor so that was the amendment made quite some time ago but yes financial creditor then application such financial creditor anybody homeowner also now homeowner financial creditor will make an application to whom adjudicating who is the adjudicating authority national company law tribunal nclt financial creditor can be any uh, you know sbi all those people also right sbi the main job only is to give loans correct they will keep giving so yes application I make an application now. Then they ask, "What all should be there? There should be a record of default, name of the resolution professional proposed as an interim resolution uh, uh, professional. The interim means because others have not joined. That's why you are an interim professional. Other information. Now, once you go to NCLT, NCLT within fourteen days should pass an order. Whether default has occurred or not occurred. If it is not occurred, no, they will give seven days time to. rectify the defect here act uses the word shall within 7 days here also act uses the word shall within 14 days both are mandatory obviously but then one court they only took some 30 days to pass the resolution nclt then when uh, this fellow they gave 7 days he poor guy filed it in 10 days so they said rejected because you didn't file on time This fellow said, "Bro, you only took 20-30 days, correct? Then it went to court. I'm not joking. This case went to court based on question of law. I took 10 days. You also delayed, no? So NCLT went to NCLAT. NCLAT, NCLT first it went to the NCLT wing where they did this adjudicating mechanism. They said, no, it's okay. I you I will reject. Went to NCLAT. NCLAT also told the same thing. We can take whatever we want." you have to do it within 7 days then it went to supreme court supreme court said boss everything should be equal so if you here it is may here also it is may but do not misuse this provisions so if it is genuine reason you can do so so that was in a supreme court decision surendra trading company surendra trading company versus jugilal kamlapet jut mills it is not mandatory what is not mandatory within 14 days is not mandatory depends on the facts of the case so default occurred default not occurred admit the application reject the application if you have admitted uh, rejected the application 7 days time is given for you to rectify i'll say these are the things are not there please furnish within 7 days immediately it's all timeline based here if the crp has begun then the moment you accept the application i will open the doors of nclt cirp will begin corporate insolvency resolution process the 180 days will begin from that day if the irp is not appointed then cirp will begin from the date of the appointment earlier there used to be a law where irp was appointed within 30 days and all first of all 180 days in that 30 days only if you take to appoint that fellow that's why they say no the moment CIRP begins. That is the day you should appoint the IRP also. No wasting time. Now the thing is, can financial creditor uh, jointly apply or single? He should do joint. And if can I do it with others? And if for me there is no default actually, 
but for you guys they have not paid can i still join the petition all that is a yes so financial credit either by itself or joint with other financial creditors can do so or cg notified person is what they say who are the cg notified person in 2019 they have given first is guardian so basically if a minor is holding the uh, has given uh, has given some money or anybody else who is incapacitated is given money, then the guardian can apply on behalf of the minor. Executor or administrator of an estate of a financial creditor. Who is an executor? When somebody dies, so the will says it will pass on to the son. So, before that it will go to a lawyer who will execute the will. So, he is called as the executor. So, until it is still being passed on, basically I have, my father has given some 10 crore to a company and now he, is, he has passed away. Will the son or the legal heir have a right over that 10 crore? Yes. So, now through the execution, executor, it happens. This is a separate area only, I am not kidding. It is called creation of trusts for high net worth individuals because they have so many businesses, so many things. So, there is a trust from my, one of my friends works in that so his job only is to go to these high net high net worth individuals and uh, convince them to create trust as to how once you die how it will be passed on to various people that also is an interesting area which cas can work on right so executor that is an executor administrator is what administrator also is the same only when a person dies father dies so that is transferred to a son so, he is ready. He is ready to take over. Then one more fellow will come. Randomly, after death. He will say, I will say, I am your brother from another mother. Yeah? Yeah. Right? I am your brother from another mother. Literally. Yes. So, what do you think? Then, boss, your father full. He was awesome. Five other people will come now. Wait. And dispute. Correct? Dispute. So, it is called administrator. And when a dispute is there, that estate is taken over by administrator so that is this that's a difference executor and administrator administrator dispute is there in the will all the property disputes are all lying with administrator only even in bangalore if you see the moment a land is you know somebody dies land somebody else takes over they'll wait for the building to be constructed then they'll come you see many buildings outside os os is written right? you know that's called what outstanding suit so, everywhere, many of these uh, newly constructed buildings, many of that you see, OS will be written and some number will be given. That is outstanding suit. So, that is why RERA is one more area where you can really mint money. Right? So, these are some of the areas which you know. All these things, law ICI is removing. I am just saying. Which means, you guys have the benefit. See, in paper 60, all this RERA and all comes. And these are all really money minting areas. IBC also is part of the deal. So basically they are asking you to study it later, which is stupid, which anyway you will study here in depth, right? So that is why I tell, it's not because it's my subject. Genuinely, that is why I'm telling because it is completely logicless. Their removal, what they're doing, completely bereft of logic. It is shock. It is really amusing for the institute to actually do whatever they're doing. They're degrading the profession, which is sad. Right, executor or administrator of an estate and unfortunately students are suffering. It is because of their ego that new president fellow wants or old president, whoever it is wanted this law to come, this new syllabus to come. Nothing is ready only, nothing was actually ready. You see now recently only, you only didn't know no, whether you guys are okay. But November fellows didn't know whether November would write new syllabus, old syllabus. Very sad it is. You also will be under tension. What if I fail? Happens now obviously, what if I fail, should I write new syllabus or old syllabus, happens. They could have done this long time back only or they should, they could have actually announced it after, you know, everything was set. It was just urgency, under my presidentship, this new syllabus should come. That ego, unfortunately, nothing can be done, very sad. Next, trustee, including debenture trustee. Uh, then, that is, this is what debenture trustee, if you are holding any debentures, there will be a person who will look after the debentures. Debentures, you have lent money to the company only, right? That is a financial debt. So, debenture trustee, on behalf of all the debenture holders, they can do so. Next, a person duly authorized by the board of directors of the company. So, one company also can sue. No? One company would have paid one more company money. So, that company wants to file IBC. How will they file? Through the 
either board or a duly authorized person that so a default includes default in respect of financial debt owed not only to applicant financial creditor but to any other financial creditor also is what they say do you need a break okay so 15 minutes 12 15 will start then it will go up to 130 okay all right guys let's begin let's continue so first is the Corporate insolvency registration process by financial creditor. Second. So, next, CIRP by operational creditor. First, there should be occurrence of default. The only difference between here, here I directly apply to AA. In this, I directly apply to AA, adjudicating authority. Whereas here, I will first give something called as a demand notice. Demand notice demanding repayment of operational debt. First, I will give a demand notice to corporate debtor. Operational creditor will be, what do you say, he will be your employee. He can be a person who has supplied goods, given certain services or it can also be a central government or state government or any authority, including your local authority. For example, if you have not paid electricity bill, BESCOM, then also they can obviously they are operational creditors they can go under this section they will give a demand notice demanding repayment of operational debt and they will give an invoice saying that boss i will give you 10 days time in 10 days time you should return the you should repay the money i have already sent you so many mails you have not responded to so many mails so hereby i am giving you a demand notice in this demand notice, I am demanding repayment of operational debt. And then I am giving you an invoice as well. You need to do it. So, I will give it to the corporate debtor 10 days time. In 10 days time, I will intimate corporate operational creditor has to, you know, I have to intimate the operational creditor. The corporate debtor should intimate the operational creditor. What? Two things. First of all, ex basically, for example, if... Uh, I am a company and Airtel has broadband has given me services and let's say I am a huge company the bill has be, is beyond 1 crore Be, bill is beyond 1 crore and uh, what do you say the I have during the course of the month I have clearly told I am not happy with your services internet is bad so if you do not rectify the problem then I will not pay the amount I have already told there is already a dispute so still they have the audacity to send me a IBC notice saying that if I don't pay then they will come and take over my company. That's how it is. So then I will have to reply saying that, boss, there is already a dispute. There is already a dispute between me and you. How are you saying that, you know, I did not respond, I did not pay. I have already told you before this notice only, I will not pay. Because you have not given me services. The law used the words existency, existence of dispute and its pendency. Pendency means pending in the court of law. So, there was a case law, Kirusa versus Mobilox, which is quite famous and I have asked many times this particular case law, Kirusa versus Mobilox. In Kirusa versus Mobilox, basically, uh, Mobilox was a company which was, which, uh, what do you say, gave this services for Star Plus for this uh, show, that is, uh, Nach Bali or whatever, one of those, Dance India Dance or whatever, the, one of those shows. They gave services of uh, collecting the data, voting mechanism, where the people can vote, right? So, that this is what Mobilox did. So, Mobilox hired Kirusa for the creation of the software, user interface, etc. And they had a deal. Star Plus will play, pay Mobilox and then eventually, uh, you know, it will, uh, they will pay Kirusa and settle the deal. So, now, when Mobilox 
got the money they did not pay kirusa kirusa obviously approached the court anyway uh, the gist of the story is one company said you have already what do you say there is already a dispute and you have not you have breached some guidelines so between both kirusa and mobilox they said you have breached breach some guidelines that's why i will not pay you this money so the other company went to court and there what happened was in the court it was decided nclt said existence of dispute and it should be and its pendency only if the court case is pending only then the operational creditor can escape under this section but it was very unfair because for me for example if airtel broadband puts a case against me i have been sending a letter saying that i'll not pay you for me to protect myself under ibc it appears that not only there should be a dispute which is a dispute but also it should be pending in the court of law yes issue went to supreme court on one word and supreme court said and should be read as or right they said it is absurd for you to have a dispute and the fact that it should be pending i will not allow that to happen the otherwise then in every small case i have to put a case to protect myself against ibc no so the framing of the section was perfect after or that's why ibc amendment act also changed the word and to or so based on kirusa versus mobilox that is supreme court judgment existence of dispute or its pendency now either you say that there is a dispute or you show that there is a court case pending or you just repay and close it this is again one more way of repayment other than waiting for you know me, my company to go down the train repay and close it so all these things are there and it is not received by operational creditor what to do again i'll basically in 10 days you should give me two things three things one either you tell there is a dispute or you show me one case is pending between me and you then i'll back off that's what the operational creditor is telling or is telling at least repay the unpaid operational debt over chapter close but nothing you do then what will you do i'll make an application to nclt i'll give the full invoice and an affidavit again not declaration affidavit saying that there has been no communication in these 10 days from operational creditor we have not received anything and a certificate from all financial institutions saying that no money has come from the operational creditor can i put a ibc case against a foreigner foreign company no i cannot sue any foreign company this will only apply to companies in india reverse case can a foreigner sue an indian company yes reliance it happened no reliance reliance communications this guy uh, you know ericsson ericsson sued uh, ambani anil ambani so it went to insolvency also that's why he was almost in a soup but the big brother protected him so if you see that is what happened so the thing is can foreigner do so yes but now you have to take a certificate from the bank saying that no money has been received by ericsson and when they opened the act and saw the definition of financial institution it said financial institution must be a financial institution in india ericsson has no bank account in india so how can i give you a what do you say bank statement saying that i have not received any money from anil lambani when there is no bank account only in india so this went to many such cases were rejected imagine like many such petitions from foreign companies were rejected because they did not have bank accounts in india so they went to the uh, you know this uh, ministry and said what is this nonsense what is this certificate that you are asking that's why they changed the law what did they made they add added two words if available based on this four marks question three times they have asked right that's why it is very very intricate very easy it is but intricate if available three times asked in the exam so basically certificate from financial institution need not be there only if available i have to give and other information also copy of the letter of iu any other proof also i need to give all these things i need to give and then it will be given to the adjudicating authority the adjudicating authority will pass an order 
in the order i will either admit the application or i will reject the application the moment i admit the application cirp will be commenced commencement of cirp i will communicate to operational creditor and corporate debtor so i'll admit the application then reject the application cirp will begin communicate to operational creditor and corporate debtor that's what it is finally that's all there is to it apart from that so one part of the story is the financial creditor other part of the story is operational creditor next admission or rejection of application so when will the uh, application be admitted when the application is complete and the operational credit uh, debtor has not not paid not not you received any payment as such the creditor has not been paid invoice or notice for payment as has been delivered by operational creditor there is no notice of dispute also and there is no disciplinary proceeding against the resolution professional then you will admit uh, opposite is rejection very simple this is all easy guys no problem moving on yes this is by the corporate debtor now this is vijay malya himself king fisher will say before you can even say that i have not paid i am only telling i will not pay you that is this that is corporate debtor saying that which unable for me to which i am unable to actually function and i am unable to start the company or continue with this center company so i request you to come and take over corporate applicant will apply who is a corporate applicant here corporate applicant will be corporate debtor or since llp also it will apply right so member or partner of the corporate debtor or any individual who is in charge of managing the operations ceo cfo all these people who are authorized they can also apply on behalf of the company this is for llp member or partner of the corporate debtor assuming it's an llp so insolvency will apply to llps as well as companies here i should give the books of accounts here i should give that the resolution professional is proposed to act as a interim resolution professional and one more thing is in winding up a special resolution had to be passed in winding up if i want to wind up a company in companies act here there was no resolution that was there corporate applicant that is board of directors themselves went ahead unilateral decision went for ibc so shareholders said we also need to have a say when we have a say in uh, companies act why not have a say here that's why this was amended and special resolution was added so application should also be made by a special resolution given by the shareholders so then this is what happens so this is the application part this is the application part following categories of corporate debtors are not entitled to file an application under section 11 so if you are undergoing cirp already can you again stand in the line and apply no because let the cirp be completed then you can do so second you have completed cirp law says give some breathing space how much is the breathing says minimum 12 months minimum 12 months before 12 months only you are putting one more application no let the new company which has taken over let it try to revive your company revive you then you can see what can be done if it is not done so third corporate debtor violating the term of the resolution plan the resolution plan given by the applicant this corporate debtor has not followed only the company has not followed and fourth one if they have told already your resolution there is no point let's go for liquidation then you cannot come back and say let's go for resolution not a lot so this was misinterpreted by many courts what used to happen was one person is already undergoing cirp one more uh, company is very very happy this the best part of the story was this company has given this company loan the company undergoing cirp has given another company loan this company has not paid back because like that it has done to many people because of non payment they have not got their money back now this company is going into cirp basically other companies are all fine i am going to cirp so these companies which went into cirp they went and applied to this company stood as a financial creditor against this company and applied under ibc against this company 
many courts struck this down. Why? It said corporate data undergoing CRP cannot file application. It was obviously wrong. It went to court actually. That's why amendment came in 2020. What was the amendment here? An explanation was added. A corporate debtor can initiate CIRP against another corporate debtor. A corporate debtor undergoing CIRP can initiate CIRP against another corporate debtor. A good provision. Explanation was added because this wrong interpretation was being made. Vartaman Power Limited was the first case where they said this uh, they are if you are undergoing CIRP, you cannot put a CIRP case against others. No, not like that. The intention of this law only is different. Time limit as discussed 180 plus 90, maximum of 270 days, overall days 330. It can be done only once with 66% of voting shares. It is 180 plus 90. The CIRP shall be completed within 330 days from the insolvency commencement date including any extension and including time taken in legal proceedings. The law says, shall mandatorily follow, shall mandatorily follow within 330. What do you think? Mandatory or discretionary? So, it went to that SR Steel case. SR Steel uh, case, one of the greatest judges, you know, Rowington F. Nariman, RF Nariman, he retired. He also had put a, in PMLA, I will discuss about him. Brilliant law, a brilliant judge. So he said, Who the hell are you to tell me that I have to finish in 330 days? They told government. Like, what do you say shall mandatorily? He says it takes time. Justice takes time. So in India there are so many cases that and I have to hear the cases properly. It is not some fast track justice here. Correct? It is not a summary trial. So in cluster rate, there's a question called summary trial. Summary trial means what? No trial needed. Like for example, if you get caught without helmet, will they take you to the court? No, it is a summary there only, sir, right into air, sir, sorry, forgot. Okay, close, close the matter. That's how it works, summary trial, sir, pay the uh, penalty, fine, whatever, close. So that is what it is, that's called summary trial, without going to trial. What is regular trial then? That was also one question, link to this, this was one question. Can you, can the courts go for a summary trial? Yes. Correct? If the imprisonment is less than 3 years, correct? 2 years, the court can go for a summary trial. But, even if it is 1 year or more, if you feel that summary trial is not enough or not good enough, then you can go for a regular trial. That is a one more miscellaneous question that can come. Anyway, coming to this year, here also they are telling, who are you to tell me mandatorily you should follow under 330. So, SR still struck this down. They said this is not mandatory, it is discretionary. But if you see the wordings, it is still mandatory. It should be read as discretionary. But nevertheless, in your exam, you can say within 330 days, it has to be completed, including any extension of time in legal proceedings. Legal law will take its own time. You cannot say that. And the average time period only is around 430, 500, 600 days. But it is better than normal other cases, which will go on for 7 years, 8 years, 10 years. Yes. This is what it was. All these things were there. Then, withdrawal of application. Yes, if you apply, again, is in the interest of justice. If, let's say, SBI has applied, even like an out-of-court settlement, they can go to them and say, Sir, I will pay the amount, kindly withdraw. Kindly withdraw. Uh, it's fine, I will. you withdraw, but then we will ensure that everything will be paid on time. So, adjudicating authority can approve withdrawal, anything admitted under 7, 9 or 10, or an application made by the applicant. Who is the applicant? Obviously, the person who applied here. But with the approval of what? 90% voting share of the committee of great arts. COC is already formed. So, when can you withdraw the case? After COC, before expression of interest. After COC, before resolution plan or after COC before the first resolution plan comes to the company or when? Can you do it even after expression of interest? Yes, there are many regulations but the new regulations say yes you can withdraw even after what? Expression of interest. You can withdraw any time. Any time before what? Obviously, before the resolution plan is approved. 
any time before the resolution plan is approved. Logically, yes, obviously. That is withdrawal. Here it is 90%. Most, all normal cases, 51%. Special cases like appointment of IRP, RP, 66%. And withdrawal cases, 90%. 90% is what you need to see. Moratorium. Moratorium is suspension of all the activity in terms of Outsiders, adjudicating authority by passing an order will give a moratorium from the date of order to completion of CIRP. Everything will stop there. Any case against you will stop. So what had happened was, in one case, there was a Bajaj Vespa sort of a thing. Before Bajaj Vespa, there was LML. You can ask your parents, LML scooter was more famous than Bajaj. LML was Chetak or something, I don't know the name. Chetak, right? It was more famous than Bajaj. So, LML was the company, but it's still there. After that, Bajaj took over market share completely and LML lost its. That was the beginning, slowly beginning of the end for them. And then eventually they wiped out. Now, LML uh, took a loan from SBI. So, SBI gave a loan. SBI though will keep giving like that. It's actual case only. Almost some whatever crores of loan. They said, boss, against this, your uh, director, his name is Sanjeev Shriya. Sanjeev Shriya, you should give a guarantee. You should give a guarantee. No problem. So, LML obviously did not pay the loan. So, SBI went to this RDD BFI Act, Recovery of Debts Due to Banks and Financial Institutions Act. Under that, the DRT is the Debt Recovery Tribunal. So, they said, Boss, okay, I agree. These fellows have not paid. Do one thing. Recover the money from Sanjeev Shriya. The moment SBI is, SBI means Sleeping Bank of India. Whenever you go to the bank, already there will be a break. Correct? They are never working. Always break. So, if you see, it's interesting actually. And it makes a lot of sense also. The logo of SBI. It's a very nice logo, right? In this, it's like a pie chart. In this, this is lunch break. Right? is lunch break and this is the only time that they work so lunch break they were sleeping so when this happened they were sleeping so suddenly they woke up and they finally said you know by the time they came you know lml went to ibc they only went what corporate data and it was accepted also so once it is accepted what happens moratorium so, when SBI came to Sanjeev Shriya, he said statue. Because actually happened, not kidding. The amendment happened because of this case only. When SBI came to Sanjeev Shriya, he said statue. SBI said, bro, what statue? What statue means statue only. He said it is linked to this LML. He said statue is for LML. He said, no, statue is for what assets LML. No, LML I agree. But LML, who you gave money to me or LML? LML. When LML is going to IBC and un under those cases statue has happened, the statue will apply to me also. Valid, valid logic. I am a, I am a uh, personal guarantor. My liability is linked to LML's liability until that is ascertained. No statue. Then this uh, high court and all brought about stay order. Here from your statue happened. It was like a old mod versus Harry Potter. Want, you know. All that they were fighting. It went to court. Supreme Court struck this down. They said, SBI, you are sleeping. Before they could apply, you should have applied here. No. So, statue. Then government did not like this. They said, this is not done. The moratorium should not apply to personal guarantor. So, that's why they changed the law in moratorium. They changed the law in moratorium. See here. Moratorium is not applicable to surety in a contract of guarantee to a corporate debtor. Sanjeev Shriya versus SBI and one more case as usual. SBI versus V. Ramakrishnan. If you don't remember case law name, just write SBI versus concerned person. 100% will correct. SBI versus concerned person. You write 100% you will get marks. SBI will be there everywhere. Now, moratorium not applicable to surety in a contract of guarantee to a corporate debtor. Then the, what do you say, government was so annoyed with this law, with this with this entire case law that they said, now I will do, SBI will do one extra thing for you. 
you can put ibc against this guy now you can directly put ibc against this guy sbi says sir but individuals have not notified true individuals have not notified so nirmala madam said don't worry i will change that also what she did here very nice actually here if you see uh yes sorry it was uh, arun jetli arun jetli only full all these things were done by arun jetli brilliant so he delinked guys from this fng no he delinked this portion he said i told you i'll do this later personal guarantors of corporate data personal guarantors sanjeev shriya of corporate data lml they will be treated as a separate class and ibc is applicable to them from 2311 2017 So for them, DRT will come or NCLT. They said, "Don't go to DRT only. DRT is not framed only still." Arun Jaitley knows. For DRT, it's a full mechanism. I have to create. There's no time. So I will de-link them from there and link them to whom? NCLT. So now you see, you will understand this carefully. Check this. Uh, page one eighty-five. For corporates, for LLP and personal guarantors relating to corporate data. All happened because of LML versus that is Sanjay Shri versus SBI. These are all the reasons. Once you understand reasons, law is very easy. So personal guarantors related to corporate debtors. In any law, if you understand the why of it, becomes very easy. Income tax for every line. Arun Jaitley, Chidambaram, brilliant fellows they are. They have added so many provisions. Income tax, indirect taxes, even in IBC. Right. So it was a very very shrewd you know minister so if you see here moratorium not applicable to surety in a contract of guarantee to a corporate debtor sanjeev shriya versus sbi same thing linked amendment insolvency of personal guarantors also notified so as of today i can not only sue the company but also i can go for ibc against this can sanjeev shriya himself before sbi can come can sanjeev shriya himself do it no. that also allowed because that entire thing was dealing no that portion also they brought in whereby sanjeev shriya himself can go to the nclt and say boss i will not be able to do the needful so if you see the i mean actually the the particular thing is already started by the way the whatever i am trying to tell is already begun and there is the first I mean, I was just reading the newspaper. The first ever case that happened was this case. Correct? NCLT Amravati gets India's first personal insolvency plea. Correct? So this was in the. You see this fellow's name, Om Karam Venkata Ramana. So the creators will say Govinda, Govinda. That's all. That is simple. His name only is that. No. Correct? Yes. So if you see personal guarantor, personal guarantor of Om Karam Venkata Ramana on the day name also superbly escaped. On the day amended, what IBC bringing personal guarantors? This is the first ever guy. This is DRT. DRT and all is not there. Now it is thirty-eight point six six crore. Because all these nitin grains, nitin protein, nitin nutrition, Ramana Shri consumer products, all these put together, they are all defaulted on loans with so and so. He knows that I am standing guarantee to all these things. Nothing can be done. So what will I do? He only went for. This five companies put together. He himself went for this IBC. So yes, that is also possible now. If you are a personal guarantor to a corporate debtor, then you can also go for IBC. That's the only thing which is notified. Nothing else is notified now. Normal individual not notified, right? So should not get confused. So that's it. Very simple. Come back here. Moratorium. Moratorium. So what happens in moratorium? what all will happen institution of suits or continuation of suits will not happen prohibited institution of suits means new cases against the debtor or continuation of suits will not happen transferring encumbering alienating disposing of corporate debtor any of it can i sell off the assets no can i dispose of the assets no can i transfer it to somebody else that i know nothing can be done it is statute action to foreclose recover or enforce any security interest any some other bank has a right over my asset they want to enforce security interest is enforce security interest under surface e under surface e 60% of the lenders agree they can enforce the security interest sell it off so is that possible no 
so in jet airways the company had was in a building which was rented owner is coming and asking for money they said no owner said vacate the property jet airways said statue is it correct yes no choice see the fourth one recovery of any property by an owner or a lessor so yes it they can say statue so rent you can stand as what then financial creditor or operational creditor operational creditor there are multiple cases where rent also is not operational debt but all that discussion not needed now for your exam purposes rent also is what operational debt so you can stand there in the line that's all no choice that is what it is very simple cease to have effect when yeah basically till th this entire thing will go on till what time until you approve the resolution plan within 180 days you approve then fine or whether the nclt should approve you will approve within 90 95 days assume 100 the nclt will approve fine moratorium ends or if they pass an order for liquidation they feel more the uh, revival will not happen now what about electricity water bescom will cut their electricity can you tell statue yes to run a business you need that right so that's why the law only had stated supply of essential goods or services should not be terminated during the moratorium period so i have to enter a deal with bescom like bro these months i will pay you are allow me to run the previous you stand in line for that but for these months i will pay you please allow me so that is their essential goods or services means electricity water information technology services means at broadband broadband phone all those things you should allow me otherwise i will be crippled otherwise definitely you will not get money for sure but provided you should pay for that during those months you should pay is what they said that's fine it shall not be interrupted or suspended this was there before but many such cases happened there was one case have you heard of this paper deccan chronicle is it there now no deccan chronicle went for ibc so there their main thing is you know your die then your uh, what do you say paper of course and the entire printing materials etc they requested the creditor sir you are standing in line i know operational creditor you give this at least die also you give me if you don't give me die i will die right so if you don't want me to die you please give me the die otherwise the problem is that i'll not be able to run the show but if you see the essential services it was only what electricity water so the die company gave away water drink that is the only thing i can give nothing else i can give is it a problem 100% problem guys so this company went for ibc many such companies went and told sir you are only telling essential services this but these are also essential things if you don't supply this i promise i will pay for this during the period during the moratorium whatever amount i will pay cash to you you give me that let me run the show for the previous dues you please stand in the line let's see what happens because of many such failures law was amended again here in this only you can i mean obviously add on yeah this is one part of the story you can also add on anything that is required for what running the business that is for uh going concern anything that is needed for you to run the show all the services essential for going concern according to the resolution professional that cannot be suspended that cannot be suspended similarly in embassy property developers case embassy developers so karnataka high court decision this is so basically the um, what do you say karnataka nclt sorry so they they went to the nclt and said the karnataka government is not giving me the license for building now they re removed the license there are license also they are cancelling embassy developers not the embassy property these are good yeah one more embassy was there that one so they said yes we will now no choice they have not given me the license i want to renew the license they are saying that you have gone to ibc i will not renew the license without the license i cannot construct that's why this point also was added license permit registration quota concession clearance whatever name called doesn't matter 
by the CG, SG, local authority, sectoral regular, any other shall not be suspended or shall not be terminated during moratorium. If there is no default in payment of current dues arising for the use or continuation of the license. So, I will pay you renewal amount. Please give me old. I understand I have not paid. For that you stand in line. But without the license, I cannot operate. So, apart from this, anything that the fellow feels, RP feels that it is needed for going concern, that has to be given, cannot be suspended. Because of this, many such businesses came uh, again started reviving, otherwise problematic. There was some problem in the moratorium section. That's about it. That is moratorium, very simple. In this, these are the amendments that have come. So, the moment moratorium comes, etc., now public announcement. Public announcement. Who should announce? That was an exam question. Who should announce? IRP will announce or AA will announce? AA will ask the IRP to announce and that you will have to make a public announcement saying that this company has gone for IBC or rather, I mean, you should now give your claims. So, this is one of the examples. Bush and Power and Steel, one of the earliest cases. So, you have to give all the details. Corporate identity number, identification number, all the registered office details, yes. Insolvency commencement date, estimated closure, 180 days. And the full details. Name, address, registration number of the insolvency resolution profession. Mahindra Kumar Khandelwal, all these things along with the registration number. Last date for submission of claims also I should give. And here it will be signed here by this guy. But this is initiated by AA. Who will actually give it? IRP will give it. So, the thing is, all this I studied and went. In the exam, you know what they asked? Who will pay expenses of public announcement? Correct. Corporate data will pay or applicant will pay or IRP will pay and later will get the reimbursement. MCQ. Yes, it is paid by the applicant. Expenses of public announcement shall be borne by the applicant which may be reimbursed by COC to the extent it ratifies them. So, applicant goes overboard and puts a first page advertisement, full page, against a company which is anyway doesn't have money to pay you, right? So, he said no, that advertisement should go wherever which is visible, whichever is cheaper. First of all, no money, first page advertisement, right? So, no, not possible. That's why to the extent it ratifies, see the lawmakers brilliance, they know people will go overboard. That's why to the extent it ratifies them. Up the moment that IRP fellow is appointed within three days, A will initiate through this IRP public announcement. Name and address of corporate, I showed you what are the contents, same contents. Right? And one more problem in India, even though it is not ours, we will go and stand there. There are many such people who are standing saying claims. When did you give money? We didn't give a similar standing. Public interest. Correct? So that's why they have given that also. Penalty for false and misleading claims. It's all needed in our country. I see they have also given here very clearly. I should give all proof, etc. Sorry? Yeah, yeah. Tata still went for this. So, if you see all types of recovery, all these things. Uh, here, submission of false or misleading proofs of claim shall attract penalties. Bush and Power, Tata still went. Then JSW came. Arcelor Mittal came. Many things happened. So, submission of false or misleading proofs of claim shall attract penalties. You should give all those dialogues. So, same thing you should write when they ask you what all will be there in public announcement. What all will be there in public announcement. Yes. So, if you understand everything practically, then law becomes very easy. Rather than blindly studying this, you should see the practical side of it. Then they will ask you about this fellow, IRP. Over everything, it is you know, very easy. The moment you are IRP, CIRP commences, you will appoint the IRP. Date of appointment of resolution professional is the same date, fine. Appointment of IRP, financial creditor will appoint, corporate data will appoint, the RP proposed in the application is appointed as the IRP, that is fine. But for operational creditor, the, for example, the pilot or the employee, he will not know who to appoint. So, he will approach the NCLT itself, they will say, sir, please appoint. So, they 
will again initiate everything. If you have not appointed, I will ask the board to appoint. Board means IBBI. IBBI within 10 days will recommend the name of the IRP to the AA. In either case, I should see whether any disciplinary proceedings are pending against him. So, the IRP also should not be a fraud. And there are many such cases where it has happened also, where the IRP has colluded with the company itself and they have ensured that the nobody else has got money. And of course, there is a lot of uh, punishment also. It is happening on a regular basis. So, of course, there is uh, uh, punishment for such IRPs where who have cheated everyone. So, the thing is, there are many such fraudulent cases as well, uh, which, you know, has taken this, uh, because the, uh, there are black sheep everywhere, so the IRP only have decided to do so. What is the role of IRP? He will issue the public notice, he will start the resolution process, collate all the claims, constitute the COC and conduct the first meeting of the COC. Powers of IRP should not be confused with powers of RP. Right? Powers of IRP, management of affairs of the company and exercise of BO, basically all powers of 179, board powers will now go to this guy. Shareholders powers also will go to this guy. MD powers where everyone has to report to him that also will go to this guy. And he will send an instruction to financial institutions as to what payment to take, what payment to not take and all these things. These are all simple points, no problem. How should I submit the proof? There are forms given and those forms etc. No need to remember but these are the forms and everything will be given in the relevant regulations. But they can ask you the timeline of when you should submit. A creditor shall submit proof. So, if you see a couple of changes, one second. This was done. 193 there is a change, we will see in a while. Yeah. So, here yeah, within how many days should I submit the proof? Within 7 days. And within 2 days of such verification, I will file a report to the adjudicating authority. So, the I will you will submit your claim, no problem. And the IRP shall verify within 7 days. And within 2 days of verification, I will file a report to the adjudicating authority. And this they had asked in the MCQ once. A creditor who fails to submit claim with proof may still submit proof to the IRP on or before dash 90th day of the insolvency commencement date. This is there in the regulation. 90th day. So, paper setter does not know that the IBC for 6D is slightly different from paper 4. So, when they have clearly told that regulation is not there, that only they will give in the exam. So, this was one such question. People had not studied this and gone because genuinely it was not there. But then they have given it in the exam. So, those areas, whatever you are important, other things have not come also, I have added just to be on the safer side. All these are MCQ questions. Within how many days, how many days. You have failed to submit the claim, but still law gives you a chance to apply. Within how many days? 90th day of the Insolvency commencement. Insolvency commencement date is the CIRP commencement date, same as appointment of IRP, all same. Resolution professional now. Committee of creditors, COC. Committee of creditors, COC, in the first meeting with a majority, how much majority? 66%, not 75%, 66%. Will either appoint the same IRP as RP or they will replace the IRP by another RP. They will appoint the same IRP as RP or they will replace the IRP by another RP. If you are replacing same, it has to go through the board process, IVBI, within 10 days they will send or if this fellow has been appointed, same guy is appointed, then I will communicate to all the three people. So, they will also ask you, the next question is, what is the eligibility for you to be an insolvency professional? Asked in the exam, couple of times, four marks. First point is very easy. You should be eligible to be independent director. Same, all those regulations, same thing will apply. What? That company, holding company, security company should not be a promoter, related to promoter, all that which you have seen in those charts, same thing will apply. 
he is not a related party of the corporate data this related party is not as per companies act is as per ibc the same list of 185 you add something you'll get 188 you add some more things you'll get related party so much in depth in this case it's not needed third he is not an employee or proprietor of a or a partner of the firm of auditors in the last 3 financial years not three financial years and fourth one he is not an employee or proprietor of a legal or consulting firm tell me an independent director what was a legal and consulting firm point 10% right 10% or less if he holds it's fine here you see there's a change he is not an employee or proprietor etc or has any transaction the corporate amounting to 5% this they can ask you in mcq they can say if you want to be a irp and you are already a partner of a legal consulting firm in the last 3 financial years but the consulting firm has earned if it earns more than how much will you be ineligible first they'll give 10% then 5% so it is 5% don't go by this word he is eligible to be appointed as independent director here also independent director last point is 10% only so 10 or 5 what should you follow always specific law will override the general law so in that independent director provisions last two points can be ignored last last but two points what are those points one is this one proprietor and more is this that you have to specifically follow this section so this 5% also has been asked in the exam this is eligibility to be appointed as what resolution professional replacement of rp the coc in its opinion if they feel that rp has to be replaced they can do so any time with what voting 66% name of the proposed rp all that same thing if a disciplinary proceeding is is there then of course you should appoint after all these things are over now whenever i have told voting share voting share voting share is it present and voting or is it overall the words present and voting are missing in the act so strict view is what overall because if you see if uh, people are given 7000 crores they have not come for the meeting only 1000 crore people have come does it mean if 667 crore person was given 667 crore he, app he approves and the entire it he speaking on behalf of 7000 crore no that's why to ensure that because in singapore law uk law all that if you see they have given the dialogue present and voting Here, present and voting is not there. They have not even given entitled and voting. They have just said voting share means the share of your financial debt to the entire financial debt, the entire financial debt. So, which means that is your share. So, predominantly present and voting is not there. So, that you need to keep in mind. So, all these things are the basics. Now, coming to the COC, the COC will be formed, compo composed by whom? one is there are three people who can form the coc guys three people one is normal individual creditors these are financial creditors who want to operate on their own then is authorized representative 216a 6a a 6ab 6ac 6a a 6ab and 6ac who are these people we will see and third one is what consortium of banks or syndicated facility consortium means what group of banks group of lenders consortium they will form after giving the loan or before giving the loan before wrong answer after reverse the cut after giving the loan so consortium first i'll give all everything later you will not repay so what i'll do i'll form a group so all these heavy insolvency cases are always formed by what consortium consortium after giving the loan syndicated facility means before before only if anybody wants a loan if today ambani says i want loan all banks will come together and say sir we will offer you the best this is what we can offer that's called syndicated facility so for them 
they are also forming part of COC. Individual creators form part of COC. And apart from that, you have 21 6A, 6AB and 6AC. So, who are these people for, you know, 6A? We'll come to this. It will be a chart here. I'll show you. Ah. I can write here only. Page 194. Here. This is 6AA, 6AB, executor, 6AC. 6AA will be what? Debenture holders, deposit holders. Debenture trustee. That fellow is the authorized representative. Debenture trustee. 6AB, home buyers. 6AC, executor, administrator, guardian. I told you executor, no dispute. Administrator, brother from another mother, that one. Then guardian. That these three people, they are the authorized representative, 6AC, 6AB home buyers, 6AA debenture. They are also called as financial creditors. That's what we are seeing here. Operational creditors can come. Will operational creditors come for the meeting? No. Will they? Should they be given a notice? All that we'll see. So if you check. Public announcement will be made requiring claims. Creditor will submit the claims. He will verify the claims, etc. And after verifying, he will immediately form the COC, Committee of Creditors, within seven days. Within seven days, what happens? First meeting of the COC. And it is interesting to note, in the first meeting of COC, will SBI commence it or they will send a representative? Uh, and that representative, should he be an insolvency professional? Generally, yes. Who's, which representative will they send? Obviously, a person who knows how to deal. So, basically, guys, all of these fellows are IPs. Chartered accountants, company secretaries, you know, lawyers who have passed the insolvency examination. They are representing many people. So, the scope of this entire law is so much that you need not be an RP only. You can just be an insolvency professional who can actually represent one creditor also in the COC. Not that you have to be the main guy. You can represent other persons. So all of them will sit across the table. And they will discuss. What is the first thing they will do? When COC is formed. They are discussing. What is the first thing they will discuss? Which attempt? Which attempt? Are all CA, no? CA. First thing, which attempt? When did you pass? Correct. Right. Yes. Which year you wrote? Every year I was writing. Yeah. So, no which year? Every year. So, this is what they first discuss. But of course, in the first meeting of COC, they will appoint resolution. The same IRP only can be RP or new fellow they will appoint, whatever it is. But now the question they will ask is, if SBI has 7,000 crore, I mean 700 crore, they have given out of 7,000 crore, 10% they have given loan. This IP, this uh, insolvency professional, this representative is sitting there. Will he also have 10% voting share? All that we'll see. That is voting. We'll see the voting mechanism, how it works. Now, this is all okay. One bouncer came in the exam once. What if the company has no financial creditor? Operational creditor only can apply. But then who will sit in the COC? Financial creditor. But he's not there. What to do? This was one more question where they said regulation will not come and that only came. Correct? That's why ICI tagline is what? Always expect the unexpected. Yes. So, if there is no financial creditor, regulation 16, 18 largest operation creditors by value, 18 largest operational creditors by value. If it is less than 18, then all. One representative elected by all workmen. One rep uh, all workmen will you know elect one guy. That fellow will go next. One representative elected by all employees. Elected by all employees. Eighteen largest operational creditors by value. One representative elected by all workmen, one representative elected by all employees. So, this is what it says. 
this is what we have to write this is what is authorized representative means what we have seen now 6aa 6ab 6ac trustee origin this is 6aa 21 6aa 21 6ab and this is 6ac now for example home buyers authorized representative from the state or union territory having the highest number of creditors in the class all of the creditors are residing in bangalore but they have bought a property in there was a there is a separate township called lavaza do you know in pune near pune separate it's separate township only called lavaza he wanted to make it like a european township forgot the name of the guy wanted to make it a european township uh, township but then unfortunately because of again land dealing many people uh, invested many many rich people invested because it was a model european town and today it is called the best ghost town in india people go there because nothing is there it is completely deserted completely dilapidated everywhere they have you know all these uh, graffiti and all those things so there are a few shops still but it was a model town which had lot of houses high end residential houses it had lot of what do you say restaurants uh european themed uh, canal system european themed uh, boating was there european themed uh, what do you say walk walkway it was something amazing it was actually like coming to europe in india itself but because of land disputes many many cases the project did not take off so now tell me i have to put ibc against that company who started lavas assume but all home owners are there so which home owner the i the insolvency professional should be from which state whether you like it or not it's always so much so that if from somebody from your state is representing you'll be fine okay my my person only is going you'll think it's always like that so that's why law recognizes that and see this the interim resolution professional shall offer the names of three insolvency professionals to be voted upon the class of creditors who must be from the state or union territory which has the highest number of creditors in the class thousand people have bought from i mean thousand people have bought that lavaza 600 are from delhi or 600 are from karnataka 600 from tamil nadu what to do so insolvency professional names also it should be from where tamil nadu karnataka the example whatever i gave yes highest number of creditors in the class as per the records of corporate debtor if they are scattered also there are other regulations not needed for us so highest number you have to choose so insolvency professional interim resolution professional will give the three insolvency professional names from your state sir he is representing your state only your people you choose one among them he will sit here he will sit here and he will represent you he will sit here and represent you whatever you tell he will do it so please appoint one guy all of you come together and appoint one guy then meeting of the coc will happen resolution professional will give notice now the question is he will give notice to whom all members of coc who are the members of coc consortium syndicated facility normal individual financial creditors then 6aa 6ab 6ac everybody will get notice i am an operational creditor who has given goods and services etc should you give notice to me next one operational creditors for their representatives if the amount of their aggregate dues is not less than 10% of the debt overall debt of the company is 1000 crore in that operational debt is 400 crore i am an operational creditor who has given goods and services worth 45 crore question is should i be sent a notice this question has not come in the exam 10% of the debt is 10% of operational debt or total debt so which means to say that you know at least 100 crore 100 crore out of 400 crore should be operation in this 400 crore is operational i told so it will be 100 out of 400 
10% I know, but is it basically what I'm trying to tell is since there are 400 crores already, 100 crore out of 400 crore, if they apply only, then only it matches this, no, 10% of the total debt. Is it total debt or operational debt? So on that issue also, there was, you know, a case which went on. This question as I told you has not come. So is it the total debt or operational debt? Golden Jubilee Hotels Private Limited in which the NCLT told it should be 10% of the total debt. 10% of the total debt. Will they all get the right to attend or will they only sit there? They said NCLT said total debt. NCLT also said I agree to NCLT. Then the issue was closed. Then one more doubt came. 10% of total debt, okay. Is it debt of the company, debt submitted or debt admitted? Everyone can submit, but ultimately you have to admit the debts, right? After verif verifying. So is it 10% of the debt submitted or 10% of the debt admitted? This also was an issue, question of law. They said it is admitted. 10% of the debts admitted, not submitted, right? Yes. You say that you can uh, attend, you have right to attend. Attend means what? Can you speak? No. What can you do? You can just observe. So, NCLAT told the representative is allowed to watch the proceedings and eat also silently without making sound. Yeah, you can, yes. Chocolate and all, you cannot open slowly, yes. So, 100 crore. It is in this example 100 crore. So, should I give it to Vijay Malle also if I am going at against Kingfisher? Yes. Now, the question is if Vijay Malle does not come or if this operational crater does not come, what happens to the proceedings? Valid, invalid? Valid. Valid. Right. So, these are all these like uh, you know they are there also. There, even if they are not there, no problem. In our gully cricket, there used to be one guy. We used to take bat and all from him. But he was an hopeless player. We used to only call him because bat, ball, everything. So, he used to take money, we used to take the bat and all. And if that fellow didn't come, good only. If that day he didn't come, he said, good. Anyway, we don't know how to play. But for extra person, if we need, we need. No, those kind of people they are. Operational creators. You come, you don't come, I don't care. Give me the bat, that's all. So, Board of Directors, Partners and one represent all these people should attend, can attend. Yes, so that is what they say. Any member of COC, as we have seen already, may appoint insolvency professional other than resolution to represent him in the meeting. I told you, anybody can represent. Only for authorized representative, law has given provisions because home buyers don't know how to appoint. Then that's uh, that executor, administrator don't know how to appoint. That's why they have given these provisions. But for others, let's say I am an individual who has given 20 crore to the company. I am a serial, what do you say, investor. I have invested in your company, IVC. I cannot come personally. Can I appoint somebody? Yes. When I appoint somebody to sit there, who will pay the fees and all that for that, for that guy? I have to pay, obviously. That's what they are clarifying. Fees of such insolvency professionals shall be borne by such creator. Law only gives provisions for... Law gives provisions for whom? The uh, authorizer for home buyers because home buyers have to be handheld. So for them only, I'll give provisions. That's it. Now, couple of points and we can break for lunch here. This is an important section, guys. Special approval of COC for certain actions of the resolution professional. In section 179 of our Companies Act, we saw. If you want to borrow money, invest funds, grant loans, whatever it is, what resolution is needed, board meeting resolution, appointment of auditor, removal of auditor, normal sections, all shareholders can do. This is a combined power of board and shareholders. Who can do all these things, RP? But then, it has to be approved by COC. Resolution professional will call a meeting and he will take an approval of COC 66% or more of the voting shares to do what? These things. 
raise any interim finance what is interim finance short term loan for me to run the business i need some loan interim finance create any security interest that is obviously over the assets basically i can say boss i am taking this finance you please take over this you know assets no problem but i just told moratorium everything will freeze you can't take security interest except uh, exception is interim finance for interim finance you can actually what offer your assets as security change the capital structure alteration of capital you can do under uh, companies act alteration of capital is ordinary resolution here no resolution needed 66% approval by coc record change in ownership interest also give instructions to financial institutions undertake any related party transaction amend any constitutional document aoa moa imagine all this shareholders powers given to this guy delegate its authority to other person whoever whichever person you want delegate the authority dispose of or permit disposal of shares make any change in management also if need be make changes in appointment or terms of contract or statutory auditor internal auditor personal despite uh, everybody you can do it without any problem these actions which are taken without approval are void you can change the terms of statutory auditor also all the powers of shareholders now vest with whom this guy this has been asked for four marks few points you have to write mind you to do these things first you have to take the approval no approval cannot do if anything done without approval is void coc may report actions of resolution professional to board for taking necessary actions against him under the code that also can be done that also can be done so a couple of points small points will do and then we will after lunch we'll do a very very important supreme court judgment sr steel versus you know the union of india this uh, you know satish kumar gupta actually is the resolution professional last part before the lunch break would be authorized representative voting how will they vote this law has provided this has not been asked so many times guys because it's little relatively new 25 capital a so it is you know any time or whenever they want they can ask they can keep on asking also so let us talk about first 216 consortium fellows or syndicated facility their voting is under 25 a3 for example many people are sitting here one consortium is also sitting they have appointed one guy they are representing the full consortium the consor overall debt let's say is 10000 crore consortium is 6000 crore basically consortium is 6000 crore remaining debts is 4000 crore 4000 crore will be individual fellows all that you leave now consortium banks they have come or syndicate facility 6000 crore they have given but there will be many banks such as called consortium sbi has given 1000 in that icici has given 500 then hsbc has given 700 like that many things hdfc is given 1000 whatever the case may be the question is the representative so basically guys in this meeting i have to vote how much vote i have overall this representative 6000 so 60% vote he has actually 60% vote he has question is very simple will this fellow first come you are all the, you are only the consortium you are each bank each bank you have given one one loan should i come to you first and do a normal voting i'll say see this uh, let's say this is about raising interim finance because for everything i have to take permission right raising interim finance so i am the representative i'll come to you and say boss the issue there in the coc is raising interim finance for that we need 66% vote anyway we have 60% of that so now you guys tell me should we go for interim finance or not kindly approve you need to pass on that approval to the rp he will do the needful now should i take majority here or individually i have to ask individually which means first i'll go to sbi sir you have this 1000 crore in that what you want to do 1000 crore is a yes or 1000 crore is a no 
So if you say no, then I have to write down SBI 1000 crore, no. Next I have to go to ICICI bank, 500 crore, yes. Some other bank, 500 crore, yes. Like that individually I have to take votes, not majority. So basically when I take such votes, let us say 4300 crore worth of you know people have told yes. Then 1700 fellows have told no. When I go and start voting in the main COC, my voting will be 6000 yes or 4300 yes and 1700 no. Yes, 4,300 yes and 1,700 no. That is what the law says. Consortium is just coming together for better stability. That doesn't mean voting also will be diluted there. Individually, I have to take the voting. So, if you see here, individual instructions of each financial creditor. Separate voting for each financial creditor. So, let us say in this, 4,000 have said yes, 1,700 said no, 300 fellows abstain. What to do? In 300, can I do whatever I want? No. There are no prior instructions by financial creditor. The authorized representative should abstain from voting on behalf of such financial creditor. I will abstain from voting. Same for others also guys. Who others? Normal financial creators who don't want to go through consortium individual fellows. But the real deal is for 6AA, 6AB, 6AC. That is for trustee, agent, home buyers, all this. Let's take home buyers for example. Home buyers. You are all the home buyers, right? So basically, in this same example, same example, home buyers represent 1000 crores. That's all, 10%. But still, it's a valid word, 10%, 1000 crores. When I come here and send, you are all home buyers. One fellow has given. 10 crore, one person has given 1 crore, one person has given 50 lakhs, all put together, 1000 crores are there. Now the question is, one more question guys, can one person uh, do this IBC, can it be done by one home buyer before this part, I just want to touch upon that, can one home buyer apply, what do you think? Can one home buyer apply for IBC? No. You know what used to happen? This also came because of small provision that was not so relevant to add here, so I didn't add. So, but still, it is important to understand. Can one home buyer do it? People were doing it. One home buyer, in order to increase and decrease the market rate, there are many such people who only deal in real estate, buying and selling, trading. So, what they do, they used to go to this fellow and say, anyway, most of the builders will never give on time. And now you have the power that you are the financial creator. I will go to the, and say, I have already given you one and a half crore, you have not given me the delivery, so I will go IBC against you. The moment it becomes noted that this company is going for IBC, better real estate fellows will come and take, the land value will increase. So, actually, the demand will increase like that. People were doing this, imagine. When I give benefit, that also we will misuse. People are doing this. That's why now they have given this. Yes, 100 or 10 percent, whichever is less. So, how many home buyers can apply? 100 people or 110, whichever is less. So, if the company has, I mean, if it has some 600 buildings, 60 or 100, whichever is less. If it has 600 flats. 60 home buyers or 100, whichever is less. That's a good provision. So anyway, that's one part of it. Leave it. So now, why I told 100 was, let's say 100 people are sitting here. 100 home buyers are there. Each of them overall is 1000 crores. So some of you have given 5, some of you have given 1, some of you have given 15. You have different units, all that, no problem. Should I come individually or here should I take majority? Yeah, here I should take majority. 
which means I will do the voting. When I do the voting, 530 people having 530 crores, people have given 530 crores, they say yes. Right? Then 470 say no. So when I go for this main voting, should I take 1000 as yes or 530 as 470 no? 1000 I have to take as yes. That's the main difference between the two. I should take 1000 as yes. So check out here. Authorized representative will act as per the decision taken by more than 50% of voting share of such financial creditor, not majority in number. It is not majority in number. It is those who are present and voting. Here they have given present and voting dialogue. Those who are present and voting. Like a normal thing. In 1000 crore, if 20 crore, 200 crore fellows don't come, I don't care. I should take the majority of 800. 401 if it comes, I will go there and vote full 1000. Right? But exception is there. If it is for withdrawal of application under 12A, Withdrawal of application under 12A. Withdrawal of application, how many people? 90%, no? So, in this discussion, they are discussing what? Withdrawal. Withdrawal. So, now 1000 crore I have to give. I will go ask. 530 have said yes for withdrawal. 470 have said no for withdrawal. When the main representative comes here and votes, will he put 1000 or 530 as 470? No. 530 as yes and 470 as no, only for withdrawal. So, if you see the full example, if you see here, 21.6, 3000 crore. 21.6A, that is home buyers, 1000 crore, overall 4000 crore. 21.6 is your consortium. So, out of this 1000, assume 600 crore fellows will say yes, 400 crore fellow will say no. It is deemed that 1000 crore have said yes. However, for 12A, 600 crore if they have said yes, 200 have said no, then I will take 600 crore as yes for withdrawal, 400 crore as no for withdrawal. Very, very simple. Cool. So, we will take a break. After the break, we shall continue with a very, very important decision which has far reaching consequences. That is, Supreme Court judgment in SR Steel. Many, many changes came because of that. All right, guys. Happy afternoon. Did you have lunch? Whose birthday? Somebody's birthday, huh? No. Birthday? No. I thought you are getting cake and all today. Cake, chocolates. Okay. Cut cake, why? No, what man? You you become a CA, then we will cut cake. No problem. So come from Chennai? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They have come, they have come. So I have to give you sweets, no. You have come all the way, I have to give. What cut cake? I will give you sweets, don't worry. Anyway, many sweet shops are there. So no problem. What do you want? Biryani. What's famous in manner? Traffic. So, that's the famous thing. Sweets. Already got, no, yeah. So, that is there, no. Traffic is the only thing famous here, man. All states? Yeah, all states is anyway you will get here. So, which state you want, you can get. Right. But actually, the most famous suite of Karnataka is actually Mysore Park. But the problem is, Chennai people have beaten, uh, Tamil Nadu people have beaten us to it, right? The <coughs> Krishna Suites makes the best Mysore Park. Though it is actually originated from Mysore, there, there is not even one place which is actually matching to the level which they have made. Yeah? You, you have any shop which is better than that? I am asking genuinely. I, do, I didn't find anything actually, unfortunately. Yes. Cool. So let's begin. So we were discussing which one. Yeah. Yeah. Here we were seeing voting mechanism and all that. That was done.
नाउ एस आर स्टील केस इंपॉर्टेंट केस बिकॉज ऑफ दैट मेनी थिंग्स हैपन विच इज वॉट इज गिवन हियर लेट्स रीड एस आर स्टील सॉरी cool so what happened initially was sr steel again the central bank rbi is vested with powers to fix the bad loans in the system so rbi identified 12 accounts of resolution under ibc so they figured out 12 companies which were not at all doing well but then the loans were already nps the those companies had become nps in the books of many banks so they went and rbi you know told that these 12 companies have to go through ibc so they cannot do it they have to do it through whom the financial creditors so they woke up sbi right and they said you have given so many you have, you have given so much money wake up boss at least go put up case against the company which has not paid you money crores of rupees so sbi and standard chartered filed a petition against sr because rbi ordered them actually right that is the reason why they went to sr steel uh, against sr steel sr steel immediately went to what do you say gujarat high court and they said this is unconstitutional it is rbi forcing sbi to wake up is unconstitutional is what they told is what they told now this obviously they challenged rbi decision who will win the case RBI obviously Gujarat High Court said first pay then talk and uh, very simple first make the payment then talk all the other things you talk later so if you see that's why NCLT admits SR Steel for insolvency proceedings this fellow Satish Kumar Gupta is appointed as the resolution professional one extra thing good thing about uh, doing the IBC courses you will also your name will come in the paper it's true everywhere in all cases your name in this is SR Steel versus Satish Kumar Gupta actually. so name will come in the paper so nclt admits sr steel for insolvency proceedings under satish kumar gupta is rp expression of interest everything has been invited now the best part is two people express their interest one is arcelor mittal the company which obviously all the control is from the uk lakshmi mittal and his son aditya mittal so actually this was a litmus test for his son they uh, the father told his son if you strike if you get this deal for us company is yours really really true story he said if you get this deal for us company is yours then i know that you are ready to take the company to larger heights so there is one part one more was new metal one more was new metal now satish kumar gupta when he was uh, seeing all these things he figured out new metal the pro- one of the promoters of new metal was revan thruya right and revan thruya was the son of the promoter of sr steel that's what me buying the company through me that scene so he has sent, sent his son and that son has started one russian company this is a russian company by the way new metal and there indirectly trying to buy the own company so satish kumar gupta said this is wrong so meetings were held between arun jetli and all because it's a huge high profile case on the other hand arcelor mittal there were two uh, other companies uh, kss petron kss petron and uttam galwa these are two other companies here also sbi had given loan true story sbi had given loan here also and these uh, two companies had not paid only they had not paid arcelor mittal had a stake he was a promoter or a, basically uh, one of in the one of the management of these two companies so an arcelor mittal wanted to take over sr steel satish kumar gupta asked a simple question boss you have is you have actually control over these two companies and these two companies only have not paid that right? they are actually npa they are npa and now you want to take over sr what is the guarantee that tomorrow you will actually pay valid question you are actually 7000 crore was spending 7000 crore you first you first make the payment there then we'll see first how can you how can i allow you you have already been an npa there 
how can i allow you to come here was the question valid questions and the same time in breakneck speed uh, arun jetli introduced what 29 capital a he said boss if you are all these things no then nothing doing arun jetli inserted a clause which said if you are already holding an asset other thing which is npa you have to first make the payment and then stand and here new metal is not possible because linked to revan priya retrospectively introduced 2018 he fell sick after all these things and 19 i think 19 or 20 he passed away 19 19 i think so 17 18 he brought some deadly changes so it is like you know his last few changes before his death were extremely really really good so for example this is one such change uh, that is 29 insertion of 29 capital a right so this is almost like a 2 hour discussion 2 to 3 hour discussion if we have to do so let's not obviously check go so much in depth but basically what they are trying to tell is if you are an undischarged insolvent if you are a willful defaulter according to rbi or at the time of submission of resolution plan you have already have an account which is classified as a npa non performing asset then in that case there is no point this is the this is the thing you already have an asset which is an npa then obviously how can i allow you to do so an account of a corporate debtor under the management of such person arcelor mittal aditya uh, sorry this thing lakshmi mittal under his management already which is there somewhere else that is also npa for one year how can i allow you apart from that this conviction also convicted for any offense punishable under 2 years or more under 12th schedule 12th schedule has almost all the legislations apart from that other cases 7 years or more prohibited from trading by sebi prohibited from trading by sebi this guy arshad varsi was prohibited you know, if you see he was doing some uh, you know recently those transactions where he was to go to on youtube and give the through other entities who other companies or other youtube uh, influencers speaking about companies which come which shares will go up which shares will go down correct they are called dumping activities dump and pump activities he was doing arshad varsi and his wife maraya goretti both were banned from trading by sebi now tell me can arshad varsi take over one more company no can he apply can he be a resolution applicant no or is any of his entities be resolution applicant no that's what they are trying to tell disqualified under 164 of the companies act promoter of the corporate debtor or preferential transaction under value transaction extortionate credit transaction or fraudulent transaction has taken place in all these cases this we will see later executed a guarantee as a connected person ineligible under all the above points basically if these things have happened even if you are convicted for 2 years there is some relaxation here uh here no restriction for a person after a period of expiry of 2 years from the date of release of from imprisonment from the day you release 2 years later you can still pick up any company on the other hand what about this uh can one financial entity is there it has what do you say can it only take over any company yes now there is a loan if you don't pay the loan this company will convert the loan into shares whereby this financial entity let's say sbi uh, will get 20% stake in this company 20% stake in this company can sbi take over this company ideally no because you have substantial interest but why did you get this interest because of the business transaction so if you see 29a is not applicable to a financial entity who is not a related party to the corporate debtor and sbi is not called a related party if a financial entity holds shares in the corporate debtor solely on account of conversion of debt into equity shares so these are some of the provisions so 29a was inserted by uh, arun jetli after which new metal threw out revan thruya actually and they asked this fellow to pay did he pay yes he desperately wanted to buy sr steel eventually arcelor metal only bought sr steel so he desperately wanted to buy sr steel so what happened paid off 7000 crore 7000 crore was fully paid so if you see now moving on that is fine that's okay but 
many things happened due to sr steel the uh, next part of the story was one second here Section 29A has introduced prevents defaulter promoters and related party from bidding from stressed assets. Ruya's SR Steel is barred from bidding. Similarly, RP find both bids ineligible under Section 29A. Both New Metal and Arcelor Metal move NCLT challenging the rejection. NCLT holds New Metal bid valid of Ruya exits. Arcelor Metal asked to clear dues of 7,000 crore, and they did it. They did it. Arcelor Mittal revises the offer to 42,000 crore, whereas New Metal was 37,000 crore. So, who won the bid? Arcelor Mittal. So, when they are about to, what do you say, celebrate, one more twist in the story. SR Steel, they only came and said, please withdraw under 12 capital A. They told SBI and Standard Chartered, please withdraw under 12 capital A. We will pay every rupee. This was the next offer. Arcelor has decided to give 42,000 crore as we discussed. 41,987 financial creditors, 214 operational creditors. This is the overall claim. 49,395 financial creditors are getting almost you know, 80-90%. Whereas operational creditors are not getting anything, almost peanuts, but still they are getting something. It would have been zero anyway. So, 42,000 crore, SR Steel entered the entire plan and they said every rupee we will pay, full, 54,389 crore, full payment we will make. Who will win the bid? SR Steel is ineligible, but SR Steel is telling you withdraw, we will pay, you please withdraw, we will definitely make the payment. So, who will win the case obviously? SR Steel, but then nobody allowed the courts did not allow this because if this happens everybody you know will start doing the same thing go on till the last part that's why if you see what was the dialogue when can you withdraw until the resolution plan was approved so here it almost approved it is then at the time of approval you are coming and doing all these things again it went to court Asler Mittal took them to court again and obviously they said in the interest of the law it's always better for a new person to come and take over because then they ask the question, what were you doing all this all this time? This was default was not six months, seven months, two, three years, you, did, you said no money. How did money suddenly come? Valid question. Where did the sources, how did you get the all this funding? How did you get 54,000 crore? Just because your company is going away from you, you are now in a position to manufacture money, is what they said actually. So, it is, there is no way that I will allow you to get this thing 54,389 crore so that is what they said very very simple guys so this was what the Arcelor versus SR offer was so obviously eventually who won Arcelor Mittal won this was not the end of the story what happened was this proposal went to the NCLT this proposal went to NCLT this was decided by whom COC COC, Committee of Creators, NCLT also approved. I mean, uh, COC uh, approved, it went to NCLT. NCLT did one blunder. What did they do? They said, you are taking 41,987 crores. That is almost like 80-85%. Here you are giving peanuts. He said, I will approve 42,000 crores, no problem. But I am going to change the matrix. Means what? You just take some 30,000 30, crores remaining or you just take some 35,000, 36,000, 37,000 crores. Here, at least let's pay 4,500 crores. You take a further haircut. That's called a haircut technically. You take a further haircut. You take 37,000 crores. So, this time, who went against NCLT? SBI. SBI went against NCLT saying that what is this nonsense? So, why should I? If, if they had a simple dialogue, if I have to take it at 35,000, 36,000 crore, then I would have, why would I have taken a secured loan like this? I would have given an unsecured loan and charged 20% interest. I would have got interest every month. I have taken and given at dirt cheap rates because it's a huge risk. And 
they said that nclt cannot what do you say go against the commercial wisdom of the coc commercial wisdom of the coc nclt also changed the matrix and all those things all that happened then it went to supreme court now supreme court rf nariman was the judge wonderful decision he said financial creditors are 100% right they cannot look into what the they i mean the the nclt cannot judge the commercial judgment of the coc and they have lot of risk etc all that they have taken because the nclt nclt was still okay not so much but nclt went into the discussion of equity and equality and all those things so they went into equity versus equality so if you see equity versus equality discussion if you take into consideration if you take this is the picture which speaks about what equity versus equality as simple as that right equality is what all three are equal right equity on the other hand so that all people will be on equal footing so that is the actual meaning of equity that is justice so can i you know impart justice in such a way that an operational creditor who takes minimum risk he will be equated on par with financial creditor is that true or the equality itself is equity is the discussion that was done by rf nariman wonderful judgment some almost 100 pages if you see you learn some thousand new words right that is one thing so that is a wonderful judgment uh, then yes this is what happened they came out with a wonderful wonderful judgment that was in 2020 2021 2020 ish they came out with a amazing judgment which uh, 1920 that range so where they said was okay now let me do one thing you are an operational creditor you are crying now telling you are only getting 214 assume it the company had gone for liquidation how much you would have got so they said so you please do a proper valuation how much you would have got there are two things this is called resolution value value that you have generated during resolution you please calculate the liquidation value in liquidation how much you would have got so when they did the calculation they came to know they only would have got 50 50 crores that's it 214 you are getting and here 50 crore you are getting something no don't be greedy don't be greedy point number 1 point number 2 they also told the financial creditors boss you take whatever you want but for these people you should ensure that they will get the, the they said the resolution value should be equal to at least liquidation value you they should not feel because they don't have any power to vote in the coc they should not feel if they had gone for liquidation they would have got 400 they should not feel like that so in the distribution of assets in the entire uh, what do you say scheme of things and there is a distribution of assets that comes here i'll show you yeah this is page 200 distribution of assets the court wonderfully said if you distribute if you distribute what the all the assets in this liquidation value if you are there are two things resolution value liquidation value they told very simple you please organize all the values in the exact sequence what you would have got had you gone for liquidation so basically who are crying the people who are crying were who were the guys who gave uh, services and goods if you see the water this is called a waterfall mechanism this is during liquidation waterfall mechanism they said first is insolvency resolution cost you'll get liquidation cost workmen due employee due financial debts here they are saying you are crying they are saying you are getting 214 if i had gone for liquidation no if i would have given all these people and by the time i came to you you would have just got 50 crore in this you are getting in 214 let's say you are getting some 70 crore so the judge said beautifully you take the resolution value no problem and distribute it as per as if the company is going for liquidation wonderful you take the resolution value what is the resolution value 214 crore and distribute it as if the company is going for liquidation second part take the liquidation value only 
and distribute. Court said beautifully, this or this, whichever is higher, you should get. Fair, very fair. So, the liquidation, the resolution value or the liquidation value, both you will organize in this waterfall mechanism. Because if you reject this, uh, what do you say, 214, I will go for liquidation. And you have no power to reject because the SBI said, sir, you are giving me 37,000 crore. Genuinely, if I sell off the assets now, I will get 42,000 anyway. So, for me, I will get 42,000 if it is going to liquidation. I would have got 41,000 here in, uh, you know, resolution. So, I thought, let the resolution only go ahead. But now you are making it 37,000 crore. I'd rather go for liquidation. That's why wonderful judgment, RF Nariman said, okay boss, whatever value, that resolution value, organize, arrange in this only. Then liquidation value also arrange in this only. Whichever is higher you take, very, very fair, excellent judgment. Whatever judgment came, Nirmala madam copy pasted, simple and made it into a law, that is the law now. So the law is that, as I told you these questions, you know, are since they are new, relatively new, not asked many times. So, page number 195. Important amendment due to the Supreme Court judgment in SR Steel case. So, check first one. Resolution plan. Resolution plan provides for Payment of debts. Resolution plan provides for payment of debts of operational creditors which shall not be less than, shall not be less than. Here, amount paid to such creditors in the event of liquidation under 53 means what? Waterfall mechanism, that mechanism. What are they trying to tell? Liquidation value you take and distribute in that, that amount. Or, amount that would have been paid to such creditors if the amount to be distributed under resolution plan had been distributed in accordance with the priority there. Means, resolution value distributed in accordance with 53. Whichever is higher. Whichever is higher. Very, very good provision. Extremely fair. Extremely fair. They say you are not happy with 200, go for liquidation. Liquidation will get 50. Are you happy? No. They said then leave it. You cannot pinpoint the commercial wisdom of COC. Just because you don't have power and they have the power to take decisions and just because you got just 200 out of 5000 crores, 200 also you won't have got otherwise. You are now obviously, you know, becoming greedy. You have no right to claim equality. They said equality itself is equity. Wonderful judgment, right? Equity is everyone will be on equal footing. It is fair and reasonable. Then some guidelines he gave. This one, distribution shall be fair and equitable to such creditors. As I told you, the judgment was fully copy-pasted into the law. So whatever you read these wordings are the wordings created by that Two-member bench, if I am not wrong, RF Nariman and one more person. Yes, wonderful judgment. Then, one more issue had happened in NCLAT. Those who had uh, said no to the, this thing, no, in financial creditors who had said no to the resolution plan, they had got less amount. They had got less amount in this and also Hero Corporation, one more case law. They got less amount, just because I said no. But there was no, no, no law which said, you can get more or you can get equal. Law did not say so. So, if you see here, those who do not wait in, vote in favor of the resolution plan shall at least get same payment as the creditors would have got in the event of liquidation of the corporate debtor. So, same amount they will definitely get. No change. This was the wonderful decision in SR Steel case. So, resolution applicant will give the plan to resolution professional, examine the, each the plan and confirm and will present to the COC and that fellow will, and the finally COC will approve 66% and for example, shareholder approval not needed if COC approval is already taken. So, if COC once they approve, especially we just saw compromise and arrangement in section 230 and 
232. What do you think? Uh, shareholder approval also has to be taken. No? How many shareholders? Minimum, uh, ma that is majority and three fourth in value. Correct? Majority in number and three fourth in value, if you remember. So, should I take their approval? No. The moment it goes through COC, it is deemed that already taken shareholders approval. Because COC suspends shareholders' powers, COC suspends board powers. But what about uh, any other approval? For example, you have to take Kreta's approval, you have to take the sectoral uh, approval also. So, for example, if it's an insurance company going down, you should take the approval of IRDA, etc. What about that? Can I take that? Yes, that should be taken within one year. That should be taken within one year from the approval of the resolution plan. If it, in, it results in, what do you say, takeover. What about this? What do you say? If Vodafone and Idea come together, creating Vodafone Idea, uh, will you take CCI approval one year later? No. Damage would already been done because CCI approval you should take before the creation of a combination. Hence, CCI approval should be taken prior. Shareholder approval, this one year and then COC, CCI approval. CCI approval should be taken when? Prior approval to be taken, prior approval to be taken. Whereas, uh, other approval other than shareholders approval within one year and shareholders approval not needed at all if the, uh, you know, approval is already taken by the resolution plan. That's it. Then what happens? All these plans will be presented, voted, approved plan will be sent to AA. When they order, they are satisfied, they will approve, they reject it, then liquidation. If they accept it, guys, moratorium will cease to have effect. The resolution uh, plan will be sent to the board, will be recorded in the database, everything. There ends the matter. Now, this central government, state government dues like GST, income tax, they are operational creators or financial creators? Operational. They had all taken a haircut. They had just taken 2 crore out of 10 crore, 3 crore out of 5 crore, all that they had taken. Fair enough, they got the money also. Now, once the new company took over, they started sending notices, 8 crore, right? Government, what can I expect? 2 crore. The department started sending notices like this. What do you think? It is va valid or invalid? You know, that's why one more amendment came here. Yes. Approved resolution plan is binding on corporate debtor, employee, members, creditors, and this was inserted later. CG, SG, and all state authorities, including any local authority, BESCOM, all these things. 16th August 2019. These are all the changes, guys. Simple. Then that's all. That is about CIRP. That ends. Then what begins? Liquidation. So once they had asked for 4 marks, when will you begin liquidation? When will you begin liquidation? The CIRP is not approved by COC. Or the COC approves, but... A, a double A, that is NCLT feels it is waste. That then, then that's what. Then which one? No plans. No plans. Yes, there are 66. Basically, not received any resolution plan. A rejects the resolution plan. 66 percent of them say it's better to go for liquidation only. Then debtor contravenes the plan. In all of these cases, I will pass the liquidation order. Public announcement will be made, same thing. And these are the four items in liquidation. Appointment of liquidator, formation of liquidation estate, consolidation and valuation of claims, and distribution of assets. That's it. So, this timeline I have again taken from regulation. This can come in MCQ. Full timeline. The moment liquidation has commenced, within five days I have to make public announcement. And within 30 days from the first day, Collation of claims, submission of claims. I will collect all the claims, I will submit all the claims. Within 14 days from that day, I can withdraw the claim or I can vary the claim. So, overall how many days? 30 days. First 30 days. Within that 30 days, within first 5 days, what I should do? Public announcement. And uh, from the expiry of 30 days, collation of claims will be done. Submission of claims will be done. 
and then 14 days from that day i will either withdraw the claim or vary the claim from the expiry of 30 days 30 more days you will get to do what verify the claims verify the claims within that verification period only you can withdraw or vary if you want to after that nothing possible after verification i can either accept the claim or i can reject the claim if i accept the claim within 7 days i have to communicate to the creditor and then within 14 days of that creditor may again appeal to AA because you know you have what you say accepted rejected or you have not given the proper result for me if you accept my claim no problem if you reject my claim within 14 days i can claim and appeal these timelines with the dates can come in mcq here and there within how many days i should go for public announcement all those things there how many days CIRP 3 days, CIRP 3 days, here it is 5 days, like that they can confuse you, you will remember 3 and go the last liquidation, that is a problem, institute is like that only, so you will write 3 and come, they will say wrong, yeah. so you will say no, it's 3 plus GST, GST I forgot, 5 days, Yeah. so 198 is the next appointment of liquidator, very simple, AA will pass an order for liquidation, and resolution professional only can act as liquidator or you can replace same replacement also can happen this procedure is the same guys it will be sent to the board within 10 days i will propose another person's name simple liquidation estate what all will be included what all will be excluded any assets over which the corporate debtor has ownership rights will be included encumbered assets where others have a right over the asset i've given a loan secured assets will come there tangible and intangible assets then there is one you would have seen everywhere you own the land you own everything but that outstanding suit will be written they would have said that it is under what do you say it's sub judici sub judici means it court case is going on but paper is with me all the papers are with me i'm the company i own the assets should i take that or not take it case court case is still going on so I should take it. Later we'll see. Based on the decision, we need to see that. But if the court case is still going on about the ownership, but I have a set of valid papers according to me, which are valid. Point number this point. Ownership of assets determined by the court or authority should be. It is still to be determined. Can be taken. No problem. Assets or their value recovered through other proceedings should be taken. Yes, this point I'll explain later. Property belonging to or vested at the insolvency commencement and everything I will take. What should I not take then? Assets owned by third party which are in possession of the corporate data. There is a company called uh, is Furlenko. If you have heard Furlenko, you can use rented furniture. Like if I don't want, like if I want my interiors to be changed every time. So many people, they, they have built a business over it. Imagine, people, they have built a business over people's what do you say need for change who will keep on buying furniture so best is what every one month i have changed my interior so for lenko it's a very very successful business right so for lenko i have the entire my entire company has only for lenko assets because i kept on changing the interiors and for me i realized that that is slightly higher cost than buying i know but at least every month it keeps changing now the question is will i take that into account no, obviously. Assets owned by third party, which are in possession of the corporate data, are not to be taken. Assets in security collateral held by financial service provider, all your margin money, etc., that should not be taken because it's separately set aside for that. Personal assets of any shareholder should not be taken. Assets of any, this they had asked once. Can I take over the Indian or foreign subsidiaries' assets also? No. Other assets. These are all the inclusions and exclusions. Then, he will consolidate the claims within 30 days and he will uh, you have to keep on submitting the claims and he will submit the claims financial creditor and operational creditor partly financial partly operational financial creditor i will provide record of claim with information utility and all these details i will collect and there are partly financial partly operational means what so SBI had given a loan to X Limited, they are financial creditor. X Limited had, I mean, somebody else, Mr. A, had sold goods to SBI also, sorry, to X Limited, had sold goods to X Limited. And against that payment, 
he had discounted the bill here, bill discounting, right? So when I discount with SBI, so obviously SBI also will be now the operational creditor. So operational creditor is to a person whom the operational debt is owed, but also to any other debt which has been legally assigned or transferred. Same with financial debt also. All this factoring, etc., all that should be taken into consideration. So if I am partly financial, partly operational, the extent of financial debt, I am financial creditor, the extent of operational debt, I am operational creditor. In 4 14 days, I can vary the claim. We have seen that already. Then they will verify the claim and they will send the details. All that in the initial timeline only we saw. Then lastly, now this is an interesting thing. In Companies Act, if you are a secured creditor, in Companies Act, if you are a secured creditor, what are options you have? First, you give up the security and become fully unsecured. You are a secured creditor. The value of the amount that you are taken is uh, decent. Uh, but the thing is the security. You have given around one and a half crore. But the security that you have is completely now, though you are taken at the time of taking it was three crore. Now it has reduced to some one crore. So what you will do better to relinquish the security and stand as unsecured. You feel as unsecured creditor you will get more money. That is one. Or you value the security. If you feel it's enough to cover the liability, enforce the security interest, ignore liquidation fully. Ignore liquidation fully. If value of securities is not enough to cover the debts, then for example, you have given a 2 crore loan, you feel that in the market, the property that you have 4 crore you will get. But unfortunately, they know it's a distress sale, so you will only get 1 crore. You can recover 1 crore. For remaining 1 crore, you will stand as unsecured creditor. Unsecured credit. This is what was happening in all the cases. People knew it was a distress sale. So they were buying it for very less. So gone. But here, beauty about this IBC is, they say, if you relinquish, means what? If you give up the asset for me, I will put you in the second line only. If you see this, here. I will put you here. Secured creditors. Proceeds of relinquished security. If you have relinquished your asset, if you have given up your asset, you will get the money immediately. Means first is what? Insolvency cost, second is uh, liquidation cost, workman dues and here. Secured creditors debt. You will get the money right there. Secured creditors debt, you will get it right there. What if I realize the asset and enforce the charge. I realize the asset and enforce the charge. Then they say for the unpaid amount, same example, 2 crore, you sold it off for 1 crore, remaining 1 crore, where you will stand? And guys, this is like horrible. You see, first is insolvency, resolution cost, liquidation cost, workman dues of 24 months and secured creditors debt. Employee due of 12 months, financial debt owed to unsecured creditors, dues to CG, SG for 2 years. Here, after unsecured creditors also, you will pay to normal unsecured creditors. After that, you will pay to government and then if anything is left, unpaid dues of secured creditors. Unpaid dues of secured creditors. Who are these who have not relinquished their asset? Those who have relinquished their asset, first payment here. Those who, un, uh, you know, after the insolvency resolution process cost, the first payment will come to them only. This anyway, usually you should pay the co process cost first. First will be given to whom? Secured creditors. But if you don't relinquish your asset, you sell the asset, recover some money for the remaining amount. You have to come here. Unpaid dues of secured creditors. Remaining debts and dues. And then preference shareholders, then equity shareholders. So what is better? Obviously, to relinquish. But in companies that if you relinquish, you will become unsecured. That's the biggest advantage of IBC. You relinquish the security, you will get to stand, you will stand to get what? Full money. Because if you 
want to sell the asset it is always a distress sale people will know the company is going down you are selling that asset to recover some part of your money so they will always purchase at a lesser amount always they will purchase at lesser amount then finally what happens guys corporate debtor assets are completely liquidated and uh, as far as the waterfall mechanism is yes, coming back waterfall mechanism this is called the waterfall mechanism so first you will pay the insolvency resolution process cost and liquidation cost what would be the insolvency resolution process cost irp fees obviously first is irp fees liquidation will be liquidation fees then all the employees who are working during cirp their salary will be irp uh, irp cost ir cost that is insolvency resolution process cost then that water all those things essentials yes interim finance all this will be expenses covered under insolvency resolution process cost liquidation cost is everything that is needed to end the company that first you will get including a liquidators fee then workmen due of 24 months this question has come twice already for 8 marks they will give you a list of everything you need to organize it in this manner they will give you workmen due of 30 days 30 months so you should convert it to 24 months remaining 6 months what you will do here remaining debt should, should come this will miss out while distributing that last 6 months due you have to put it here we will miss that so these things you should keep in mind now the question is till I come here it is around uh, 10 crore is left okay by 2 3 crore is left 3 crore is left central government due state government due both put together is 2 crore correct central government due state government due is 2 crore whereas unpaid due dues of secured secured creditors is 1 crore right let me say only 2 crore is left sg and cg 2 crore i have to pay and this secured creditor 1 crore i have to pay on the other hand in that cg due is 1.5 crore SG due is 50 lakhs. I just have 2 crores to pay now. But the overall due is 3 crore. What do I do? Who is to 1? Should I do 2 is to 1? You see it says and. And. So it says between and among. Should be pro, should be in the same proportion between and among is what the law uses the word between and among how do you what do you mean by that between the two it will it will be equal means what cgsg is one part that is two and unpaid use of secure creditor is one so what ratio is it two is to one so first of all that one crore whatever is left or 2 crore in my example should be first distributed in 2 is to 1 ratio first it should be distributed in 2 is to 1 ratio because it's see government and creditors are paid pari pasu pari pasu means what in proportion in the same proportion it is not equally in equal proportion equal proportion is what 2 is to 1 and then after 2 is to 1 is done then what will happen yeah then it should be in this ratio 1.5 is to 0.5 or whatever that ratio you have to do that ratio has to do first you will have to you know manage this here and then from that whatever is remaining you have to do it here that is what the loss is that's what the loss is so you should always do it in equal proportion in equal proportion between government dues ranked equally means not divided by two ranked equally means what equal proportion equal proportion so that is the next part then preference shareholders then lastly equity shareholders these are all the various things that we need to see then of course remaining debts and dues will be what workmen dues beyond 24 months 
Airtel broadband and all these other you know services etc will only come here guys in the remaining debts and dues employee dues more than 12 months correct all that will come here very very in the end it will come so that's why these fellows only are shouting there in sr steel so the judge said was if you had gone for liquidation you wouldn't have got anything actually so but then he also made it fair because tomorrow the financial creta should not take them for granted so they said the resolution value distribute in this or liquidation value distribute in this whichever is higher wonderful decision extremely amazing decision that is the same thing is there in the law now finally distribution after it is uh, distributed everything is done dissolution when will it be dissolved when the name is struck off from the register which register roc it will go to the roc the name is struck off finally resolution has happened till year they used to ask but then other bouncer questions used to come like this was never part of the syllabus actually it was there in part of 6d then they started asking in paper 4 also actually all these transactions then many times i am not kidding this one will come to this this part at least 3 to 4 times i asked concept of voluntary liquidation concept of voluntary liquidation minimum 3 to 4 times what do you mean by voluntary liquidation voluntarily liquidated yeah correct so in voluntary liquidation there is no what no default that's the best part there is no default but i don't want to go through the long winding procedure of companies act so i'll go through this and you may be surprised at least 400 to 500 companies have gone for voluntary liquidation one of it is my client only two best friend started this iitns they were cleaning the dust from the mobile phones mobile phones when it's manufactured there will be micro micro millimeters of dust inside that cleaning for cleaning separate companies there that goes at fully protected it is it's, you cannot even you know one speck of dust also can't go so one partner iitn did the entire you know entire uh, technique of cleaning one more guy was giving the tech support they started fighting it was a company which would, would have gone for listing also actually that was how they were growing because every mobile requires cleaning and they are probably one of the best in india but then as i said they were fighting they started fighting they didn't see eye to eye and then they said better now rather than what do you say continuing this me throwing you out you throwing me deadlock it is and deadlock i don't want to acquire you i have my own thing i can do my own company you can do your own company whatever let's end it so then they went through what section 59 voluntary liquidation so 400 500 companies already in india or maybe more now this was like few months ago May, maybe more have already gone for voluntary liquidation here there is no default but just that other reasons so this they will ask for four marks what are the what is the procedure declaration has to be given not affidavit declaration audited finance statement you have to give valuation report you have to give and one one is declaration and majority of directors should agree here both agreed majority is two only then an affidavit where i have made a full enquiry into all the debts there are no debts involved even if debts are existing you can pay because company is completely liquidated properly i mean basically that is it, it it has liquid assets it can be sold if liquidated it can be uh, what do you say every debtor every person every creditor sorry will get the full payment is what you need to give an affidavit sworn statement and then you pass an ordinary i mean special resolution generally in general meeting voluntary liquidation will happen that is one last to last attempt that us this one fast track insolvency right fast track insolvency fast track insolvency is for these things startup small company unlisted company small company definition has changed 4 crore and 40 crore 4 crore and 40 crore startup except partnership firm what is a startup private company or partnership firm partnership will not come here because i am talking about ibc of company 10 years from incorporation turnover less than 100 crore every year innovation development improvement scalable business model out of entities is not a startup it should be brand new small company unlisted company so the ones that ask there's an unlisted company with a total assets of 50 lakhs 
they want to go for insolvency advice people wrote cirp and came you should be careful to understand this unlisted company total assets less than or equal to 1 crore will go under fast track under fast track scheme what is it 90 days plus one time extension of 45 days so the 180 plus 90 it is what 90 180 plus 90 will now become 90 plus 45 and uh, what is the approval for extension 90 days i want to extend to 45 days 75% not 66% there this part they have not changed only it is 75% it is 75% so it is the same so adjudicating authority as we have seen nclt nclt supreme court sometimes mcq appeal to nclt within 30 days you should file nclt may allow further 15 days appeal to supreme court purely on a question of law for example kirusa versus mobilox the interpretation of the word and right so within 45 days from nclt order further 15 days is allowed offenses and penalties enjoy yeah Uh, no point doing all that. I will not remember. But this is important, guys. You are coming back. Two, three points are there. Here, one page, two hundred and one. So this is undervalued transaction and also, uh, you know, preferential transactions and also extortionate credit transactions. All these things cannot be done. All these things cannot be done. What do you mean by preferential transactions? We'll come to this. Preferential transaction means what? basically if i sell off the property or interest if i sell off property or interest in such a way that what do you what transfer of property or transfer of interest it says transfer of property or transfer of interest what do you mean by that one is registered mortgage one is equitable mortgage so transfer of property means registered mortgage transfer of interest means equitable mortgage so what do you mean by that basically that so much in depth discussion is not needed but just remember both are the types of mortgages only so basically ownership will be transferred in this eventually so if i transfer the ownership to somebody else i know that the uh, what do you say ibc is going to happen in the next one year i know i'll go to one creditor and say boss see ibc is going to happen before that and the thing goes down you take back your asset and you go or you take enforce the security take it and go so that is called as preferential transaction in company law it is called fraudulent preference that cannot be done how long you cannot do for related party you cannot do it 2 years before cirp for non related party 1 year before cirp so basically that is what they say so one exam nclt can pass all these orders discharge the con this they have asked for 2 3 marks property will be vested in corporate debtor sale proceeds has to be returned restitution of benefits i'll give you one or two practical examples quickly so that you will understand what do you mean by what is the benefit that you have to return what is the benefit that you need to return is what you need to check one second quickly so very simple just an example of what the nclt can do what you did first and what the nclt will do first d limited has given loan to z and he has z limited has given security security to d limited now this related party when will you do this you know that the company is going for liquidation so since you are related party 2 years before cirp only you know that the company is going for cirp and eventually it will go for liquidation you know Two years before only, what you do? You sell this asset already. Basically, loan you have given security for security they have given here. But what have you done? Sold the assets. From the proceeds, you are keeping the proceeds. Point number one, or you have sold the proceeds for the you use the proceeds and bought one more property. 
CIRP begins, the resolution professional will come to know that you did this. He will check all the transactions two years before CIRP and will figure out that one of the people here was Mr. D who happened to be the related party. He will apply under 43 and 44 and what will the NCLT order? What will the NCLT order? They will say, sir, two years before only you have done, which means you knew about the CIRP, I am sure. That is what the law says. Preferential transaction, two years before CIRP, one year before CIRP for non-related party. They will say, what? Reverse gear. What should you do? Return the proceeds. And return the another property that you bought from the proceeds. Okay, one minute. We will show video. Yes, that is what? Return the proceeds or what? Return the full property back. No mercy. Return the property back also. This is the beauty of this. This order they had asked once. What all will you do? Property should be vested back in corporate debtor. Sale proceeds will be vested back. Restitution of benefits. You gave me a building. I gave you a loan. I have rented out the building without asking you. I am getting rent. Imagine, I am getting interest back from you and I am getting rent also from this property. That fellow comes to know, the RP. Can he ask me to restore the benefits? Yes, third one. Restitution of benefits. Like that. So, you know, those are the various things that you can do. There are many such things like that. You can, you know, any, everything the law will say, you have to restore. That is what? Preferential transaction. Next is what? Undervalued transaction. In undervalued transaction, basically this is your consideration less than the value. In income tax, you would have got 56 to 10. Right? That one. So, whatever is valued at 10 crore, I am selling it to you at 8 crore. I am selling it to you at 7 crore. Then, for the receiver, you will have to pay tax there. So, similarly here, was whatever property valued at 10 crore, how did you sell it at 6 crore to that person? So, this is a undervalued transaction. When did you do this? Same, one year before CIRP or two years before CIRP for a related party. So, I will make these transactions void. Cancel reverse gear. Give back the property. But one question additional they asked. I have undervalued transaction sold to you. You have sold that property to a bona fide purchaser. Can I recover that money? No. Indoor management will come and moreover, if it's any goods, there was one in uh, foundation, there was one level called foundation, yeah. There we had studied one sale of goods, one chapter was there in a subject called law. So there we had studied one concept, nemo dat quad non-habit. You cannot transfer to somebody what you don't have. But one of the exceptions to that is what? This. This one is one exception. If you have, basically, if you are not an owner, you cannot transfer better ownership to somebody. I have company has sold a property of 10 crore to you at 5 crore. Basically, you are not an owner because I have fraudulently done this. You have used that 5 crore and sold it to somebody at 7 crore. But he has bought it in good faith. Good, some good. Can you ask him to return? No. General rule, you cannot transfer to somebody what you don't have. Or do you have the ownership? No. Basically, you can't transfer better ownership. But exception to that is this. The law specifically states, bona fide for value, if somebody has purchased, he can return the goods. No problem, he can return, I mean, sorry, he need not return the goods. He can keep the goods if he can prove that the purchase was good faith. Here, that transaction is void. But revision of yesterday, 192, non-cash transaction under Companies Act. I will give you a building, you give me shares, that is what? Voidable. That is voidable. 188, related party, voidable. 181 a that is sale, lease or otherwise dispose, then it will become void. These are some of the things. Last part is extortionate credit transactions, extortionate. And then what are the orders? Orders are the same thing as restore, set aside, modify, all that. But what are these extortionate credit transactions? So, in that Raha Financials only, I understood the meaning of, real meaning of extortionate credit transactions. Raw financials, they had looted money, you know, 20 crore and all those things. But the main reason why they succeeded is because of human greed. Because 
that fellow ra financials when he took money from my client and all he told sir i will give you 2% per month 2% per month 24% then he said sir you bring your relatives also for them i'll give 2% for you and actually for them i'll give 1 and 1/2% and that half percent i will pass it on to you plus extra half percent i'll give you so basically 3% per month i'll give that is the scam that he did 3% per month is 36% per per annum and he did that also for the first 3 4 months he gave he gave for 4 5 months actually people trusted him then he again went to him and told uncle one scam sorry one scheme is there ha huh? what scheme a new scheme is there you bring more 1 crore more i'll give you 4% that to, to almost 5% per month he had gone what he was doing is very simple he used to take money from you it's a ponzi scheme take money from you pay somebody else take money from him pay you like that kept on taking money he didn't invest anything in the stock market he himself bought on bmw car and all had the main guy that's it then one fine day somewhere it will stop no then he ran away correct so that's what happened so with this we went to the uh, you know police commissioner i remember crime branch head crime branch head in that infantry road right i had gone with uh, this client they were sitting that guy came the police commissioner he asked what is the thing first 20 crore he laughed as sir that small amount and all i'm sorry we are doing that ready fellow now you are coming that fellow having uh, daughter's wedding and all is organizing openly you know 200 300 crores he spent on the daughter's wedding and there was a invitation video invitation all of them singing dancing right and one uh, invitation was some 2 3 lakhs not joking crazy so i am doing that thing sir and you are coming for 20 crores and all that what is this and anyway tell me sir okay that's fine let's assume that we can do something about it what was the interest rate that he offered you my client on bakra fellow he told the truth sir 3% sir 3% per annum no no sir 3% per month so he said you will be jailed the moment you openly tell like this i am your assume i am your friend i am not going to do anything you are actually telling a police officer i am going to assume that you did not tell me only he actually was sweet he said i am assuming i am you are not telling me otherwise you will be jailed he said there is one law in 1925 you can go check then i realized there is a law i went and checked online it is called usurious loans act usurious loans act it was actually created in tamil nadu because everyone used to give one day loan 100 rupees i'll give you return back 40 rupees with interest 40 rupees 3% per day 4% per day 10% per day and all even till today it is there people take 1000 rupees by the end of the day they have to give 100 rupees back 10% interest per day how many 300% per month 3600% it is there and is still there it is still there normal small small money lenders do this only usurious loans act for that in tamil nadu it is highly prevalent i had told this in class one of my uh, students who is now uh, is studying law in uh, jindal university she did on thesis also on usurious loans act and she did a full what do you say entire you know thesis on this usurious loans act she tagged me also like what did i do right i just told you the name usurious loans act poor thing nice of her she tagged me saying that because of you i got to know i said i also got to know because of that guy so anyway usurious loans act deadly but she had done a nice you know analysis of that and i got to know from her it was highly prevalent in tamil nadu actually but it's there across the country also yes so he said you will be jailed under this sir because you are not supposed to take more than 24% per annum you are actually lending money. at the end of the day what have you done lent money lent money and you are in that you are taking 36% if you invest in other things it's fine but this is lending money because what they had done is they had taken it as sole proprietorship and from sole proprietorship they had uh, lent it to the company all that scam they had done so ultimately for my client he didn't invest in the company he lent it to a sole proprietor so there is your your loans act so you will be jailed sir so i am considering myself to be your friend and i am not hearing it i am sitting here as your friend not as a commissioner he told all of your witnesses because if you tell this to me as a police officer waiting down jail like a usurious loan sack because i'll first take you for investigation so i did not even know that there was a law like this that is called extortionate credit transaction 
in contract act is something which is unconscionable means what you cannot even think of it how can you think of 36 percent per annum right so that is what it is that is what they did that is what raha financials did so like that there are so many raha financials raha in the hindi means what way they showed the way to themselves and they went right yeah so that is raha. it was on jp nagar main road it was superb office yeah telling you everything see for my clients at least they'll save today that client no he was actually having some 10 crore worth of property Today he is taking anti-depressing depression medi medications. Very sad to see him. When I went to coffee day, I had seen him two years ago full bubbly. In coffee day, sitting like on dead body. I like, hello sir, how are you? He is not even talking. I could not believe that I was seeing him. So if you see, even today is like that. His wife, just yesterday his wife, there is one group also. Raha FIR group is there. Still there. Yesterday only she messaged any update. Two people left. <laughs> That's all. So, what will you do? Over three years old story, it is 2019, before COVID, 2008, no, no, 2018, oh, six years over, five, six years, still poor lady, that lady's husband, I mean, that, sorry, that guy, guy's uh, wife, basically, this big, she has become the husband of everything now, she was a homemaker, she had no clue about all these things, husband has invested without informing anybody, gone, one property here, one more rare fraud also, is caught there, he had bought a 40, 60 property in Gurugram, uh, and he went there, it was a 4 by 6. One bit of shop he has to put there. Poor guy, very, very sad guys. And it is, you know, you feel like laughing, I know, but it is very sad actually. Extremely painful. You see his eyes, he can't even cry. Tears are dried up. So, if you see, sad. So, that's why you should not do any of those things. We should not be greedy, is what they say generally, but we will not listen. Yes. Extortionate credit transaction. There's a movie also, no? Tumbad. Yeah, please watch that movie after exams, right? If you haven't watched already, beautiful movie. It was one of the most original movies ever to come in India. But then it is super flop movie because people don't understand such movies. Super duper flop it was. Nobody understood only that movie. So it is all about human greed. It is all about human. Some three, four songs, Karan Jor, I don't know, if they added there, it would have become a hit. Yeah, yeah. So that is the problem. So unconscionable, conscionable transactions. Require so like this if you have given anything which is extortionate credit transaction require the corporate data to make exorbitant payments in respect of credit provided or are uh, unconscionable under the principles of law relating to contracts then they are called as extortionate credit like this if you have given money for three percent four percent like that then obviously they will restore everything restore refund modify require all these things they'll do so this is what this provision is all about so we shall watch a video after which we will uh, take do a little bit basics of fcra then we'll take a break we'll just little bit basics over this is that's oh sorry one more is there we'll finish this this one part is there we should not leave anything insolvency professional did we not do this oh no insolvency professional uh, this is also one more thing guys no individual shall be eligible to be registered, page number 209, 209. After this only the prepackaged comes, but here, 209, no individual shall be eligible to be registered as an insolvency professional if he is a minor, is not a person resident in India, does not have qualification and experience specified in regulation 5, means insolvency exam you have to do. Convicted, moral turpitude, all these things. Seven years means permanent disqualification. Undischarged insolvent, same. Declared a sound mind, he should be a fit and proper for person. If he is not a fit and proper person, he is not qualified. Now, one beautiful thing is under PMLA, assets can be confiscated. Correct? Under PMLA, assets can be confiscated. But under this thing, what do you say? IBC. Assets will be left. Now, this uh, one more question before that. I told you this assets will be restored. No, restored. Those assets will it form part of liquidation estate or not? Whatever assets I have taken back from the related party, etc., will it form part of liquidation estate? Yes. I told you I will do it later. No, this only. See, this too. Assets or their value recovered through proceedings. And this one also, assets issued as a collateral over which creditors have relinquished the rights. Asset relinquish the rights and the uh, creditor will stand in second in line. Those assets, right? Those two assets and this is 
recovered through proceedings. What proceedings? 43, 45, 46, those proceedings. So, whatever I have recovered, that also will be added part of my liquidation assets. Now, linking that proceedings only, the question is, under PMLA, which is a criminal legislation, criminal legislation, who is standing there, this uh, special court has ordered for confiscation of the goods, of the property. But this fellow has put it in this liquidation estate. Now the question is, IBC will override PMLA or PMLA will override IBC. If you go to PMLA section 71, it says, notwithstanding anything contained. If you come to IBC, it says, notwithstanding anything contained. Both will be fighting. So, but the entire deal has come to an end now because of one section which they have introduced afresh. Nirmala Madam's idea, 32 capital A. Here it is. Last page, 210, 29. Provisions of this code will override other laws. IBC will override inconsistent provision of other laws, but most importantly this one. 32 capital A has been inserted, relatively new section. They say two things. One, the moment new company has taken over, which is not linked to old promoter, not linked to any fraudulent person, brand new management. Correct? This is like, what do you say? Mega statue, permanent statue. Don't come and take away my assets. It's already mine now. I don't care if PMLA, everything is there. It will not be attached. This also, many cases are pending as of today, claiming 32A to be unconstitutional. Because 32A is actually barring other laws from taking over the assets, especially a criminal law. PMLS criminal law, IBC civil. So, Rotomac, in Rotomac, Vikram Kotari is the owner of Rotomac pens, used to come right before. So, Rotomac case, he said that that is criminal, that is civil, it should go hand in hand. But 32A has completely nullified that Supreme Court judgment of Rotomac. And now they are telling under PMLA, if any confiscation you can make and pay off other people, not allowed. They say no action shall be taken against any property in relation to any offence committed prior to the commencement of CIRP, where such property is covered under a resolution plan and approved by adjudicating authority. Which results in what? Change in control of the corporate debtor to a person who is not promoter of the old corp. No old promoter is there, don't worry. And no person who is guilty is there here. Brand new management. Don't come and touch any asset. Even if it is attached before, I don't care. Even if you want to confiscate, I will not allow. So what do you mean by no action? No action means what? They have explained that also. No attachment. No seizure. Attachment, seizure, both are the same. But in PMLA, they have used the word attachment. No seizure, no attachment, no retention. If you say, if you don't want to use that seizure attachment, you will use the word retention. No retention also. And no confiscation also of such property. So, deadly point this is. So, finally guys, to just quickly revise before we, you know, uh, watch that video and then do the basics. So, this is the entire... Uh, chart with respect to IBC. So, let us just uh, quickly see that if it comes. So, that is the entire full-blown chart with respect to the IBC provisions. Let's see one second. So, first you will apply to the, what do you say, double A. Apply to double A. Within 14 days, that fellow will admit or reject the application come in, the moment you admit the application cirp begins and within 7 days you will communicate to the corporate data appointment of irp begins appointment of irp the moment you appoint irp within 3 days public announcement creditors to submit their claims irp to verify the claims constitution of coc and then first meeting of coc the tenure of the irp is still the date that what is the RP is appointed, the day the RP is appointed. And then circulation of information memorandum and mind you, the moment the CIRP begins, 180 days will begin. 180, then it can be extended to 90, overall 330. 
So circulation of information memorandum, resolution applicant submit resolution plan, approval of plan by COC, submission of plan to NCLT, then acceptance rejection of plan. And of course, you can go for one time extension of 90 days. That is what there is to it. And of course, CRP will begin from the date of admission of application. That also we have seen. So that was regarding. And now, as I told you, many other companies could not go through this entire uh, CIRP, especially MSME. Micro, small, medium enterprises could not go through because of various problems that they encountered. So to ensure that they will get a level playing field, uh, government has introduced one more that is pre-packaged insolvency resolution process. This was all based on various committee reports. They were uh, discussing various committee reports that this has to be done. That's the reason why the PPIRP concept came into the entire picture because it was important and imperative for them also to do so. So only you should remember what is this uh, MSME and remaining you can of course see the uh, what do you say? The other part of the video which I will be sharing there, you can check it out. Basically, micro, small, medium enterprise. Micro enterprise is what? Investment in plant and machinery not more than 1 crore and annual turnover not more than 5 crore. Investment in plant and machinery not more than 10 crore and for small it is 5 crore. It is basically 1 into 10, 5 into 10, after that into 5 into 5. Just remember 1 and 5, then into 10, into 10, then whatever you get here, 10 and 50 into 5, into 5. So 10 5s of 50 and then 50 into 50 is 250 crore. So this you have to remember and go. Then basically the pre-packaged insolvency process will be, first you have to make an application. This is before CIRP. Then the other process begins. It's very easy guys that I will put later. This also they may ask one question here and there. This one question here and the other two questions will come, but all the base, once you figure out the base which you have done till now, that's all there is to it. So let's watch a video now quickly. Foreign Contribution Regulation Act, extremely important again, page number 278, cool. So Foreign Contribution Regulation Act. And there have been, of course, uh, amendments as well in this particular area. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, uh, quickly, in the IBC part, there is two, three amendments. We'll just finish it off. One is this admission or re rejection of claims is there. I am doing page 199. In admission and rejection of claims, one extra point is the liquidator will verify the claims within 30 days. Will verify the claims within 30 days. And you will also verify, just like any claim which was not submitted can be submitted within 90th day of the insolvency commencement date, if you remember. Right? I am doing page 199. In page 199, first is admission or rejection of claims, it is within 30 days. And if you remember, any in CIRP, you can still give the claim how much? How, how many days? 90th day from the insolvency commencement date similarly the liquidator also shall verify the claims collated during the CIRP but not submitted during CIRP I had submitted the claim the company is going for liquidation now I have not submitted again liquidation should I submit it again yes I have not submitted can you process that claim yes within 30 days from the last date of receipt of claims during liquidation process may either admit or reject the both so first we saw there, claim which you did not admit only, you can admit it within 90, 90th day from the insolvency commencement date for CIRP. Let's say CIRP I have admitted properly. I have submitted, it is admitted also. Again, liquidation I have to submit. I forgot to submit. But later, can you still accept it? Yes. How many days? 30 days from the last day for receipt of the claims. I can still go ahead. If you have already submitted during uh, CIRP, you can again further submit it here. This is one more amendment that has come. Couple of things we had to do this. I thought I'll do it one shot. In uh, page 193, in page 193, they can, I mean, they have added one point here. They have added one point. That is meetings of the, like meetings of the board, tell me. Who will call meetings of normal board meeting? 
the company secretary and direct company secretary will call if the director requests similarly here resolution profession may convene the meeting if he feels necessary but if the coc how many 33% of voting rights if they say that i have to please call a meeting then i have to call a meeting they have to call a meeting any proposal also same 33% that remember that and go 33% of voting rights 33% of voting rights then involuntary liquidation page 202 involuntary liquidation the insolvency professional the insolvency professional shall within 7 days earlier it was just 3 days within 7 days from the date of his appointment intimate the IBBI. So the insolvency professional, once he is appointed as liquidator within five, uh, five days, seven days, sorry, he will intimate. MCQ, they can ask. Within seven days, he should intimate the IBBI of his appointment. Involuntary liquidation, mind you. Involuntary liquidation only. Involuntary liquidation. And any in SEBI LODR, these things are there, guys. LODR SEBI, please uh, study this because one changes this 21 days from the end of the quarter instead of 15 days. Everything is there. This material is already given in my in my Telegram group. And of course, the types of committees, few changes have come. So please read that and go properly in terms of independent director and especially here, uh, 234. All the changes I have given here, it is very simple. These are the old provisions. You can ignore these provisions and make these changes. Correct? Make those changes. Is what it is. Couple of changes like that are there. These are all, you know, SEBI and all that. But yeah, of course, coming to the FCRA part, which anyway we will do now. Creditors. This is like a compromise and arrangement. Compromise and arrangement which we discussed in a more structured manner under IBC. Compromise and arrangement in a structured manner under IBC is prepack. It's a quasi formal procedure. Quasi means resembling. It resembles a procedure where the resolution plan is finalized before the actual initiation of the proceedings only. Imagine. Compromise. Sir, things are not working well, sir. If I go for IBC, nobody will come, sir. That, let's keep that as a last resort. Let's try this route. If this also nobody comes, then I'll go there. Then I, it's my fate, my destiny. But at least let me try it under this law, is what this law is all about. Quasi-formal procedure. So, where we decide the uh, entire package before we even initiate any proceedings. The entire framework of prepack revolves around the corporate debtor having control of its entity, control to manage the FSO. Unlike IBC, where the possession will be transferred to the creditors, here possession will remain with the debtors. Motivation for a debt burden stressed out corporate debtor in prepack is to figure out an agreeable way for its own corporate revival and save itself from its death. For the creditors, prepack would be a faster route. Even though section 12 of the code maximum is 330 days, process does not end within 180 days, etc. So here, there is something different, time limit and all that we will see. Benefits, of course, cost effectiveness, guys, because the corporate debtor continues with the existing management during prepack. It avoids the cost of disruption. In MSME, one day disrupted activity, gone. It does not shift the management to the resolution professional at all. And then it does not shift to the resolution applicant initially. Later it does. It also saves cost of the resolution professional to manage the business. See, resolution professional in IBC has to figure out everything and start managing the business. That will take time. You are nothing. And the process remains away from the limelight till the commencement of the formal process. 
So until the process begins, it is away from the limelight. Nobody knows about it. You are still talking behind closed doors within four walls with the uh, creditors and arriving at a compromise or arrangement in a structured format. So compromise arrangement is under 230-231 of Companies Act, but under prepackaged, it has been structured into that 54 ABCD series. Proceedings are usually outside the court, costs are reduced. Speedy resolution process, it is difficult to keep the company alive in a stressful state. That's why it enables a faster resolution, preserves the value of stress assets, thereby increasing the possibility of resolution. Value maximization, any distress asset has a life cycle and the longer it stays in a state of stress, greater depletion it suffers. So here it preserves the value by cutting down these elements of the formal process. Less burden on courts also. The courts are overburdened with cases, do not have the capacity to deal with cases. A pre-pack has the potential to reduce litigation due to its informal and consensual nature. Consensual means two people are agreeing. I say yes, I agree, let's do it. Does not require at any cost any involvement of court during the informal part of the process and requires a minimum role of court as well. There is a need to have a functional out of court restructuring process since the vast majority of cases are restructured out of bankruptcy. So this is an out of court settlement sort of a thing guys. And most importantly, the entire structure is semi-formal. More they go into mediation and conciliation. So arbitration is where there is already a dispute, but there is still this, uh, you know, ill will or bad will between me and you in uh, arbitration. In conciliation, I try to empathize. In mediation, there will be a mediator who will try to settle the dispute. So this is more like conciliation and mediation. The biggest advantage is that the proposed resolution plans are not under any form of scrutiny of the public. Public will not know at all. In other big, big companies, Arnav Goswami can shout, nation wants to know. Here, nation will not know under any circumstance. It's a small company. It is a micro, small MSME are like the backbone of the economy, to be very honest. How many big big companies do you see? Okay. How many is very small, small, you know, you are unincorporated? Yes. India unincorporated can be the backbone, but they do not pay taxes. All your Pani Puri fellows and all those things, you will cannot underestimate them, guys. You cannot underestimate. I was just reading something that where one guy went to, uh, went, on, went on a train, and one samosa fellow came and he, he had fully finished that samosa that day. He was very happy. He is just a samosa seller. We feel sad. We just asked him. So this guy asked him, he was a, he was a chartered accountant only, he asked him, sir, okay, I hope today you are very happy. Yes, sir. I sold all the samosas today. Good, good. How much do you make? Isn't it very tough during the pandemic, sir? During the pandemic it was fine, but now it's brisk business. How many do you sell? Sir, 3,000 per day. Because I go in these trains, 3,000. So do you manufacture 3,000 samosas? No, sir. A samosa manufacturer is there. In bulk, he gives. I just sell. How much did you get? Sir, I get 1 rupee per samosa. So whatever I am charging some 15 rupees, I will give him 15. He will give me 1 rupee from that. I will take 1. So think about it. 3,000 samosas is 3,000 rupees per day. 3,000 into 30. 90,000 rupees per month. No tax. No EMI. Nothing. 90,000 hard cash. For us, TDS. Take home salary. Right? Take home. What is your take home? What is your CTC? What is your take home? If you see, employees don't care about CTC. Hey, that is cost to company. Tell me my take home salary. I will have to look at my expenses from take home salary. So, 90,000. So, you should never underestimate these people. They are the real unincorporated, really minting money. Not all, of course. But it's a lot of hard work, guys. But then, you you are also working hard. No, you are also working hard. After following all the laws, we are working hard. They are, they are also slogging, no doubt. But what is the point of education? I showed you that dosa video that day. One and a half lakh rupees per month is making profit. Yes, there's a lot of hard work. Yes, everything I agree. 
but one and a half lakhs no tax nothing so here also but the real backbone of the economy are the incorporated institutions like msme which give employment to 50 people 100 people like that there are thousands and lakhs of msmes giving employment like that so larger than, larger than larger corporations like infosys wipro yes they are a different league altogether india unincorporated is a different league where no money comes into the system at all they are just basically nothing comes to the government there cannot be any development whatever government is getting is major chunk without a doubt is from this msme so the government wanted to help them revive rather than kill the company because killing a company would be like killing of a dream and once a dream is killed then that's it so the government is trying to do something one one such thing was as the startup pani puri ha startup not that startup yes startup which has the ability for innovation and expansion beyond compare comparison but here this is to ensure that you know things start going ahead moving ahead need for advertisement and all is not there guys so it incentivizes the party to propose better terms and also protect the integrity and goodwill of the business only after a final agreement is reached then i will go to the court basically compromise and arrangement in a restructured format is prepackaged and it adopts a flexible approach the prepack follows a debtor in possession model it's a totally against ibc it's a debtor in possession model management is not transferred to rp so these fellows unfortunately see the haircut that other companies have taken you will be shocked sr steel they took a 23% haircut bushan steel 38% haircut see video con video con con only it is con job 94% haircut 46000 crore they settled at 2900 crore This is the state of big companies. What who will come to MSME? What is the value of MSME? Hundred crore. Okay, uh, how much will you? Ten lakhs? Fifteen lakhs? So when these big big companies only are dying with this haircut, this is shave only. Where haircut? Correct. When you go, sir, full shave. Little bit you leave here, sir, for style. That's it. At ninety-four percent. full shave this is no air cut there so that's the problem guys and delay also due to covid more than 270 days 738 cases 738 cases till now i mean this january march of 2020 some total admitted cases 3774 cases so many cases guys loads of cases so if you see they took the model of uh, us and sika sik industry companies act which spoke about debtors in possession us also debtors in possession so the time frame took a longer time so that model only they took debtor in possession model and they have framed this prepack the control and management being vested with the corporate debtor it is necessary to pivot a set of responsibilities and duties towards the creditors in addition to the fiduciary duties checks and balances to ensure the interests of the creditors are protected they are always protected conduct of the corporate debtor is such or where there is no viable business so process of prepack is very simple coc can by 66% of the voting present close the process of prepack where the 
conduct of the corporate debtor is such that there is no viable business model then the coc by 75% voting decide in favor of liquidation role of the rp there is no shift in management mind you but he has to ensure that all the dealings are fair and transparent and the entire pre packaged insolvency he should take care but he doesn't take control of the business that's the best part he is more of a advisory role supervisory role than a managerial role costs are also involved access to interim finance i need to get so guys 240 capital a of the code provides that the code is applicable to micro small medium enterprises this came from 4th april 2021 for the first time ever this will come in december 2021 but as i told you institute when all eyes are on pre pack they will also give pass two three amendments also two three attempts amendments which you have done so don't only concentrate on this also concentrate on that for all you know one question also may not come i'm just saying then it will come in may 22 and all those things so but you never know institute may think that we will think like this then they'll give correct so do not play with the institute you cannot so they have been playing us since a long time let them play let's be prepared for this also and the previous one also previous one anyway we have done so much in depth eight and half nine hours yesterday we have discussed so today we'll be checking this quickly so as however considering that msm is limited capital easy corporate structure etc CIRP may not be feasible for them, right? Apart from considering that the increased default of one one lakh to one crore, obviously the, the MSME concept only will be eliminated with one crore and all those things. That is why, by virtue of notification on 9th April, minimum threshold is how much, guys? Default of 10 lakh or more. Important for MSME. What is the minimum default? 10 lakh or more. Before twenty fourth March twenty twenty, normal companies one lakh, right? So twenty fourth March onwards one crore. But for MSME, whatever it is, from ninth April twenty twenty one, ten lakh or more. It's a very recent change. Important. What do you mean by MSME? this is applicable from 1st july 2020 as per the msme regulations the composite criteria is what guys investment in plant and machinery or equipment and annual turnover sir msme is only selling pani puri or everything is it a good or service both manufacturing enterprises and enterprises rendering services both micro means what investment in plant and machinery or equipment not more than 1 cr less than or equal to 1 cr and 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 annual turnover not more than 5 cr micro into 10 is small How much? Less than or equal to 10 CR. What investment in plant and machinery? Then turnover. Fifty crore. Small into five is medium. Investment in plant and machinery, how much? Fifty crore, and turnover, okay, not more than two fifty crore. Turnover, not more than two fifty crore. So investment one crore, turnover five crore into ten, ten crore fifty crore into five fifty crore two fifty crore.
here. So, first of all, guys, it should be 9th April 2021 onwards. What is the default? 10 lakhs or more. Then, which companies, micro, small, medium enterprises, are registered as an MSME? And what is micro, small, medium enterprises? This one. Less than or equal to 1 crore and 5 crore, 10 crore, 3 crore. So, if you just see the MSME, uh, you know, website, there is this uh, registration you have to get done called Udyam. Udyam registration. So, you can just go to this msme.gov.in. Picture has to come, huh? Yes, we will close the picture. Yes, our Olympic medalist, gold medalist, yeah. So, that is the thing, yeah. Then, uh, of course, so all these things you can check Udyam registration. Then here only if you see, no, what is MSME, from there only I copied, what is MSME on dialogue, here you learn, what is MSME, it will open. Yes, thank you sir, thank you so much, yes. So if you see, I'll, this is the scene, you have to register new entrepreneurs, all these things, Udyam registration portal, they have given here. You should organize a full thing, entire procedure, it will take you there, this is the registration booklet I have given. So basically you should have done all these things guys. Enterprise will get a Udyam registration, self declaration, no requirement to upload any documents, paper, certificate, it's a self declaration. Again, it's all you know ease of business. Then composite criteria, both criteria should be specified. All units with GST, GST IN that is listed against the same PAN shall be collectively treated as one enterprise. And turnover and investment figures for all shall be seen together. If you just have one GST number, many branches you have, many divisions you have, then it under one GST number, that's it. Deciding the category of micro, small, medium enterprise. Investment, calculation of investment in plant and machinery will be linked to income tax return. Where no prior ITR is available, investment will be based on self-declaration, all these things. Again, everything, even the plant and machinery will be as per income tax rules. You have to have an invoice, obviously. Turnover, export of goods, services, both shall be excluded because here I am not talking about exports, I am talking about in India. Then everything turnover exp ex exports will be seen as per the Income Tax Act and GST Act. Export turnover and normal turnover. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yes. We will end today, do not worry. Yeah. So, that is the thing. So, 250 CR. Same thing come back. So, with that, this ordinance, first of all, amendment of section 4. I have given all the amendments here in this um, sequence. So, one is amendment number 4, which obviously sp speaks about 1 crore and also from 9th April onwards 10 lakhs. We have already seen this. Now, they speak something about the base resolution plan, then corporate applicant. Everywhere they have changed guys. First is base resolution plan they have added, 5 clause 2A. Base resolution plan means a resolution plan provided by the corporate debtor under 54 4A. So, basically corporate debtor, they themselves will give a base resolution plan. So the resolution plan given by resolution applicant is called resolution plan. Resolution plan given by corporate debtor itself, MSME, saying that boss, we will change now, please follow, let us follow this. It is like this compromise and arrangement plan, it is called base resolution plan. Corporate applicant, you know, who is a corporate applicant? In section number 10 of IBC, we have seen corporate uh, applicant will be a person from the corporate, you know, person who either, either the CEO, CFO, manager, was authorized, but here in this uh, definition, they have also added 
member or partner of the corporate debtor who is authorized to make an application for corporate insolvency resolution process or this is the addition prepackaged insolvency resolution process means what even if you are a member or partner of the msme you will be coming up by the way guys msme should be sole proprietorship or partnership form or company msme honestly speaking msme can be anything general msme i am talking about msme under udyam registration it can be anything it can be any entity partnership form it can be sole proprietorship it can be company no problem but here what will it come what individual will not be coming here so here it is what partnership form also is not there here it can be llp and company llp and company but technically msme can be anything so we have to wait and see that in the future they may also allow individuals forms everybody because it's a separate category of sections only no so 54 years msme so please come everything can be allowed it just came now so we need to wait and watch still cases are slowly building up in those cases that are now pending are only with respect to companies and all that tomorrow anybody registered as an msme can go through this actually so in that sense of the term it is an entire addition to the concept of ibc so ibc has cirp different bankruptcy different then msme different got it so and the best part is concept only is reverse but keeping the preamble in mind maximization of value and also maximization of assets and promoting entrepreneurship if you see in the preamble but rather than a creditors possession we still have the debtors possession so that concept is different here that we need to understand so that's why if you see here individual but here only they give see a member or partner of the corporate debtor who is authorized so corporate debtor will be what company and llp that's why i am saying initiation date is when i make an application who will make an application financial creditor operational creditor or here in this case corporate applicant will make a application under prepackaged insolvency resolution process interim finance yes even in prepackaged insolvency process you can take interim finance these are only the amendments they have added everywhere lines who is an officer officer will be as per 2 clause 60 of companies act designated partner and officer will also apply to chapter number 6 and 7 so this entire msme starts from 54a is you know your chapter 3a So the chapter 3a also gets covered as part of this chapter 6 and 7 is linked to 3a anyway 2 clause 60 is again defined this is 2 clause 60 of companies act officer will come here so you need to submit something called as a preliminary information memorandum all that we'll see then prepackaged insolvency resolution process cost prepackaged insolvency resolution process period all these definitions we'll see as and when we see the things amendment to section 11 persons who are not entitled to make application remember who all corporate debtor undergoing a cirp cannot make or now also they have added what prepackaged insolvency resolution process a corporate debtor under remember section 11 who cannot make application under cirp first corporate debtor was undergoing cirp but he can put under put against another company that we have seen but he himself cannot put 
now even if you are going through prepackaged let it let, let it finish no why hurry let it finish is what they are saying then double a has been added a financial creditor or operational credit very very important how oh. financial creditor or operational creditor cannot make an application to an msme who is undergoing prepackaged insolvency process when i am going through prepackaged insolvency process the financial creditor cannot go to nclt and say put CIRP there. NCLT will say, "Wait, bro. Let it go. Let them do. They are finishing it. No, let them finish. First of all, corporate debtor itself cannot go and uh, go to NCLT when prepackage is going on. Second, when the prepackage is going on, I am trying to revive. I am trying to really, genuinely trying to help. And you are going there and sabotaging my entire operation by, uh, you know, applying to NCLT under CIRP." right that's why that time i didn't do all this when doing normal ibc because you would not have understood now you are understanding this is a separate process guys please understand separate process corporate debt are having this is fine b is in ba corporate debt are in respect of whom a resolution plan has been approved under chapter 3a 12 months so basically if of your base resolution plan or any resolution plan under chapter number 3a that is pre package insolvency resolution plan has already approved wait for 12 months no same like before cirp also if you undergone wait for 12 months here also if you have undergone this wait for 12 months before you apply for cirp ppirp plus 12 months at least wait after that you can go for cirp these yellow things are the changes in double a becomes very important because when ppirp is going on financial creditor operational creditor cannot come into the picture who puts the entire thing gives the plan etc corporate debtor puts the entire thing applicant is the corporate debtor same i have given your 54 capital a 54 capital a corporate debtor will be the msme that is company or llp as of now as i told you it is only company and llp as i told you tomorrow going forward they can say all msme please come because as of now they have only told in that definition they have changed what corporate debtor who is an msme You see, two forty capital A. See, I told you, you know, in twenty nine capital A, there was all these provisions there that given a guideline saying that it's okay, no problem. Then you see, two forty capital A, notwithstanding anything to the contrary contained in this code. provisions of 29 capital a that to c and h those two deadly sections are there shall not apply to resolution applicant in case of cirp or prepackaged of any micro small medium enterprise means if you are a promoter you can still take over the msme provided you are not a willful defaulter subject to subsection 1 the central government may in public interest by notification that happened on 9th april only direct any of the provisions shall not apply to msme or shall apply to msme so given it applies to msme this will be laid before the parliament same thing happened all this is fine for the purpose of this section expression msme means any classes of enterprises classified as msme that we have seen so 54 capital a 
कॉर्पोरेट डेटर हुज एन एम एस एम ई मीन कंपनी और एल एल पी यू नो मैक्रो स्म मीडियम वन टू फाइव इंटू टेन इंटू फाइव डीफाट हाउ मच से नंबर फोर ग्रेटर दैन और इक्वल टू टेन लैक्स डीफाट ग्रेटर दैन और इक्वल टू टेन लैक्स Online people just quickly picture 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 first picture these three right because you will take time for you to sit and copy everything so just take a picture first is these three second here conditions what are the cumulative conditions within 3 it's all there in 54 capital a this is just revision i am doing within 3 years before the application which application ppirp application should not have completed cirp or should not have completed ppirp this is before which application application of ppirp if you are making an application of ppirp you should not have completed ppirp or cirp within how much 3 years 3 years minimum 3 years you should not have give breathing space mind you section 11 don't get confused section 11 is for cirp 12 months that is for cirp don't get confused This is PPIRP application. Second, you should not be undergoing CIRP. If you are already undergoing CIRP, you cannot come back to PPIRP. If the NCLT has already told, "Hey, you die," I am pulling the plug. After pulling the plug, cannot come to PPIRP. and you must be eligible to sub be submit a what resolution plan under 29 capital a corporate debtor itself is eligible to submit a resolution plan under 29 capital a but we just saw now 240 capital a says if you are a msme that is a promoter maybe you are eligible no problem provided you are not a willful defaulter ha uh, insolvency professional to be appointed as resolution professional insolvency professional to be appointed as resolution professional so guys here there are two concepts the insolvency professional so first of all who will uh, apply msme only will tell i want to do this ppirp okay but resolution professional who will appoint company or financial creditor see the difference in ibc who will appoint rp financial creditor who will apply also under to nclt financial creditor here who will apply msme or who will appoint rp financial creditor proposal there are two things first proposal will come then approval will come that is why it is different proposal will be given by financial creditor who are not what related party a financial creditor non related party who has minimum 10% value of the total financial debt and what is this total financial debt debt due to non related party financial creditors if the entire financial debt of the company was let us say 1 cr in that related party only had given 40 lakhs and uh, non related party had given 60 lakhs msme guys lot of related party transactions will be there family i'll take from family only so 60 lakhs is the non related party financial creditor so in that proposal should move from anybody who has given minimum 6 lakh loan did you understand yes anybody online people are you understanding i told you this is not no way related to ibc in any way it is a completely different process online 
they are like you do whatever you want today is the last day right yes so 10 lakhs sorry 6 lakhs in this example they will make a proposal they will give a proposal and approval finally that proposal ka approval should happen what how many people under 54 a to e i am happy that that 6d classes got over that ibc classes got over before this because in that we analyzed full in depth and made these charts so for fast track it becomes very easy otherwise i have to sit and do everything now anyway so 54 a to e the financial creditor non related party this is approval how many percentage 66% of the total financial debt again debt due to non related party means what guys in that 60 lakh proposal will come from 60 lakhs 6 lakh sorry but approval will be 6 into 66% percent. 60 lakh sorry 60 lakh into 66% percent. approval will be 60 lakh into 66% percent. got it so these are all only this you study and go more than enough i have taken honestly in the regulation is not part of the syllabus by the way but institute always expect the unexpected institute tag line only should be like that icai always expect the unexpected regulations are not there still i have given the regulations it's given in the addendum also and fast track students no need to touch the addendum also leave it study these charts enough then declaration or declaration if from fourth point ah okay quickly fourth point is eligible to submit resolution plan and fifth point is insolvency professional to be appointed as a resolution so as for you if you are an insolvency professional see the opportunities you can be interim resolution professional resolution professional liquidator then now under this also ppirp you can be you can be authorized representative home buyers correct superb opportunities and to pass the exam yeah that is there but uh, you need to pass that but you pass apart from ca you will have that also right declaration majority what declaration you should give we'll see how many should give guys majority of the directors if corporate debtor is a company and majority of the partners if corporate debtor is a llp so these provisions of msme as of now are only applicable as i told you to company and llp tomorrow they can add anything also as of now this this many things and regulation 16 you should do it in form number p6 regulation number and all not needed but form number p6 is the regulation so application of ppirp should happen within you know 90 days of what we'll see and of this declaration so we'll make a declaration saying that everything is okay absolutely no problem we are not doing to cheat anybody we are genuinely trying to revive and within that 90 days of declaration what will you do that's what i am not doing it to not to defraud anybody and i swear that i'll make an application within 90 days in the declaration you should tell and i am making a declaration now declaring that within 90 days i will definitely apply under ppirp and then also name of the ip decided before that i will go to the financial crisis that's what pre packaged first step go and put one dive to financial crisis sir no money please help so we can either do compromise and arrangement in company or sir we can do this new thing called ppirp so first what we'll do sir first you propose one ip 
So that non-related party, sir, in this one crore loan that I have taken, 40 lakhs, my family members only I have given. So that you leave, I will handle them. They are my family members, no tension. They know that I am on waste body, they have, they have already invested that money, gone now. So you leave. You 60 lakhs you have paid. In that you propose, sir. Propose. Majority is always simple majority. There is no percentage, more than half. When I say majority, it is always more than half, unless otherwise specified. So then approval. So among 60 lakhs, sir, you only make one meeting. This is not called COC and all that. Don't use those words. It is not COC. It is just one meeting of all the creators and you approve this 66%. After that, sir, I will give a declaration. Majority of the directors will sign saying that I will make an application within 90 days. I will not defraud anyone. And also, you have suggested at IP, that fellow's name, I am writing, writing in the declaration. Not just that, guys. Apart from that, if corporate data is a company, I also need to attach a special resolution. And if a corporate data is a LLP, three-fourth of the partner should agree. Doing what? Approving the application for PPIRP. If they ask you what are the conditions under which PPIRP can be granted, six marks, copy paste these points, full six marks you will get. First of all condition within three years before application should not have completed PPIRP or CIRP. This is a combined reading of the act and the regulation. Nothing is missed out. Second, you are not undergoing any CIRP. Third one, no liquidation order. Fourth, you are, should be eligible to submit resolution plan under 29 capital A. Fifth one, insolvency professional to be appointed as per a proposal by financial creditors for non-related party minimum 10% value and then approval as per 54A 2E, 66% value of the total financial debt, non-related party financial debt. Then declaration should be taken by the majority saying that I will apply within 90 days not to defraud anybody, name of the IP as dip above and along with that I need to attach what? Special resolution. And the financial creditor who is a non-related party with a 66% will approve the filing. Guys, two approvals are needed, mind you, important two approvals are needed by this fellow, FC. First approval is this, sir. approval of IP. So first only I will go and beg him, no? First I will put one dive. In that dive I will tell, sir, please propose somebody and approve. Then after that dive, I will go and finish all this process. Then one more dive. Sir, all the documents are in, in your near your legs. Please bless me. One more approval, 66%. Where is court here? Where is NCLT? Nothing. Pre-packaged insolvency resolution process. In form number F4. P4, sorry, form number P4. This is approve filing of the application. First I have to approve the IP, then approve filing of the application. Then in 5 and 8, where there is no FC or all FC related parties, then what to do? For all the relatives are asking me, when are you doing CA? What are you doing CA every year? For all that revenge, I took money from them only. And MSME went down. All financial creditors are my related parties. What to do then? Then decision to be taken by OC. Operational creditor who are non-related party. So before this approval, that's what? Corporate data to give declaration under point number six, special resolution on point number seven, and this is the thing base resolution plan. Telling that, sir, this is my plan, sir. You see, legal begging instead of comp compromise arrangement, sir. As I told you, business always operates in a very dynamic environment, things keep changing during COVID times. 
people who are supplying sanitizers then gloves tubes then injections all these people minted money still minting money but others like food industry etc wiped out many such good restaurants many such good ice cream places to my sadness closed down right so the thing is you need to give this particular again approval declaration everything this 66% majority you give a base resolution plan telling how you are going to change things that is this part how am i going to change things this is the full chart with respect to 54a now tell me guys one interesting point CIRP application also is pending by financial creditor at the same time i have gone and begged and i have put a PPIRP application what will i follow no the application once admitted what what was the scene there if the CIRP is already undergoing CIRP undergoing CIRP means what that fellow should have accepted no i am saying it's pending I have still applied that 14 days time. They have not yet admitted. So can I put CIRP? Can I put PPIRP? That's why it's not given. Now, what does it say? You should not be undergoing CIRP. Okay, I have just applied. So guys, that also can be a potential question. That's why 11 capital A is there. the application under cirp sorry under ppirp is to be given under 54c three conditions first application is this it's already there what ppirp application is already put put in second application immediately one financial creditor who did not agree to this base resolution plan has directly gone to cirp correct so the application should be taken approval and then you should go to nclt you know obviously they should see the plan and all those things and then you know finally decide so first application 54c has already been applied in next one day only one financial creditor who did not like the deal directly goes to 7 9 10 corporate debtor sorry the operational creditor 10 majority should agree no in uh, this thing application other directors go and apply under 10 what to do so the solution given under 11 capital a is double a nclt should admit or reject 54c first then consider second application 54c means ppirp next first application is under 7 9 10 i come to know application done so immediately i will create a base resolution plan within 14 days i'll put 54c why remember 7 9 10 within 14 days within 14 days it has to be applied uh, approved by approved or rejected by nclt in that gap 14 days to ensure that it doesn't go through cirp i will put 54c within 14 days what to do beautiful law says please consider 54c first only then 7 9 10 because ppirp should be the first preference only then other things one more thing 7910 already applied 14 days over guys i have told you that 14 days is mandatory or discretionary discretionary but law is the law within 14 days if you had applied 54c no problem but 14 days already over that fellow still hasn't admitted the application because if you remember surendra trading company jugilal kamlapet 
we had clearly seen 14 days is not mandatory 14 days accepting or rejecting is discretionary so that case is still taken up by nclt they are still seeing whether to admit or reject but you have delayed you have filed beyond 14 days then what to do you have not followed the timeline 7 9 10 to be disposed of means first here 7 9 10 whether you accept or reject if you happen to reject it only then 54 c did you get this guys yes or no so this is the other thing Fifty four C first seven nine ten later admit or reject fifty four C then consider second application seven nine ten fifty four C within fourteen days fifty four C to be considered first only then seven nine ten seven nine ten first fifty four C is there but beyond fourteen days seven nine ten to be disposed of then fifty four C disposed of means you can either accept it or reject it when i said dispose of i will come to a decision and then i will do the next thing dispose is not to reject dispose of means you make a decision and then end it dispose is to end it So guys, if you remember, 54A, you have to appoint this fellow. Which fellow? Insolvency professional. What is his duty? What will he do? Immediately after approval by FC under 54A. What is approval? Approval to appoint. Ah, approval to appoint. How many percentage? 66 percent of. not voting share non related party fc see it's a very very different here 66% of non related party fc if everybody is a related party then non related party oc sir if everybody is related party act is silent we'll see later they'll come out with some guideline ip insolvency professional will give a report under form number in form number p8 and he should check the base resolution plan the base resolution plan should actually confirm confirm means form not firm confirm means it should follow all the provisions of 54k we still haven't done 54k we'll see and his fee superb his fee will be part of the ppirp cost if the application is admitted you see your ppirp cost first only fee is payable to any person acting as resolution professional that fee payable if the application is admitted directly it will part of p part of the ppirp cost what if nclt rejects the application first i'll put dive then give all the declaration one more dive then i'll go to nclt big dive right this small dive is all the your gods in your house then go to temple nclt big dive there they say get out gone rejected then what to do if not admitted or 
corporate data are only best part he fails to go to temple it will be borne by the corporate data from a separate bank account so guys the moment this ppirp happens you should open a separate bank account for all the expenses income whatever that goes into it goes into ppirp from that account you should give anyway plus you should take a consent from him in form number p1 regulation 7 eligibility norms remember he should be independent director all the provisions of 149 should come same provisions no change eligibility norms are similar to irp slash rp under cir should not be working in a legal firm or a auditor firm legal firm if the amount transaction is 55% the turnover remember sir yesterdays you don't out of syllabus things don't discuss yesterdays is yesterdays today is today ha huh. the duties of this fellow will cease duties of irp will cease or this ip when cd fails to file the application within 90 days i told you within 90 days you have to make an application 90 days from which day declaration or nclt accepts the application nclt rejects the application. you do whatever you want i don't care because if the nclt accepts the application who will be appointed rp remember in ibc you have a irp irp will go till the coc and then the coc will appoint an rp in the ppirp coc only is not there first only i have put a dive to possible potential coc who are non related party they have already approved the insolvency professional so the insolvency professional will end which day the day nclt accepts nclt rejects or if you fail to make an application basically he will definitely the duty will end when anything next happens next what happens nclt accepts nclt rejects or in or cd doesn't even go reach the temple this is with respect to the insolvency professional 54b 54a all that dive 54b what is the duty of the ip now 54c is the continuation of 54a this is the ip part now the other part 54 c what happens to that application what will i do 54 c is the application of pp irp 541 and 542 form number 1 this is where i have to apply guys form number 1 nclt this is rule number 4 of insolvency and bankruptcy pp irp rules given by mca not given by ibbi ibbi gives regulation previously when i told regulation 16 regulation 18 that is given by ibbi these rules are given by mca government gives the rules regulator gives regulation right form number 1 done next filing what filing guys first what all will i file first one approval of creditors first dive second dive first dive appointment of ip second dive initiation of ppirp both require what approval 66% of non related party fc correct remember in 
then next i already showed you consent of insolvency professional and the report of insolvency professional in the previous section 54b yes or no third special resolution we saw fourth i will give a declaration that i have not done any fraudulent preference yesterday we discussed no undervalued transaction giving somebody preference one year before cr that all that i have not done avoidance of transactions online peeps are you understanding it's all procedure chiller but you need to remember all this if you read the bear act you will die i have made this easier for you yes or no are you able to understand yeah so declaration with respect to avoidance of transactions then books of accounts when last two financial years last two financial years audited then provisional financial statements in the current financial year this is updated up to 14 days before the application the application is made 20th august 14 days before at least till 6th august it should be updated bear act if you read nothing will be there it is all in the regulations it's a mix and match completely structured last two financial years audited provisional current financial up to 14 days before application you have to do then if there are any what do you say 216a a consortium sorry 216 consortium or syndicate that will not be there for msme but your other fellows will be there no 6aa 6ab 6ac 6ab also won't be there home owners but there may be debentures there may be deposits there may be other small loans there may be executors administrators guardians and there will be other people under 24 subsection 5 that we discussed other financial creditors if i want i can appoint an authorized representative and also i will file a declaration that the corporate debtor is eligible under 29 capital a even if you are a related party if you are not a willful defaulter you can definitely come under this section 240 capital a done these are all the filing things you need to file all these things next date of application when will you apply within 90 days of declaration whenever you apply within 14 days they will either admit or they will reject same dialogue if they admit what happens commencement of ppirp if they reject before rejecting they will give a notice to corporate debtor who gets to rectify the defect rectified application can be admitted or it can be rejected same dialogue then i linked it with one more section 77 capital a what if you give some false information here false declaration so that is one more link that i have done in this chart 77 capital a if the corporate debtor or person authorized by corporate debtor gives false information omits a material fact knowingly or willfully is false information or omits a material fact knowingly or willfully ah see here deadly 3 years to 5 years imprisonment or fine 1 lakh to 1 crore or both yes it is a compoundable offense but still deadly 3 years imprisonment minimum 3 years minimum 3 up to 5 fine minimum 1 lakh up to 1 crore 
or both so this is the important section of Fifty four C, fifty four C. So generally. when they admit the application when you commence the ppirp then what happens guys then you need to see whether the entire plan is okay whether the base resolution plan can be worked or do i need to call other resolution applicants who are ready to take over the what do you say uh, msme under ppirp so the data still remains in possession that's the best part sir why if other resolution applicants can come i can go to cirp also no yeah you can but there what is the problem creditor will take possession here yeah, data only will be in remaining possession he will coordinate with the new people that's the wonderful part this entire process should get over not in 180 days 120 days and whether it's the base resolution plan or if it is some other resolution plan everything should be submitted within 90 days from the commencement of pp irp submission of the plan 90 days completion of the entire thing 120 days after 120 days if things don't work out liquidation or you can ask one more question if it doesn't work out can i go to cirp one more one more you know this doctor has told you will never live can i take one more opinion can i go to cirp we'll see that so before that what will i give the base resolution plan and after that information memorandum will be given and within 2 days all that claims etc will be computed within 7 days from the information memorandum form the coc coc will come here also but after the commencement of ppirp same provision within 7 days from the first coc form the first coc meeting from the first coc meeting so commencement of ppirp 90 days submit the resolution plan 120 days complete the entire thing once you commence ppirp within 2 days all those things should happen information memorandum so collation of claims and within 7 days of information memorandum coc 7 days from coc first coc meeting mind you while you commence the ppirp you should always give a base resolution plan later the coc will see okay this is okay not okay let's see then it i am not liking it maybe i'll call somebody else but the beauty is the data will remain in possession he knows his stuff he'll be running the show no need to call rp rp will only be in a supervisory role So it's a combination of that data uh, who's in possession and who's controlling the business. RP will oversee everything. Supervisory role, that's it. And then I can call other resolution applicants also. Then we'll discuss. I will be present very much there because it's my baby. And then I will give it off to somebody, right? With my consent, of course. With Krayta should agree. different concept guys next same thing is given here only nclt when they admit the application commencement of ppirp should happen within 120 days the entire thing and 90 days 
the resolution professional shall submit the resolution approved resolution plan resolution professional shall submit the approved resolution plan approved resolution plan coc has to approve under 54k so the coc has to approve under 54k again what approval guys same 66% of value what they can approve they can either approve the base resolution plan by the corporate debtor under 54k4 or they can approve any other resolution plan given by other resolution applicants under 54k12 if they don't like the resolution plan submitted by corporate data this is the simple gist of 54d approved resolution plan coc 54k and then other plans if coc does not approve the resolution plan at all and the resolution professional will go to nclt and request for termination of ppirp no problem alisha hope you could copy down termination of ppirp So D fifty four A B C D done. E fifty four E moratorium and public announcement. N C L T from the P P I R P commencement date will declare moratorium. Best part section fourteen. Sunday breakfast mutatis mutandis. No change. NCLT correct disciplinary proceedings are pending against insolvency professional in the application same guys if it is a no the insolvency professional to be appointed as the IRP same fellow insolvency professional will be appointed as the IRP if it is a yes then same IBBI will go to IBBI and IBBI will appoint IRP they will send send their recommendation to the nclt and as per ibbs recommendation nclt will appoint same you remember that same procedure so this is very simple moratorium first is moratorium second one is disciplinary proceeding third one public announcement by resolution professional regulation 19 two days from the ppirp commencement date i will announce in form number p9 every creditor listed in form number p2 
So in their application form, I have to give all these creditors list and all that, that, and to the information utility, and it will be published in the website of IBBI also and corporate data. The beauty is before in other laws, first I will admit, and then the other process starts. Here I have already spoken to all those people. Then I'll announce. Correct? Then I'll announce. That's the thing. Fifty four E moratorium and public announcement. It's all procedure only, guys. So people only will concentrate on this and go. Don't ignore other things. Other things are also very important, which we have already done. Duties and powers of RP. Duties and powers of RP. Fifty four F combined with fifty four F and fifty four G. It's a combined reading. If you start start reading the bearer again, you will get confused. Just stick to this. Corporate debtor within two days of commencement of PPIRP has to give the resolution professional what a list of claims, securities, guarantees, everything in form number P10, and also give what. Preliminary information memorandum. I showed you information memorandum. All the stuff of the company, what, why it's going down, how can it be revived, everything should be given in form number P10. RP again to confirm this list. In remember in IBC, when I come in, then I ask for the claims. Here claims already list given. Best part. Inform. Credit. This is the duties of the RP. Again, separate four mark, five mark. What are the duties of the RP? First is corporate debtor will give him the list. What he has to do? Confirm the list. Second, inform the creditors about the claim, saying that sir, I have already given this. These are the claims. I am not asking you. These are the claims. Tell me whether it's yes or no. Creditors to send objections within seven days. And then I need to see how to do it. Within objections, then I have to figure out and again re-admit them or reject them, whatever. Same. If there is a debt in foreign currency by by chance, the exchange rate as on the PPIRP commencement date will apply. This can all be MCQ questions. Exchange rate on which date will apply? PPIRP commencement date. The claims, even though two days, three days later, if there is a lot of variation in the market, I don't care. Date of PPIRP commencement date is as per the law. That will be taken as the exchange date. If you win, win. If you lose, you lose. I can't help it. After checking all this, adding, subtracting, updated list of claims I will give in form number P10. And mind you, guys, no taking over management. Only monitoring the management of the company. Monitoring ma management of the company. Then he will constitute the COC, convene the meeting of COC, attend the meeting of COC. He may convene on its own, but if thirty-three percent voting share demand the meeting, he shall convene it. This is in Regulation Twenty-Seven. If 33% voting share demand that yes, boss, I need a meeting today, then you shall convene the COC meeting. Inform the COC if the board of directors or partners contravene the chapter. So this is like a monitoring. Your class monitor was there, no, an irritating fellow in school. If you opened your mouth, he used to write your name. That fellow, his RP is that fellow only. Correct. So he is the class monitor, teacher's pet, class monitor, bucket in Canada they call. Yes, right. So that is monitoring the management. So he is like that. Anything that you don't do, he will go and complain to COC. Then also file application for avoidance of transactions. That undervalued transactions, preferential transactions. These are all the duties. Then the powers. See, they can ask you duties. If they ask you duties, it is fifty for these. 
see guys section numbers and all you leave just remember these points in this regulation number also you leave amendments they will not expect you to remember all this in depth you just need to write the points regulation number leave it section number leave it you can simply say as per the provisions of IBC enough what are the powers of, the, of this fellow access the books of accounts access the financial information of the information utility the books of accounts and documents whether it is with any statutory authority even with statutory auditors or with any accountants in the MSME I can access full access mind you you cannot access the documentation of the auditor I am not talking about working papers I am talking about books of accounts and all documents which are actually lying with the statutory auditors accountants and all those things attend the meeting also of all the meetings what meetings you can attend guys if you are a corporate editor is a LLP you can attend the partners meeting is the uninvited guest post guest no choice or if it's a company meeting he can attend a GM -E -GM, he can attend board meetings he can attend audit committee risk management committee all committee meetings he can attend no problem next he can himself appoint accountants legal professionals and other professionals similar power was there in IBC also he can collect information from everybody as regards avoidance of transactions remember avoidance of transaction the relevant period was what one year before for non-related party two years before for related party like that you can collect all the document uh, transactions yesterday I told you new value no new value all that we discussed then he can collect the business operations financial payments operational payments made two years two previous financial years from the PPIRP commencement date show me all the transactions that you have done everything business transactions financial transaction operational payments and list of all assets and liabilities as on PPIRP date then he will talk to all the financial institutions and get all the details all the records it will be given to him personnel will give all assistance mutatis mutandis section 19 all assistance will be given to him he is like the boss this is 54f duties and powers of the resolution professional it's very easy if you have written it down in pointers like this just stick to these charts guys nothing else is needed do not waste time some four or five marks it may come don't waste time reading the bare act and all I've already done that for you this much is enough if they ask you duties 54 F they ask you powers 54 F3 F2 is duties powers is F3 this is as per the Bayer Act and the regulations here and there consolidated claims part already discussed before what claims that same thing you will ask for the claims then submit the revised claims and all that G2 if a person has suffered a loss a person who has suffered the loss because of this uh, you know company's you know bad operational problems he can move the court and if there is any breach of contract he can move the court to seek compensation for loss or damages why because of omission of material information or inclusion of misleading information in any of the documentation then who is liable 54 g2 talks about liability so if you see 54 g2 it squarely talks about the liability who is liable if there is any misleading information in the documentation arising out of the breach of contract where the person has sustained any loss as a consequence of omission of material inclusion 
in the list of claims or in the preliminary information memorandum. In the memorandum only you have not given details of many contracts, details of breaches not given. In the list of claims you have omitted my, my uh, name, you have omitted certain material information that was needed for the benefit of everybody. I come to know, I can sue you. Who is liable guys? Promoter slash director slash partner and person authorized. Willful default. Directly, willfully and knowingly if you do under 77A already discussed 3 years to 5 years, 1 lakh to 1 crore, both. and 54 G2 damages. Damages. So this is regarding the other part. Claims part. Fifty four F, fifty four G two. H. Very simple. Management of the affairs will continue to vest in the board of directors or partners. Definitely different from IBC. Continue to vest with whom? Board of directors or partners. You should protect and preserve the value of property always. He shall exercise all the contractual or statutory rights and obligations. MSME will run as per MSME. His fellow will not put his hand everywhere. Who? RP. This is definitely different from what we have read. That's all three points. Very simple. Management affairs will continue to vest in the board of partners. The MSME should work towards protecting and preserving the value of property and so will the RP. And RP shall exercise all the contractual and statutory rights and obligation and ensure that MSME also follows the same. I. Guys, section 21, full COC, mutatis mutandis is 54I. But certain changes, certain changes, first change, when you do PPIRP, when it is commencing, within 7 days of PPIRP, you should constitute a COC. And interesting to know, in 7 days, claims etc. will keep on changing, right? So, the COC also will change based on the updates. Today new fellow will add, tomorrow new fellow will come and say I also have a claim. The company has some, uh, you know, 142 creditors. I have only details of 70 people now. Others are still filing the claims. But I cannot wait, only 120 days. So, I can start off the COC. Will the COC keep on changing every meeting as new additions come? Yes. What happens to the past decisions taken? New fellow comes and says, past decisions are invalid. No, where were you? When we had already announced here, you should have come. So, past decisions will not be affected. In uh, IBC, generally the COC is formed after almost 30 days of commencement. Here it is 7 days. That's why they are saying it will change based on the updates. And within here also 7, here also 7. There it is within 30 days roughly and then 7 days. First COC meeting. Here it is 7 and 7. First meeting of COC, this we have already seen if the corporate debtor has no FC who is a non-related party or financial debt only is not there, then operational creditor, non-related party will form COC. Tell me in um, IBC if there is no FC, 
who will be the coc operational craters but who 18 operational craters by value highest then one represented by workmen one represented by employees here you see instead of 18 we have 10 Ten largest operational craters by value, one representative of the workman and one representative of the employees. If the corporate debtor has only one creditor in a class and no financial creditors, other financial creditors are not there. Means only one class is there, guys. That is only deposit holders or only other financial creditors. Then the COC will be formed by the authorized representative of that class. Means it has only twenty one six A A, twenty one six A B, twenty one six A C. Those creditors. Or 24 subsection 5 creditors, then COC will be formed by authorized representative of that class. Authorized representative will be chosen just like IBC, one out of three. Home buyers, remember, three RPs will be given. They'll choose one out of three. How? By the highest number of creditors in that class, as per the regulation. Highest number of creditors in that class. This is with respect to fifty-four I. These are all the changes. J is a small section. General rule. Management of affairs is vested with the corporate debtor. General rule, fifty-four H. But specific rule is given in fifty-four J. If the affairs of the corporate debtor are handled in a fraudulent manner, that main MSME owner only is one fraud, and has resulted in gross mismanagement of affairs. During the course, I come to know that there is some gold mal going on. This fellow is not what he seems like. He is telling that I'll do everything for MSME, but seeing him, it feels like he just wants to make a quick buck and run away. COC will know that this is happening. What will they do? COC, with a 66% of voting share, will vest the management to the RP. IBC provisions will come here. They will make an application to NCLT in form number P14. And the NCLT will either accept it or reject it. Reject what? Accept or reject what? Vesting. Whether the vesting is correct or not. But the grounds of vesting should be these two: affairs of corporate debtor are handled in a fraudulent manner, gross mismanagement of the affairs. We have already explained the meaning of gross negligence, gross mismanagement in two zero two. Per se negligence, per se, and gross negligence. All that is over. Commencement of PPIRP within two days. Corporate debtor to send the send RP what base resolution plan. That RP will then send it to COC. COC will discuss if the base resolution plan or if any new resolution plan is given complies with full provisions of section thirty mutatis mutandis. Section thirty is what guys. It provides for payment of the resolution cost. Second, it provides for financial credit or payment, operational credit or payment, and then SR steel decision. 
higher of the liquidation value and the resolution value and also if you arrange that resolution value in the liquidation waterfall mechanism whatever you would have got there at least that you need to match same coc will discuss and they will also give you an opportunity to change the base resolution plan this is more about discussion and then you know setting it right than anything else final approval will be given under 54k4 and if it is not there guys then i will invite new prospective resolution applicants first preference will be given to base resolution plan first only within 2 days only corporate editor will send it to base resolution plan and within 7 days what happens guys within 7 days of ppirp coc will be formed no so then i will immediately send it to coc they will discuss they'll say sir please change do some extra masala you add and give me once you take the opportunity yes final approval will be done but again you see taking satish kumar gupta that was a sr steel case law asler mittal the base resolution plan does not impair the claims owed to operational creditor means you cannot create a resolution plan only to favor the financial creditor you should also help the operational creditor good point if the base resolution plan does not impair claims owed to operational creditor then i can give a final approval otherwise i am going to invite prospective resolution applicants in form p11 within 21 days from the commencement of the ppirp they shall fulfill all the criteria laid down in all the regulations act approved by coc and they shall also prepare the information memorandum and the resolution applicants also should not be ineligible as per 29 capital a this is not an amendment this is a separate act right where is this amendment right crazy it is this is first point second R rp to check all the resolution plans and confirm that it confirms this confirm approves that it confirms means it follows all provisions of 30 subsection 1 and 2 that is criteria or priority as per sr steel compare base resolution plan with other resolution plans with respect to feasibility and viability manner of distribution of assets order of priority of debts security interest everything if coc feels that debts owed by corporate debtor are impaired in the resolution plan they can ask for provisions for dilution of shareholding voting or control rights in the resolution plan they'll say corporate debtor you are now giving me the money back i agree but you are giving less money first of all you are giving me less you also have to take something less right what issue shares you own so many shares promoter you own so many shares why don't you transfer some shares to me so i can ask for what guys dilution in the shareholding voting or control in the resolution plan i can say contract of remission i was supposed to receive 1 crore you have just given me 60 lakhs in the plan 40 lakhs why should i say no why should i agree i believe in your company give me 10% stake promoter you own 40% make it 30% can i add like that yes it's all for the benefit of revival if dilution provisions is not inserted also and still they are fighting then coc to record the reasons if they are okay with it this fellow says no way sir i will not give you the management it is my baby okay if you want 10 lakhs extra i'll give or maximum this only i can give you know that i will do well you know that i am going to you know recover and pay you everything you know business will be sound you know that i'll give you lot of business but please don't ask ownership 
If that be the case, if COC agrees, they can record reasons. And then that final approval. Final approval is what, guys? 66% of voting share. Same. They will file it with the NCLT finally. Sir, this we have approved the base resolution plan. And guys, one more thing. Other pointers. The base resolution plan can be submitted by the corporate data either individually or he can do it jointly with others also. Means he can talk to one more MSME and say they will come and do the needful. Impairment means what? If RP does not provide for deadly full payment of confirmed claims, then it is deemed to be impaired. That is one more change guys. No haircut here. What payment? Full payment. If there is a haircut, then dilution of control. Boss, 1 crore full pay. 60 lakhs means give me share capital. Give me share. That's what they are saying. But this is the feeling of this COC. If they feel it's impairing. What is impairing? Full payment if it doesn't provide. So guys, voting share. NCLT. If there is no approval or COC approves to terminate, what is that? First is no approval, they will not approve only. Or they actually approve to terminate, means what? No approval means what? They will not get 66% voting, voting majority. CC, COC to approve to terminate means 70% will say this PPIRP is one uh, nonsense, let us end it. No approval means 66% also they don't get. COC approval to terminate means what? More than 66% approve to cancel the PPIRP. Then RP will give to the NCLT for the termination of PPIRP. Will termination of PPIRP result in liquidation? Or will termination of PPIRP go to CIRP? What do you think? Sir, I don't know. First, it is leading to my termination. Already dead. Correct? Yes. That's how it is, guys. No choice. Finish it off. Then we'll take a break. Over. Till K over. LMNOP. LMNO. That's it. Finally, guys. Approval of resolution plan. COC will approve NCLT. In GOC approval, NCLT wet in 30 days and I give it to NCLT. In which what is L, what is C, God only knows. Yeah. If it gives to NCLT, within 30 days, NCLT will approve. When will they approve, guys? If they are okay with the effective implementation. Second, if it confirms with the section 30 and 31. And within 7 days, in regulation 49, within 7 days, I am going to intimate each claimant. And I will give a formula for repayment. There will be a formula in this and I will intimate each claimant. Means whoever has claimed. Let's say, sir, they have agreed, sir. Congratulations. The formula for repayment will be given. Now, if 1 and 2 are not followed, means what? If it does not confirm to 30 and 31 and if the effective implementation is not done properly according to the NCLT, then NCLT within 30 days can disapprove or reject the resolution plan and pass an order under 54N for what? Termination of the PPIRP. Termination of PPIRP. Special point. If COC under 54J2 has applied to NCLT for vesting of management with the RP. Remember that. Vesting of management with the RP because of what? Fraudulent affairs or gross, mis gross mismanagement. 
and nclt had approved that particular thing that time which means before this order and all came first only had approved what shifting of the entire management to rp then now the, the rp has has been approved by the same coc and because of collusion correct because of collusion what is happening this entire resolution plan is such that first of all had applied there where see what i'll explain in the base resolution plan the management had given that we will do 1 2 3 4 5 5 fine during the course of the entire proceedings rp lodged a complaint to coc saying that sir i am monitoring everything but these fellows are doing golmal guarantee 100% golmal they are doing sir so in that case please change the management in the sense let me come and take over so coc has already approved i go to nclt nclt also has approved which means now i take over the management now i am taking over the management but who is giving the base resolution plan still that fraudulent company fraudulent promoters in the base resolution plan i have come to know that management and promoter is not changing only same fellow is continuing how does it matter now guys super same fellow is continuing and then it may result in collusion they will come to rp also and say bro i know you are taken over but i am you you are me how much money you want let's collude right you leave it you ensure that this is passed you go to that uh, creditor you tell him the same we'll do something to prevent this guys we have one more section see before that if nothing happens if everything is smooth they will either approve it or reject it if they reject it what what will they reject they will terminate the ppirp but in this case if it results in any collusion check it out if it results in a collusion they come to know that this is collusion hand in hand all of them are coming together to actually cheat the corporate data only that's the best part some promoters are cheating the other directors and people who invested the gone so nclt under a different section they can reject the resolution plan or terminate the ppirp these two are already there before also in any ppirp they can terminate it or they can reject it that's okay but three additional things two additional things they can now pass a liquidation order direct and the ppirp cost to be part of the liquidation cost liquidation order can be passed only and only when i have already applied to the nclt and they have approved for changing in the management management has changed during ppirp but superbly in the base resolution plan no management is changing they are only continuing and it appears that there is collusion nclt feels its collusion so i'll say liquidation there is no point in going ahead liquidation direct death you are misusing the provisions of ppirp to further your personal gain i am going to cancel right now got it guys this is the last nail in the coffin otherwise what can nclt do only terminate the ppirp in this case the rp has you know approached the same i mean approved by the same coc and it does not change the management or promoter at all so the resolution professional has given the resolution plan the resolution plan is approved by the same coc it does not even change the management promoter etc this is full collusion between few creditors 
and management and resolution professional. So NCLT says, what is this nonsense? Do you think I'm a fool? This MSME is to revive honest MSME promoters. What you are doing is outright cheating. So what do I do? Liquidation order. Termination of PPIRP this is the last part. Termination of PPIRP. Roots of termination. Same revision. Where COC does not approve the resolution plan, meeting happens but no approval. That is one part of termination. 54D3. Where COC does not approve within 90 days. Means what? Inaction by COC. They don't approve only. Third one, COC by a 66% voting resolves to terminate the PPIRP. That is after commencement of PPIRP and before approval of resolution plan. Where COC does not approve. Meeting happens but no approval. Second one, they do not approve within 90 days. Inaction, indifference. Third one, by 66% majority, by voting share resolves to terminate the entire PPIRP process. RP to apply to NCLT in form number P13. There they will terminate the PPIRP. As we have already seen all these things. It's a quick revision. But these provisions will continue. Avoidance of transaction, fraudulent trading, fraudulent management during PPIRP. These proceedings, I can sue them for Avoidance of transactions. I can sue them for fraudulent trading. I can sue them for fraudulent trading during PPIRP. That will not take away. Just because I have terminated the PPIRP doesn't mean I can take away avoidance of transaction provisions. If CD, this we have already seen, if corporate data is in a fraudulent manner, gross mismanagement, NCLT will also liquidate. Will also liquidate. Liquidation also can happen. These are the three modes of termination. Three modes of termination. One, where COC does not approve. Second, COC does not approve within 90 days in action. Third one, by 66% resolution, they decide to terminate. Positive action. After commencement of PPIRP, approval of resolution plan, COC with a 66% voting share. After the commencement of PPIRP or before the approval of resolution plan, the COC through a 66% voting share, if they feel like going to CIRP, they can do so. So guys, COC has two options. One, either go to CIRP or approve the plan, reject the plan, don't do anything, terminate the PPIRP. But if any fraud happens, direct liquidation order. RP to intimate the NCLT within 30 days and they will do what? They will terminate the PPIRP. Resolution professional under PPIRP will now be the interim resolution professional under CIRP. This is transfer of PPIRP to CIRP. What is the effect? Order of transfer is order of admission of application under section 7. Means if I say, if I pass an order to transfer PPIRP to CIRP, that is the order of admission. The moment you admit, what happens? CIRP begins 180 plus 90. CIRP will commence from that date. For all the proceedings shall continue. This will also add now. 
43 preferential transactions, 46 relevant time, extortionate credit transactions. The PPIRP date will be the insolvency commencement date for these three sections. For 43, 46 and 50, PPIRP date will be the insolvency commencement date. PPIRP period is also included in the relevant time. Only for this. For other cases, order of transfer from PPIRP to CIRP will be the insolvency commencement date. Only for 43, 46, 50, PPIRP date will be the insolvency commencement date. So, this successfully we have completed PPIRP. It is a separate act only. That is why I did not do it yesterday. If I had done it yesterday, IBC, PPIRP would have created one own thing. PPIRP, IBC, IRP. Right? So, this is the thing. That ends the matter. We shall take a break now. Okay, so let's begin. Guys, this SEBI and all is chiller only, but little bit. <laughs> we'll do all this. We'll finish off quickly. It's all very easy law. Yes, SEBI board. They'll ask this question for uh, what do you say? Uh, MCQs and all that. When will the chairman die? How long can he live? All those things. Sixty-five years term, five years termination. Uh, these things do not ignore because it is important. SEBI board who can come. This you will never ever study in your entire life. You will never apply practically also. You will not go to SEBI and say tell me the chairman how old is he. <laughs> but in the exam they will ask you unfortunately. Chairman 2 from the union ministry, 1 from RBI, 5 from the union government and all these things. Of this 3 are whole time members. Whole time members maximum 65 years of age. Uh, interesting to know part time members no restriction. Removal of members, these four things, insolvent, unsound mind, moral turpitude, or if it's like this one, KD fellow, who has abused his position in the market and of course in public interest, you can throw him out. As far as resignation is concerned, uh, three months notice should be given, notice of three months, that's how it is. Powers and functions of the board, 11, 2A and all these things, if it is insider trading, fraudulent or unfair trade practices. The beauty about this 11, 1, 11, 2, 11, 4 especially is they can, the best practical example is if you have around 19, 20 minutes, uh, I suggest you watch that video which I released couple of days ago. This was, all these things are there in that. This is because the as per 11 subsection 4, the SEBI can give the instructions or directions as they deem fit. That is the dialogue given. So, in that same thing with uh, Yes Bank and the Dish TV, they have actually suspended the, uh, what do you say, of uh, the uh, concerned uh, DMAT accounts of all the directors, all those powers are there, definitely. So, same thing, as it deems fit, this one, instructions as it deems fit. And they can uh, levy penalty also as per the Banning of Unregulated Deposit Schemes Act 2019. Whatever they want, they can definitely do so. So, generally these questions of what they come in SEBI is of course 11 subsection 4 keeps coming. What are the powers when an inquiry or an in investigation is ordered, 11 subsection 4. And uh, also what are the powers of SEBI to issue directions. That also they have asked in the exam many, many times, 4 marks. Apart from that, what are the powers of SEBI to seize records? These are all more of, uh, what do you say, theoretical points which you can go through. And uh, generally, if you compare and study, seizure of documents, everything is 180 plus 180 like that, right? Here it is. Uh, and if it's investigation, you can keep it till the conclusion under uh, the respective section. Here also till the conclusion. Seizure of documents is till the conclusion. Collective investment schemes, registration is all pure theory. Cannot waste time in discussing all these things now. Uh, penalty provisions, I've given it because penalty is there. How you study, God only knows. If you remember that, I don't know. So, that is something which I have never understood how to remember penalties and it doesn't make sense honestly. But anyway, procedure for adjudication, uh, yeah. And if you see, appellate provisions, again, what is the entire, at least you should know what is the uh, adjudicating mechanism here under SEBI. So, basically first, any person agreed by the order of uh, SEBI, SEBI order or assessing officer's order or anybody, IRDA, pension fund regulatory authority can go, again here see it's 45-45, it's not 45-15 like IBC or 30-15. 
45 days they can go to SAT, Securities Appellate Tribunal. So actually Dish TV has gone to SAT now against the order of the assessing officer in that particular case. 45 days and more than 45 days uh, sufficient cause it can be uh, you know put forth, for, forward. Then if you are agreed by the order of SAT, Securities Appellate Tribunal, then again they should dispose of it as soon as possible. Otherwise they will pass an order either confirming it, modifying it or setting it aside. Again order to the Supreme Court is within 60 days. So this is the entire mechanism. And term again we have already discussed SEBI board maximum 65 years, 3 years at a time can be reappointed by CG. Whereas securities appellate tribunal that also they will ask you should not get confused here it is 70 years. 70 years, 2 terms of 5 years each. So the term of the SEBI board chairman etc 65 years, 3 years at a time whereas securities appellate tribunal 70 years, 2 terms of 5 years each <coughs> it is reappointed by respective parties. Then they have asked many many times who are the people who are uh, who are there in the securities appellate tribunal. One will be a presiding officer who would be a judge of the high court for 7 years or the supreme court or the chief justice of the high court also can sit there who has been rather. Judicial members will be a judge who has experience as a judge in a high court for 5 years. Technical members, technical members will be a secretary or additional secretary. Uh, who would obviously be a part of the ministry or the CG or the state, state government and other persons who have 15 years experience in securities market, pension funds, commodity derivatives, insurance, etc. So one thing that we need to keep in mind is this is who are the uh, people who are there in SAT. So to confuse us what they asked was who are the people who will select the technical members that also they asked. So that is a separate search come selection committee. This also was a four mark question. So these are all merely theoretical. This is more of uh, what do you say remembering. So this uh, book is more than sufficient to you know browse through all these important areas. Selection committee also is there. Selection committee will uh, what you say select the technical members. So who are they? Chairperson, presiding officer of SAT. This guy presiding officer will be part of the selection committee. Then any member and who is this member? Secretary Department of Home Affairs, Secretary Department of Financial Affairs, Secretary Department of Legal Affairs. These are the members also will be part of that entire committee. Who will be selecting what? The technical members. This is again a uh, noteworthy thing and of course insider trading is no insider shall indulge in any insider trading. Insider trading keywords are UPSI unpublished price sensitive information. Any connected person or even deemed connected person like say if I am uh, doing a due diligence of a company and I come to know certain unpublished price sensitive information, can I pass it on to my friend and that friend will pass it on to one more friend and that friend to another friend who happens to be a stock broker who will now act on that information and trade and make a gain? No. So all these things would be banned. Uh, dire directly dealing in security or even counselling, communicating or procuring information, all these things are banned. So they are uh, really dangerous provisions that is with respect to insider trading. SEBI LOD are also guarantee questions they will ask you. So these whatever I have given you just check it out, it is very very simple. Beyond this cannot simplify further. Minimum number of directors on the board that is uh, normal companies you know these are SEBI listed companies. 6 directors must be there. Top 1000 listed companies and top 2000 listed companies should have minimum 6 directors. We never saw this anywhere in Companies Act. Here minimum 6 directors. We saw only 2 and 3 in Companies Act. Here it is 6. For what? Listed companies. Gender diversity we already know that one independent woman director. We have seen this already. Then approval for non-executive director who has attained the age of 75 years. So one more special resolution is needed for listed entity, correct? This is for non-executive director, not MD. Don't get confused. MD is that schedule 5, that's different. That is MD more than 70. Here it is non-executive director, different. Quorum for the board, again we have seen already, that is one third of total strength or two was there. No, here it is what? Three. For how many? Top 2000 listed companies from with effect from 1st April 2020 of which one shall be at least one independent director. That's what it is. Then apart from that remuneration payable to a single non-executive director, annual remuneration payable 
to a single non executive director exceeds 50% of the total remuneration again you have to take a special resolution so overall remuneration is around uh, 10 crores in which 6 crores only one fellow is withdrawing so obviously for that specially you have to take special resolution these are LODR that is not for normal companies act but for listed entities is what they say apart from that maximum number of directorship this is also this can be asked in uh, MCQs what is this a person can be a person in how many companies you have already seen right 20 of which 10 will be public apart from that guys these things person shall not be a director in more than 8 listed companies with effect from 1st April 2019 this is within that 10 and 7 listed entities with effect from 1st April 2020 these are all MCQ questions that they can ask you a person shall not serve as an independent director in more than 7 listed entities any person who is serving as whole time director or MD in any listed entity shall serve as an independent director in not more than three listed entity. If you are a professional independent director, maximum number of companies, seven listed companies. Normal directorship, maximum eight listed entities from 1 April, 1st April 2019, but now from 2020, as of today in 2022, it is seven listed entities. Then who serving as whole time director MD in any listed entity shall serve as a independent director in not more than three listed entities is what they say. Apart from that there are other things also declaration of independence, number of uh, memberships in the committee also. A director shall not be a member in more than 10 committees. There is audit committee, stakeholder relationship committee, right? So many committees are there in that nomination remuneration committee maximum you can be in only 10 companies across all listed entities across all listed entities or act as a chairperson of more than five these are all purely memory you have to remember this no choice unfortunately then all the other uh, things are fine quarterly compliances you can just stick to the chart guys you can go through the chart each of this can be asked in the exam when will you file what within how many days no need to study anything else just stick to this more than sufficient financial results when you should go what is the record date dividend when website updation when you should give everything so these are all the directly it is given nothing for me to actually uh, you know explain here apart from that one more important question is page number 233 various committees various committees as per companies act is different various committees as per LODR is different so, I have given the difference between uh, audit committee with respect to LODR and 177. So, we know all listed committee, yes, two hours man, over. Yes, minimum number of directors here, three and three, both same. Minimum independent directors, here it is majority, here it is two third. Financial literacy must be there, chairperson. Chairperson has to be financially literate in case of uh, 177, but in case of LODR, it is uh, you know, chairperson shall be independent director and has to be present at the AGM. These are some of the other criteria you can go through. It is in a tabular format and this is a summary of all three committees, audit committee, nomination, remuneration committee, four committees that is uh, stakeholder relationship committee and risk management committee applicable to top 500 companies. This entire LODR regulations will 100% come. It is in MCQs especially they ask. So, it is solid, you can get 4-5 marks from these things only. Just stick to this, uh, you have to keep on revising here and there. And one day before the exam also, just stick to this material more than sufficient. So, next is uh, FEMA. In FEMA, again, we will have to see only the, I mean, whatever is possible. Uh, and especially only the ones which are slightly tricky. Uh, most important, if you have a cursory glance of the past uh, 20, 25, 30 papers, Almost 70% of the questions either come in residential status or they come in current account transaction, capital account transaction, little bit of export of uh, services, repatriation, that's it. Yeah, other things will comprise of ECB and other uh, areas 30% of the time. It comes only for 4 marks, correct? Sometimes 5 to 6 marks, but predominantly 4 marks, right? But in that, of course, we need to understand the definition of the resident in India. So, who is a resident in India? Three things that we have to keep in mind. Point number one, period of stay in the previous financial year. Point number two, purpose of stay in the current financial year. That's all. Period of stay in the previous financial year, purpose of stay in the current financial year. So, there are only divided into three parts. If you see the definition, it's more tricky. It's have uh, 
you know, made it easier. Uh, these three people are residents. These three people are residents. One, all Indian citizens who stayed in India for more than 182 days. When? In the previous financial year. Previous financial year always should be seen from the prism of what? Period of stay. Last year, how long did you stay for? Stayed for how long? More than 182 days. Current financial year <coughs> who has never gone abroad in the current financial year. So, all CA articles, all of us are what? Indian citizens stayed in India for more than 182 days. Assume COVID was not there. In the current year, not gone because we are preparing for the exam. So, we are what? Obviously, resident. Now, next year, let us say we have cleared CA. So, we have cleared CA. Now, if I look back the previous year, when I was studying for CA, obviously, I was staying in India for what? More than 182 days. Now, in the current year, I am already a CA. Now, I can go out for a trip, right? Or I can go out where? I can go on business or I can probably I get a job abroad. So, what am I now is what we need to see. So, if you see who went abroad in the current financial year for other than the three purposes, will be a resident other than the three purposes means he should not have gone there that you should not go for business if you go for business you are not a resident second you should not go for employment if you go for employment what will happen not a resident and mind you guys it's what any person who stayed in india for example uh, in the previous financial year right and current financial year you are going abroad for what Employment. Third one, some other purpose where the period of stay is indefinite, medical treatment, etc., in all these cases. Now, let us say if you go abroad for a trip, are you a resident or non resident? Resident, because you are going outside for other than the three purposes. What if you go to study? You are going out to study. So, this year, let us very simple, this year, in the previous financial year, when I was doing CA, I, did I stay for more than 180 days? Yes. Current year, I am going abroad to study. Is it other than the three purposes? Yes. Other than the three purposes? Yes. So, what is it? Are you resident or non-resident? Resident. resident. Uh, this is the exception that I was talking about. 100% you are a resident, but you see your exception. This is important. This they can ask. Important exception, residential status as per ICI and RBI circular. Second point, a person residing in India who goes outside India for studies. After CA, if you still want to study, assume, and you want to go abroad, <laughs> uh, in that case, you will be considered as a special status will be given, person resident outside India. Correct? You are like waste because you have studied, studied already CA, you are going out non-resident. No, but logic, you know why? Because outside, it is very, very expensive for us to go. Most of the people who go abroad to study eventually work there. When I say eventually work, they will do some part-time job. So, most of my friends also had, when they had shifted there, they were uh, stewards in a proper, in a cafe, they were baristas. It is it is there, it is there, all dignity of labor is there. So, they will work, they have to work, they cannot, it is very high, standard of living is very high. So, they are, the government thought that, boss, if you are going abroad, you are saying that you are going to study, but actually you are working also, which means it will be deemed to be what? You have gone for, other than the three purposes, you have gone for employment. That is why the year you go only should be treated as what? Person, resident, outside India. This is a big exception. So, first you have to write this by the way. First you have to write this and first you have to say is a resident. However, then you should write this second point. Should write the second point. So, a person residing in India who goes outside India for studies will be considered as person resident outside India. It is a old circular 2003. So, if these two cases are tested in the exam, the first case we still have to do, please write the original provision and then explain the exception as given above. So, they will be treated as resident outside India. Anyway, from forget about this year, next year, if you have gone to study also, the next year, one full year you are outside India. Next year, what is your status? Obviously, non-resident because the previous year you never stayed for more than 182 days. So, residential status keeps changing. Now, if you have gone abroad for employment only, assume you are a person resident outside India. Once you join there, there you cannot eat that food, correct? So, you bring, ask your parents to come. So, then in that case, your parents will come for one or two months, whatever it is. Like on a tourist visa, they come for a month. 
Now, what about your parents? Are they resident or non-resident? Resident. They are obviously resident. So, that is what they say here. Very simple. Third one. All NRI and foreigners. Third one is different. All NRI and foreigners who stayed in India for more than 182 days. Now, this is like an expatriate who comes to India first time ever to work. The year he comes to India, obviously in the previous year he never stayed for more than 182 days. So, will he be called as a, a resident or non-resident? Non-resident. What about the next year? The next year he would have stayed in India previous year for more than 180 days. And that year he would have come for what? For the three purposes, business or vocation, employment or some other purpose. Now, if a foreigner, a Kenyan student comes to India to study, the year he comes to study is a non-resident. But then the next year he will obviously again be what? Did he come for, for employment? No. For, came for any other purpose. So, three years he will study here and after eventually he will get a job in India. So, on that day he will be called as a resident. So, but there are, you know, expatriates who come to India for the first time ever. They will be coming to India for the first time ever to take up, uh, you know, positions here in their Indian uh, companies. I mean, their Indian uh, subsidiaries and all those things. Now, for that, obviously, the year you are coming, you are a non-resident, but exception. That is first exception. A person who has come to India to take up employment will be considered as actually non-resident. Why? Last year you did not stay for more than 182 days, but it is treated as person resident in India. Because anyway is coming to uh, you know take employment from next year anyway is a resident, why not make him from this year only? That is the idea here. These are the two exceptions given in the revised study material. Earlier it was not like this. So, if anything like that they ask in the exam, please note that you should write these two exceptions. That's all about it. Then what about if you are an air hostess and all those things, then you are uh, uh, obviously a British Airways, but you come to India and then there is a layover in Bangalore, some 10 days or 15 days a month, 10 days a month you are here. So, 10, in, I mean then 10, 15 days like that, eventually almost around 180, 190 days you are in India. So, are you a person resident in India? So, residing means there should be an intention to stay. Uh, because of your work, if you are obviously staying as a layover, that is not the meaning of the word staying in India or residing in India is what they say. So, citizenship is definitely not relevant. And if you see there, the words resided for more than one, it implies a compulsive stay in, in uh, that in India will not be considered. Compulsive stay, you are compelled to stay, no choice, that is not considered. The word reside also implies permanency. During COVID, there somebody came to see Taj Mahal, then COVID. Here. Here only stuck for 3-4 months and then eventually it went up. He also got COVID hospitalized. Then in that case, what to do? That's what they are saying. Compulsive stay is not treated as residing. Citizenship is not relevant for determining the residential status. Definition of resident and non-resident are mutually exclusive. Either a resident or a non-resident. Definition under FEMA is both based on period of stay in the previous financial year, purpose of stay in the current financial year. Very, very simple. One has to remember it as 183 days because it says more than 182 days. 182 days, one hour, all that extra thinking should be avoided. Under FEMA, the residential status of a person can change obviously on a daily basis. Now, if you go abroad to for employment, then next day only you came running. You went to employment in Malaysia. I was meeting a friend recently, he told me he went to Malaysia for 3 years. First month only he lost 20 kgs. He is a proper vegetarian. In Malaysia, Philippines, sorry, in Philippines. Philippines, what you will get? He said even uh, chips is made of pork, lard that is. So, he is like, I didn't get anything. So, even rice I was thinking whether it is veg or non-veg, normal white rice. Right? That's what it is. So, he was telling that. So, he was telling his experience. Then he said, I have never entered the kitchen in my life. But then there I had to call my mom. I didn't, didn't even know how Turdal looks. So, then I had to see the picture, go to some market, which is some uh, 100 kilometers from where I stayed, to get Turdal. And then he learned cooking. And he, then he started feeding all the Indians there. Uh, that's what he was telling. So, all that happened. Yes, all he was telling me when I met. Yes, so if you see, these are the two things, two important exceptions, exception one and exception two. Done. Body corporate on the other hand, you are incorporated in India, but you are office branch or agencies in India, but is controlled by a person resident outside India. 
other one office branch or agency outside india controlled or owned by a person resident in india so reliance office in dubai that would also be called as a resident whereas uh, what about uh, tesla office in india what do you think that is controlled by a person outside india but it's an office branch or agency in india will be called as a resident only the tesla bangalore office is already there yes then apart from that you have uh, definitions of foreign currency and foreign securities and all those things uh, this you can all go through guys now the two other things important transactions are called capital account transaction and current account transaction so our life should be as simple as current account transaction definition other than capital account transaction but it's not so simple our life is like capital account transaction now what is capital account transaction something that alters the assets and liabilities including contingent liability outside india of a person residing in india so basically it should alter the assets and liabilities outside india of a person residing in india it should either create a asset create a liability outside india outside india so if uh, kumar swami random person right kumar swami buys let's say vidhan sauda in bangalore he buys vidhan sauda using money from icici bank maleshwaram is it creating any asset no so is it is it what is a capital account transaction no on the other hand he wants to buy uh, you know palm islands one house in palm islands so then for that he uses uh, icici bank or sbi let's take sbi sbi will use a loan from sbi what do you think is it creating an asset yes now if he borrows money from swiss bank and then buys the palm island property it is creating an asset also outside india liability also outside india for a person resident in india so that is called as a capital account transaction reverse case leonardo di caprio comes to india he falls in love with maleshwaram every day he comes to ctr hotel there now he wants to buy a small room next to advait because he likes the place what do you think that wishful thinking just example so what so if he is buying what alters the asset and liability in india correct of a person residing outside india so if it creates any asset and liability in india for a person residing outside india that will be called as a capital account transaction current account is other than the three for current account transactions there are three schedules schedule number 1 completely prohibited schedule number 2 prior approval of cg because there are two things here two letters cg three letters like that they didn't frame the law easy for us <laughs> schedule 3 is what rbi prior approval of rbi so these things also they keep asking in the exam whereas this is all capital account transactions etc so for example an indian resident imports machinery from a vendor in uk for installing in his factory machinery is a capital expenditure as per accounts and income tax law but under fema i'm importing it to the country is it creating an asset in india for the uk vendor no it does not alter anything it does not create any liability also to the uk vendor for the indian importer so hence for the uh, uk person the indian resident or uk vendor neither owns nor is owed anything to the other in the person in the other country i am just buying the property from outside hence it is a current account transaction but if i import the machinery on uh, you know credit terms also that is also a current account transaction all these are current account transaction but if i take a loan if i take a ecb to buy a machinery from outside it's creating a liability outside india then only it will be called as a capital account transaction just because i bought a machinery machinery is of capital nature capital account transaction no you should see the money is it creating an asset or liability outside india for a person resident in india so then prohibited list you all know this very simple lottery winnings income from racing all these things are completely prohibited call back services and all these are prohibited schedule to uh, approval of central government cultural tours you have to take approval of uh, ministry of human resources etc and foreign print media if you are uh, if any state government for example if karnataka forest department is putting up an advertisement in a foreign media if you allow, if you are a private organization if you are putting a uh, advertisement outside india that's your money who is rbi to tell how to spend your money but when a state government or a public sector undertaking is actually putting up like for example karnataka forest department wants to ensure that uh, many foreigners would come and visit kabini national park to see the black leopard called saya so they want to see and many people are coming actually it is earning a lot of foreign exchange by the way is one of the 
or very very few places in the whole world where you can obviously get a chance to sight the black leopard black panther so of course in that case if i want to put up a full page advertisement in a foreign media then of course i need to take the approval of ministry of finance department of economic affairs like that so like that many things are there so you know remittance of hiring charges of transponders by tv channels now you have your own satellite so in within your own satellite you can obviously use it now let's say the arnab goswami is speaking and the transponder only bursts indian satellite assume so obviously then i'll have to hire somebody else's satellite i have to hire usa satellite then obviously money is going outside the country right so that's the reason why i have to take the permission of ministry of information and broadcasting worst examples but you'll remember yes next schedule 3 prior approval of rbi prior approval of rbi now this is again very simple individuals now this again is important up to us dollar 250000 per person per financial year no permission needed each individual can spend up to 250000 us dollars no permission this is called what liberalized remittance scheme lrs liberalized remittance scheme you can do whatever you want that no questions asked even if i am exceeding 250000 also no problem provided i am only using it for these three things emigration emigration means migrating from my country to some other country settling down there correct not going to another country for a trip that is called immigration there is a difference immigration and emigration emigration is migrating to shifting to another country so there you need to pay those uh, taxes they said all this 25 years you stayed in india now you are coming here all the benefits of this country will flow to you so please pay that emigration tax now that tax can be 1 lakh 2 lakh 3 lakh so if it goes beyond this uh, 2 lakh 50000 us dollars still i can go ahead if it is emigration no permission needed medical treatment abroad studies abroad in all these cases i can go beyond 2 lakh 50000 if the lrs scheme initially only if you are opted for the lrs scheme even if it exceeds no problem But for other reasons, if you are using this uh, money, then you have to take permission. It's for individuals. What about companies? Companies is very simple. If the company has given donation, Reliance has given a donation to Harvard University for what? For creation of a chair. For creation of a chair. They say that uh, two, three seats you reserve for me. I will have a selection process in our country. I will give uh, examination. Whoever selects, I'll reject and I'll send. Anir, uh, then I'll send Anand Tambani anyway. to harvard university foreign university though if they will study and come back and work in my company but yeah scholarship schemes are there where there will be examinations and then very simple i am sending you abroad to study in that university you need to come back and work for reliance for two years three years that's a bond sign that's fair enough so if you see yes how much can i give donations if it is up to some limit it's okay but if it exceeds exceeds 1% of the previous three years forex earnings or us dollar 50 lakh whichever is less only if it is exceeding that amount so i have to uh, compute how much have you brought in the past 3 years i should see 1% of that i'll allow or 50 lakh us dollar whichever is less up to that amount if you are creating a chair no problem but if you exceed that amount you have to take prior rbi approval mind you it's not prohibited it's just that it is restricted to take rbi approval or if i can fund any education institution or if let's say for example they fund any activity which is the field of activity of the company reliance does everything anyway so whichever uh, research institution they pay money that will be covered under this thing this is outlaw of foreign exchange from india that's why if it exceeds a certain limit i need to take permission next commission on agents abroad for sale of residential or commercial plots in india so basically there are uh, many many nris there who want to buy Uh, land in india want to buy uh, you know luxurious apartments in india they take the help of foreign agents only they take the help of foreign agents so commission paid to agents abroad for what sale of residential flats or commercial plots in india itself so i am simply paying commission to them it's a wasteful expenditure us dollars is going from india to abroad to the foreign agents how much i can uh, bear up to that basically if it exceeds 25000 us dollars or 5% of the inward remittance since you are buying the house in india obviously you will bring in money also when you bring in money in that 5% i can allow you to send it back so 5% of inward remittance 
or 25,000 USD, whichever is higher. Again, these things are purely based on memory. You need to remember them. Consultancy fee. Now, I am uh, developing a lot of airports in India because of the abrogation of Article 370. Now, I want to construct a lot of airports in Jammu Kashmir uh, uh, you know, area. So, I will hire people, consultants from abroad. Now, I need to pay them the fee for infrastructure and other facilities. So, for if I am developing infrastructure, and I hire a foreign consultant who has expertise in, uh, what do you say, uh, you know, uh, constructing airports and in high altitude regions. So, I have to pay him money or I have to pay that uh, entire organization money. If it exceeds US dollar 1 crore per project, 1.2 crore, 1.3 crore, for that extra money, I need to take permission of RBI. And for others, other than infrastructure pro project, then for example, if I want some uh, legal help, I take some legal consultancy services, that is US dollar 10 lakhs. All this is memory based, memory based, you need to remember. And mind you guys, the LRS is applicable for both current account and capital account. This was again an RBI circular, it's not just for current account, it's applicable to both. Both limits put together 2.5 lakhs. Then what are the prohibited uh, transactions in the business in the business of chit fund, chit, capital account, capital account transactions also. Everything is allowed but except a few which are prohibited. What are prohibited that also they keep asking. In the business of chit fund, chit fund business, chit fund business is what where I need a loan but I will obviously put small amounts of money, 10,000 rupees like that. So all of us will collect around 5-6 lakhs. In that they will, lowest bidder will get the full amount and the bid starts at around 65% of the value collected. So though I just invested 10,000 rupees, mine was the lowest bid. So I got the entire 10 lakh rupees. In that 10 lakh, they will obviously remove the commission and whatever remaining amount they will give. And the remain, or 65% they will actually give, get remaining uh, after the four months commission, remaining amount will be distributed to other people who had obviously bought the chits. Now, this is a, in India only people, you know, cheat, you know, by uh, opening these chit fund businesses. But imagine if I allow foreigners to do it. Hence, investment or anything, creation of chit fund business, not possible. However, non-resident Indians shall be eligible to subscribe through banking channels. They can do so, but on a very strict non-repatriation basis. Means what? If they invest in chit fund in India, they can they cannot take it back to their country. And it is only for NRI. NRI, banking channel, non-repatriation basis allowed. Nidhi company, same thing in agricultural or plantation activity. In agricultural plantation activity, this is memories of the past. They also came as traders, some people. We said, please come, Atiti Deva Bhava, then they took over everything. That is why banned, agriculture or plantation, real estate or construction not allowed. So they cannot buy any property. However, there are exceptions to this, NRIs can buy, OCI can buy, overseas citizen of India, PIO can buy, that is person of Indian origin. They can all buy up to one property, sometimes two property, joint holding, all this is there, that is anyway, that is another part of it. Now can I hire a foreign consultancy firm? who are uh, experts in development of townships, all these things. Now, Reliance is building an entire township uh, near Mumbai. So, like that, can I hire outsiders to build, uh, can I do a joint development of township and all that? 100 percent yes. So, there is no hard and fast rule. That is that real estate business shall not include development of townships. And also, I cannot trade in TDR, transferable development rights. So, that also uh, because of the zoning area and free zoning area, you will get this TDR if anyone is taking over compulsorily. So, that TDR also, it is a right to own a property. So since you cannot own a property, you cannot even own the right as well, is what they say. Can I invest in, uh, what do you say, real estate investment trust, REIT. So, REIT will actually invest in other companies and give you a return. Is that possible? Yes, that is possible, clearly given that. So, these are prohibited transactions, some are freely allowed, some are freely allowed, that is what depreciation of direct investment and amortization of loan. So, if I have taken a loan and I want to now reschedule the loan, restructure the loan, that is called amortization, that or Reliance invested in some joint venture, let us say in Vietnam and uh, unfortunately that investment was uh, waste, it could not go ahead. 
so i am what i am going to do depreciation of that investment i am going to write off that investment now of course i am altering the liability altering the asset i have a joint venture i am altering the asset there is it a problem no problem because these things are freely allowed without any restriction apart from that there are other things if i am a person resident in india as of today i am resident in india but all my life i stayed in the us these are those your friends who say two years i'll go to usa and come and that two years will become 30 years so after 30 years they'll come back to their own country at age 65 let's say at that time whatever property they had owned when they were in usa standing today can i sell that property is the question so first of all i was in india then i went abroad i lived there for 30 35 years there i made some property there in the usa then i came back to my country when i came back to my country should i sell everything and come back or should i just come back can i just come back like that and sell it whenever i want and bring money to india or purchase more property all that is there that is this point freely allowed specifically given under section 64 and 65 anybody who is resident in india can hold own transfer invest foreign currency foreign security immovable property situated outside india which he had acquired held or inherited when he was outside india so basically your friend till let's say age 25 he'll be in india and then he goes abroad and stays here till he reaches 65 and here standing at age 65 here he would have made some property right so they are talking about that property this guy can he now hold own transfer invest in this property which he had acquired when he was outside india yes now what about this guy here this guy when he was age 20 had inherited some property from his father and now he is standing here he is in usa now he is in usa at age 35 he is in usa he remembers the property which is there in india which he inherited when he was in india he feels that he will not come back to india at least for the next 20 30 years he wants to dispose it off should i take any approval or i can dispose it off you can dispose it is freely allowed under 64 and 65 this part this part is this one old fellow is there resident in india who is resident in india now can hold own transfer in invest in what foreign currency foreign security immovable property situated outside india which is acquired held or inherited when he was outside india reverse you are a 35 year old guy in usa you are now thinking about the property which you inherited in india when you were in india you want to dispose it off right now can you do it yes next point resident outside india 35 year old guy hold own transfer he can hold it also just like that no problem he can transfer also sell it off no problem indian currency indian security immovable property situated in india which he had acquired held or inherited when he was in india so these are the other points that they can you know ask then you can rep repatriate back then of course there are certain regulations this you can go through where uh, nri can purchase oci can purchase oci is a person resident outside india who is registered as a overseas citizen of india as a oci card who is a person of indian origin then person of indian origin where his lineage his grandfather whoever some of them will be of indian origin so your satya nadella then your uh, sundar pichai all these people are i mean especially satya nadella are what is a person of indian origin whereas sundar pichai was an indian citizen but then he obviously became i mean a us citizen later so all these things are there and uh, person of indian origin also same thing in all these things there are certain regulations can you also have a joint acquisition by the spouse of an nri or a spouse of an oci so can nick jonas and priyanka chopra buy a property so all these are these examples only so there are various uh, you know things that are there then of course important export of goods the important thing there would be your uh, repatriation rules so let's just see that actually repatriation rules when will you uh, settle the export guidelines and all those things this all you can go through don't uh, what do you say delve too much into all this when you don't have time but do not ignore it also these are all important areas when it comes to like 3 to 4 marks here and there but if you have not understood if you don't want to study 
it's okay it's, you, can, you can take a risk here rather than leaving other things now this again is an important chart realization of export value if i have exported certain goods or services from india within how many days should i get it back this is the thing from india it has if it has gone normally goods exported normally to other places you know b to c segment then 9 months or such higher a time specified by rbi but extension is given by rbi because of covid we'll see that if it is goods exported to a warehouse outside india then i can repatriate the proceeds how 15 months 15 months or period specified by rbi but if the goods are going from a special economic zone or a export oriented unit or a electronic hardware technology park or a software technology park or a biotechnology park in these cases again 9 months is what they say 15 months is only for what warehouse however with effect from 1st april 2020 exports up to july 31st 2020 rbi has extended you know from 9 months to 15 months because of covid so if you see the dates anywhere till july 2020 in the exam if they give dates like that you also need to write this extension rbi has granted extension to how many months 15 months from the date of export and of course you have to give a edf duplicate and if it is a software softex then it is triplicate all these are fine all these things are there apart from that there are certain things this also is a four mark question export of goods or software may be made without furnishing any declaration so they can ask you this for trade samples when you are sending no declaration needed also if there is any gift less than or equal to 5 lakh rupees no declaration needed no declaration needed if i am sending any aircraft rafael jet aircraft i am sending for overhauling so for a period of 6 months again it will come back it will go there get refurbished get serviced and again come back within 6 months if it is coming so no need of any declaration all these things then one more uh, mcq based question would be realization and surrender of foreign exchange you go abroad you spend money unspent money is there before how long will you mean within how many how many what time i should give it back to rbi is the question so basically rbi here means basically the authorized people authorized money changer all these people so if i am getting remuneration for the services rendered then whether it's in india or outside india you should give it back within 7 days of the receipt but if it is in any other case that is sale proceeds of assets outside india 90 days from the date of receipt 90 days from the date of receipt i should surrender the realized forex other than individual again if for creation of chairs etc payment to consultants abroad etc if there is any unspent amount the company should surrender it within 60 days from the date of acquisition or purchase if there is any unspent amount and if for example mukesh ambani is going abroad and um, reliance is paying for the what do you say everything travel etc and also giving him some foreign exchange in that case if it is foreign notes and foreign i mean any coins are there which are unspent the company has to surrender it within 90 days of return of mukesh ambani if it is in travelers check etc 180 days travelers check 180 days two things they can ask you what if mukesh ambani himself takes foreign exchange when will he give back this is actually company should not get confused that's why i have given example reliance acquiring foreign exchange for business travel expenses of mukesh ambani that is different from mukesh ambani taking uh, foreign exchange right mukesh ambani taking foreign exchange is regulation number 7 individual resident for mukesh ambani it is whether it is currency note or travelers check it is 180 days correct for mukesh ambani it is 180 days even if it's foreign note foreign note if it is company taken on behalf of mukesh ambani reliance has applied for the forex then it is how much 90 days should not get confused that is a tricky point but there are exceptions no need to surrender under these cases absolutely no need to surrender 
if obviously authorized person only has money authorized money changer western union money transfer has a lot of foreign exchange will they have to surrender it no they have to keep obviously using that next any person can keep any number of coins absolutely no limit can i have 10 lakh us dollars worth of coins i'm just asking answer is yes you can keep coins of any value no problem and when you go abroad when you meet your aunty you will obviously put one dive namaskara i will do so that you'll get one cover on lok that here you'll get 101 rupees there you'll get 101 dollars good that's why full vigor we have to do so there honorarium gift and settlement of lawful obligation whatever unspent portion of travel i would have taken no in a year i can take 250000 usd so i am going somewhere abroad i have taken around 5000 us dollar i have spent around 3 and 1/2000 us dollar 1 and 1/2000 us dollar i still have can i say anyway i can go up to 250000 uh, it's well within the limit or should i surrender that in a year i can take 250000 no in that i have only taken 5000 In that five thousand, I spent three and a half thousand. One thousand five hundred US dollar I have with me in my hand. Should I actually surrender it or can I keep it? They say here you can retain only up to two thousand. So here I have thousand five hundred. So can I retain? Yes. Only up to two thousand I have to retain. If it is more than two thousand, surrender it. Whenever you want, you take it. No problem. But you need to surrender. These are the regulations. resident but not permanent resident who is employed or assigned in india for less than 3 years again he can bring no limit on bringing foreign currency notes etc held when he was outside india when he is coming to india he can bring all those things no problem and any amount can be kept in a foreign currency denominated special bank account absolutely no problem and who are the authorized persons under come whenever i say rbi rbi etc money will be deposited to whom to these people money changer dealer offshore banking unit money changer is ffmc or rmc restricted money changer full fledged money changer full fledged money changer can both buy and sell foreign exchange restricted guy can only buy penalties and all if you want yeah you study <laughs> next adjudicating authority uh, this again is slightly interesting adjudicating authority and appeal any problem in fema the prosecuting authority will be either rbi or if it involves proceeds of crime it can also go under pmla but if it's a normal civil offence basically in fma they are trying to tell you have to disclose whereas in pmla those are undisclosed things linked to criminal offence that is your basically scheduled offence so to speak so if i take money from all of you and do not offer it to tax and then keep it with me that is not illegal as such that is not a scheduled offence as per you know pmla but nevertheless if i convert it to foreign exchange etc and still keep it that's a fema violation that's a civil violation so their enforcement directorate of uh, you know fema will take up but the moment if that those money that i took was actually proceeds of crime if it was proceeds of crime then it will go under pmla so the authority here is enforcement directorate ed now any he is a prosecuting authority that is rbi or ed against their order i can go to the adjudicating authority adjudicating authority is the court and this court will be a which, which will definitely have a chairman who is high court judge and around 2 to 3 members generally two members who will be co district court judge district court judge now against their order i can appeal generally everywhere it is appellate tribunal is only one person only in fema two people i can either go to special director appeals or i can go to appellate tribunal my choice i can go to special director appeals or i can go to appellate tribunal if i go to special director appeals within how many days 45 days within 45 days i have to go to special director appeals and he will of course dispose it off and there is no time limit given and again if i am not happy with his uh, what do you say his decision i can again appeal to appellate tribunal or i can directly go to appellate tribunal now the question is why will i go to special director appeals and i can directly go to appellate tribunal very simple if you are directly go to appellate tribunal you have to deposit the full penalty amount that is the reason if i am going to if uh, rbi or ed has told penalty 5 crores 
I said I don't agree. Okay, you can go to appellate tribunal. Appellate tribunal first says deposit 5 crores. If I don't have money or if I don't want to do it, I can go to special director appeals. That's the reason. It is more time consuming, but at least you don't have to pay money. On the other hand, you can also go to appellate tribunal. They will ask you to deposit 5 crore. You can say, sir, I'll only deposit 1 crore and I can give you sufficient reasons. I don't want to go through special director appeals and you know waste your time, my time, everybody's time. I know for sure I have not broken any law, but 5 crores I don't have, sir. I just have 1 crore. Please adjust. So yes, waive. it can be waived if under hardship. Then it will go where? It should be disposed of within 180 days. Appellate tribunal, it will go to High Court on question of law within 60, High Court to Supreme Court. This is the adjudicating. Cool. So we will do which one? FCRA or PMLA? What do you want? PMLA. Okay, we'll start PMLA. Page number? 256. Yes, PMLA important. We have been asking quite a number of times. So, Prevention of Money Laundering Act. Uh, I have made a couple of uh, important charts, combined everything and done it. So, as the name itself suggested, it came way back in 2001 when this 9-11 happened uh, in 2001. And after that, they realized how is it possible that people are getting so much money and, you know, spreading terrorism across. So, there has to be some way where they will launder money. So, this is how they figured it out. There are three processes of money laundering, placement, layering and integration. The placement is uh, small deposits of money. That's what happened as I told you, November 8th, 2016 to 31st December. They started depositing 30,000 crore through employees, employees, uh, spouses, employees, children, normal uh, casual labor workforce also. They opened their accounts and started doing all these things. So, it was absurd that how is this possible that there are two things here. One is black money, one is illegal money. Black money is what? Not, not you know, where tax has not been paid. That's called black money. Whereas illegal money is proceeds of crime. The most important thing to note here is the proceeds of crime. So anything that you do, proceeds of crime is the most important thing. And that crime, proceeds of crime also is actually... Uh, across various things. It's not just one single, uh, what do you say, legislation. It is not one single piece of legislation. Okay, it's already there. It's basically part of a scheduled offense. It basically, it is part of a scheduled offense. So, a law was created where they said, I will create a schedule and all the offenses in this schedule will be taken into account. And if you are convicted under any of these offenses, then PMLA will get attracted. The important thing to note here is, these are all offenses under various laws. You have Indian Penal Code here, then you have uh, NDPS, then you have, you know, Explosive Substances Act like that. So, the beauty is, just like a derivative instrument, the value is derived from an asset. Here, PMLA offense is derived from some other law, correct? So, all that in the schedule. So, such offences, they can ask this in the exam, this word, don't get confused, such offence is called predicate offence. Predicate offence. What do you mean by a predicate offence? So, it is derived from something else. It's actually an English word in the normal English grammar, subject, verb, uh, subject and predicate. So, subject and predicate. So, subject is, you know, he uh, loves swimming. So, he is a subject, loves swimming, where there is a verb and a you know, the another form of the verb, whatever it is, and the gerund, swimming. So, this is also called as predicate. So, what they are trying to tell is, when I use the word predicate offense, they are trying to tell it is always secondary. Primary thing is already in that particular law. So, if you are convicted in that law, automatically you will be convicted under PMLA. So, there is no need for you to again, you know, convict you. But I just need to see whether that money that you have got is proceeds of crime is what we need to see. So, many, many definitions also are amended, deadly changes were made. You see, money laundering is the process of converting illegal or black money into legal or white money, process used by criminals to wash their tainted money. It's called washing. That's why it is laundering. Laundering is derived from the word laundry. It was started way, way back by a guy called Al Capone. He was one Don. 
in Mexico and in USA. So he started using these laundromats. He opened laundry and he said, today 100 people came. One person also didn't come. They said 100 people came. Converted all the black money by creating fake bills. If you have watched Breaking Bad, there's a show called Breaking Bad, one of the most you know legendary shows. There he also does the same thing. He you know creates you know laundromats, car wash, all those things. So car wash etc. You will not know what to do. Hotels also they create to create fake bills. That see these many people came. Okay. If you see all these big shots have hotels. All cricketers will have hotels, restaurants. Now you know why. This is one of the part of the thing is to wash the money, clean the money. So they will do that so that everybody, most of them will have restaurants. When you have restaurants, you can clean money. So if there are 1000 people who came today, I can show 2000, who cares? So you can do this to clean the money and they do it to rotate money. It is a business which has been done. Process by used by criminals to wash their tainted money to make it clean is what they say. Prevention of Money Laundering Act is to prevent money laundering and to provide confiscation of property derived from or involved in money laundering. What is the offense of money laundering? See the entire money laundering thing came, it keeps on coming usually but uh, it all started, that's why this is just the basics. So it all started well, to just give an example where you hide all your uh, you know uh, income you will hide everything and then you will start making a lot of money so the concept if you understand other things becomes very easy so what is this let's see offense of money laundering whosoever directly or indirectly attempts to indulge or knowingly assess or knowingly is a party or is actually involved in any process or activity connected with the proceeds of crime including its concealment possession acquisition or use projecting it or claiming it as untainted that's the best part though it is tainted it has a stain it has a stain of proceeds of crime you're showing it as untainted so there are many questions that arise which completely is cleaned by the act now there was one doubt i committed a crime let's say i killed somebody i got some money with that money i bought a house is that house proceeds of crime okay that house i gifted to my son my son started giving it on rent that rent is proceeds of crime. This was a doubt actually. Like this many things ca happened. I committed one offense, I got a car. That car that fellow gifted to his daughter. Daughter like that luxury car fleet she made and she started giving it out on rent. What about the rentals that she got? Is it proceeds of crime? Many, many court judgments said no. Many, many court judgments said yes. Nirmala madam changed everything. She said if you continue to enjoy the proceeds, However, it may be directly or indirectly, it is still proceeds of crime. So, even the rental income that you derive from that house is what? Proceeds of crime. Deadly. Right? So, that's what? Recently, only all these changes have come. Two, three years ago, that's it. That is quite recent because it's, uh, this law has not been touched since a long time. Recently, they have changed many things. After 2016, actually, the Black Money Act came, Unregulated Deposits Act, then the, uh, what is that? Uh, Income disclosures came after that thing. This one, what do you see? The uh, black money and undeclared deposit, deposits done, which the other one, uh, Fugitive Economic Offenders. Fugitive Economic Offenders Act also came in 2018, all after demonetization. And everything is revolving over this. PMLA also is linked to all these things. So, what are the types of questions that come? First is this What do you mean by proceeds of crime? So, just the basics we'll do, then more analysis after the break. Whosoever, directly or indirectly, Attempts to indulge. Attempts to indulge means you know that you are doing it. Knowingly or unknowingly. Knowingly asset, uh, assists. When I say knowingly, then there is a criminal bent of mind. Mens rea. Or knowingly is a party. Or is actually involved in a process or activity. And this was added. Past activity or continuing activity. Connected with what? Proceeds of crime. Proceeds of crime and what is this proceeds of crime? It will include possession, concealment, acquisition and use. Anyone who enjoys the proceeds of crime also is liable under PMLA. Anybody who enjoys the proceeds of crime also is liable under PMLA. Proceeds of crime. Proceeds of crime is what they say. So including possession, concealment, acquisition, use. Possession, concealment, acquisition use. Also, anyone who enjoys the proceeds of crime, same thing. Proceeds of crime means what? Property. 
derived or obtained directly or indirectly by any person doing a criminal activity. So, that criminal activity is what is given in the scheduled offence. That scheduled offence is also what is called as predicate offence. Part A, Part B, Part C. Part B, value should be more than 1 crore. More than 1 crore. And what is that Part B? Actually, Part B is nothing. Part B is only in Customs Act. Here, this is Part B. False declaration under Customs Act. Only one item is there. False declaration, false documentation under Customs Act is called as Part B. So, if you declare falsely to the tune of more than 1 crore, then you will be committing an offence under Part B. So, under this false declaration you make, false documents you give 50 lakhs worth, you will be charged under Customs Act, not under PMLA. Right? So, in uh, Customs Act you make false documentation more than 1 crore, you will be charged there also, also in PMLA. Part number C, if you see, is part number A only, no change, but you see cross-border implications. So, it is beyond the border. It is not just here, you are committing an offence outside India also. That is why you see, they have also given that black money, undisclosed foreign income and assets and imposition of tax act. One is unregulated deposits act, then black money act also. Black money, undisclosed foreign income and assets and imposition of tax act 2015. If you are made to evade any tax outside India, undisclosed income, everywhere, cross-border implications, part C. So, basically part B is only customs, part C is cross-border implications of part A and this uh, Black Money Act. Part A is the main deal, all these are proceeds of crime. So, anything that you can see here is proceeds of crime, it can be anything for that matter. So, if you see, I will just come to that after the break, I will show you all the examples. So, basically here, that is what they are trying to tell, it includes also what, enjoying the proceeds of crime projecting or claiming it to be untainted property. You are claiming that the property is clean. Now, that is the problem. It is, is that person is guilty of what? Money laundering. That person will be guilty of money laundering. Property can be any deeds or instrument. Property can be movable or immovable. Property can be tangible or intangible also. So, property can be, first one, corporeal. What do you mean by corporeal, guys? living. So, what I am trying to tell is, can you uh, have anything which is living, which is a property? Yes. So, basically, you would have seen many, many uh, cases, you would have seen many, many cases during the course of the, uh, you know, when you are checking the, uh, one second, I will show you one example now, you will understand that. You see, in one particular case, for the first in time in India, chimpanzee was being smuggled and chimpanzee became a property. Obviously, property corporeal, incorporeal. Corporeal means what? Living. So, you are proceeds of crime. Crime should be committed on the property. What is the property here? Chimpanzee. Chimpanzee in West Bengal, in one of the zoos, that fellow was trying to poach the chimpanzees and the enforcement directorate, ED, Attaches, see attachment of property, what property here? Chimpanzee. So, attaches chimpanzees, marmoset under money laundering probe, which is one of the first times in India that happened. So, property can be anything. Now, this, whatever he did, whatever he did now, first of all, is it a scheduled offence? Is it a scheduled offence? That also we need to check. All offences need not be scheduled offence. He committed an offence, I understand, but is it a scheduled offence? What do you think? Yes. Under which law? Wildlife Protection Act. So, basically, obviously, if you see the schedule, there is, of course, you know, Wildlife Protection Act also covered. NDPS, Unlawful Prevention Activities, Arms Act, Wildlife Protection Act, hunting of wild animals. So, what Salman Khan did is what? Hunting of wild animals. Now, tell me, hunting of wild animals and consuming the meat, is it proceeds of crime? This also was a doubt. I did not sell I just consumed. Yeah, that is why that word is very important. Enjoying the proceeds of crime. Enjoying the benefits of the, you know, proceeds of crime. That is what, enjoying, means. I ate, I enjoyed. So, yes, that is also definitely there. So, what this fellow did, he killed the animal. 
So basically, and of course, whether he consumed whatever it is, that is proceeds of crime. But people generally sell the, you know, uh, bones, sell the uh, tusks of elephants, etc. All these things definitely are proceeds of crime. But even consumption, until now, there was always doubt. Even consumption now is what? Proceeds of crime. So it depends on the facts of the case. Everything, specified plants, trophy, trophy animals, animal articles and all. So that is the meaning of what? Coming back to this, that's the meaning of corporeal or incorporeal, tangible or intangible. Corporeal living, incorporeal, non-living, like that. So, after the break, we will go more in-depth into each of these items and most importantly, we will see, basically in the exam, this I think number 22 only they asked, right? And uh, reporting entity, we have been asking in MCQ and all those things, everything we will do. And most important chart actually in my opinion is this one, that is the attachment chart, this one. Combined reading of attachment, we will do that. We have to spend some time guys, PMLA they are asking now properly, so let's not hurry up, we will do it properly and then F FCRA and then we will close. Tea, coffee. Alright guys, let's begin. <coughs> so we were doing this, uh, which one, yeah. Property derived or obtained directly or indirectly, corporeal or incorporeal. One second, there are a couple of things. One second. Cool. So all this. Proceeds of crime. So, what are the proceeds of crime? So, if you see the various provisions of law, proceeds of crime, first one, they talk about the, uh, what do you say? And, okay, before that, one second. If you see this entire thing, can I also take away the property, which is, what do you say? There, not in India, but outside India also, can I take? If you see offense of money, uh, money laundering, Offense of money laundering, will it also include anything which is outside India? So, it depends on proceeds of crime. Proceeds of crime, will it include in India or outside India? Both. So, if you see, that's why all these small, small amendments had come recently. Where property is taken or held outside the country, then the property equivalent in value held within the country or which is held abroad. So, as you can see, slowly they are, this was inserted in 2018. So, like that over the past few years, there have been quite a few changes in this entire definition. Where such property is taken or held outside the country, then the property equivalent in value held within the country or held abroad, that also is taken into consideration. So, if you see, proceeds of crime means anything. So, this uh, Vijay Malaya's property was, you know, taken from all the cars, etc., which he owned, was actually confiscated from Bangalore and other parts of the country, though it was a value which was uh, derived from India and outside India also. Other property also was taken into account. So, you see some of the uh, other examples of uh, money laundering, so to speak, uh, is, of course, yeah, not this, sorry, one second. So, of course, in the Narcotic Drug and Psychotropic Substances Act, so you, you keep on seeing these things which come. So, 60 houses checked and 38 foreigners found staying without valid or expired documents and they found all these drugs on them. Apart from that, of course, you see Dunzo Delivery Service, they, they, what? they were transporting snakes also. So these snakes are what? Uh, sand boa, it's called a two-headed snake. Literally, two heads won't be there. It's called two-headed snake. So, that sand boa that was prohibited under the Wildlife Protection Act, that also was, what do you say, uh, taken over. Then, if you see, can you smuggle gold, etc. This fellow in Kerala tried, poor guy. Yeah, he tonsured his head and put one gold biscuit there and on that he put one more, but he was caught. So, all these things are money laundering. You are charged under some other offence, but predicate offence is in India. So, it is all part of money laundering, so to speak, this I will tell. And of course, these are the things uh, that, you know, uh, are important. Uh, apart from this, apart from this, uh, one thing that you have to see to believe it, this is also, you check. Mysore CA arrested for growing ganja on Austerets. So, 62 year old, 62 year old chartered accountant was arrested for growing ganja or 
marijuana plants on the terrace and backyard of his house so if you see all these are examples practical example this is the picture correct so somebody will take them to the garden how oh, you feeling i'm feeling high yeah. <laughs> the second floor i'm feeling high yeah feeling so nice man down it was so boring here and so on. so that is what half kg ganja see, uh, 20 hookahs and all was there imagine and acting on a tip of and 6000 cash on the accused jagannath this is his name c a jagannath so jag means ka, entire world nath means the leader of the world right? no wonder right so acting on a tip off this what happened so if you see accused might have started illegal business 20 years ago only after his wife divorced him uh, yes no children and he was living alone though there were no customers at his house during the raid police suspect that he used to allow customers to smoke weed at his residence at large number of hookahs and also were there students of a nearby private college unfortunately they are the customers so if you see here earlier he was mentoring ca students and he was teaching hindu undivided joint family yeah, all that, yeah, that's all. he was teaching all that yeah joint family he was teaching all that how to do how to tax how to tax and all that but after his wife divorce number of students also went down now full dot why were they coming there yeah. but that was the question so also he was a ganja smoker himself is what they said anyway so this they are taken him see this now you will understand remanded him in judicial custody so now court after that all in inquiry investigation they have taken him to the judicial custody now tell me so if you see your uh, understanding the provisions using that example which is practical yes attempt to indulge of course that ca jagannath knowingly assist so there are other drug peddlers also in and around they knowingly assisted him and uh, knowingly are part actually involved what about students yes they are also part of the money laundering thing apart from the property which is used or connected with proceeds of crime one scooter he used inside that all that weed etc you had put what about the scooter that is also proceeds of crime everything will be wiped out what about that house yes if house is owned by him that also will be taken into account all the hookah that uh, 20 hookah shishas that he has that also will be all proceeds of crime that the deadly it is everything will be taken over by the enforcement directorate corporeal incorporeal tangible intangible movable immovable deeds instruments all these things will be taken into account punishment under this money laundering is very simple here punishment this they had asked in number 22 but they can ask they had asked part b or something or they, may, they have asked this one of the two they can keep asking this punishment has come so many times if it is part two of narcotic drug and psychotropic substances most deadliest aryan khan was about to get under this one is ndps and his pmla but they could not prove that he had any proceeds of crime as such because he was the drugs were not on him but he was there among other people so three out of ten years rigorous imprisonment this is the key word rigorous rigorous means what you will be made to work there morning till evening you will have to work then fine any limit otherwise it is three to seven years first is three to ten otherwise it is three to seven years fine will be any limit there are two of part a narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances and the other one is other so that's the punishment so if they ask you anything regarding money laundering what see this is a combined chart of money laundering proceeds of crime property and scheduled offense everything is covered in this property means this is the definition of property proceeds of crime means this is the definition of proceeds of crime and money laundering is basically everything attempt to indulge knowingly assist knowingly is a party actually involved is all they say then the reporting entity basically now everything comes under the control of fiu financial intelligence unit so fiu you have to report to them rigorously all banks everybody uh, not just banks what about stock broker not the stock broker what about any jewelry shop everybody has to report to fiu otherwise dangerous provisions for them also uh, it is going to be a problem for them also later when they are uh, seeing so let us see let us just uh, invert this provision and check it out one second financial intelligence unit so reporting thing also there are so many provisions i have compressed everything into this one chart so if you study this and go it should be sufficient
so nothing to worry they should be sufficient one second i need to invert that that's the problem so let's see one second reload cool so this is the uh, reporting entities report to fiu that is financial intelligence unit so all these companies should report reporting entities what are those companies first one banking company under 21e that can be a bank cooperative bank or any bank as per section 51 of the banking regulation act they have to uh, obviously report everything every transaction that comes into it they have to report there will be some anti money laundering guidelines as per the guidelines they need to report so the guidelines will be that suddenly from the average balance suddenly 10 times extra if you have got then you need to report will it be high value items or less items no less that's happened to me when i was in article ship my stipend was 1000 so 1000 1500 one my dad had taken some life insurance policy so lic or something they gave me the money because i knew i was doing ca i already did so there's no point of you know giving me separate money later life insurance not needed so they released 20000 That's all. One one thousand, one thousand was there. Suddenly twenty thousand they released. I got a call from Canada Bank Anti Money Laundering Squad, saying that sir, average balance is one thousand. Twenty times it has come. How? Please explain. So I had to send them the documentation of the life insurance and all those things. Imagine. So they know high value items. It is very it, red flags will be there. So they will check these low level items. So average bank balance into five times. Or into ten times, if it is there, it triggers. They'll call you. So all those will go without our knowledge. It will go to the FIU and Income Tax Department. Also has everything. One of my seniors works in the uh, Central Processing Center in you know CPC Bangalore. He tells you breathe. That will be recorded there in the Income Tax Department. Everything that you do, they know. They just not acting on it. they are just not acting on it every detail they have correct so that's why this ais also came everything their information system you are then you are reporting all these things so going forward anything because everything now if you see it's linked to your phone number right everything aadhar and phone everything is linked so the moment you do anything they will get to know and they say they have abundant data they are just not using it so they are just letting you go so if you feel that okay this time your uh, you know income tax you know the return got processed quickly they said nothing doing they have all the data they are just not acting on it the day they feel that they should start you know looking at these things they will you know open the proceedings so that's what he was telling me because there are the excellent data that's why they paid so much money to infosys right to get this robust system up and running so financial institution Financial institution also, as per 45 AC of RBI Act, includes chit fund company, housing finance company, authorized person, 2C of FMA, payment system operator, NBFC, and Department of Posts. All these things we have to keep in mind. Person that is operator, payment system includes overseas principal. For example, PayPal, etc. All these things. This they had asked once. Payment system four marks. what do you mean by payment system payment system is anything that enables payment between the payer and the beneficiary it will include what credit card operations debit card operations money transfer operations smart card operations all your paytm phone pay cc even etc and also overseas principal means what paypal so individual hf company firm aop boi individual individual outside india hf karta outside india company firm aop boi registered person outside india owns controls manages the payment system in india anybody who owns controls manages the payment system in india that is the same thing all those people will be taken into account so financial institution 21e financial institution as per 45 ic of the rbi act it includes all these people intermediary intermediary registered by pension fund regulatory authority stock exchange nsc bsc association under forward contract regulation act next stock broker that is banker to an issue trustee all these people registered to an issue merchant banker all these people should take it into account then person carrying on designated business or profession casino game of chance so all the casinos in goa delton royal and all these people they have to report 
Registrar or sub-registrar, real estate agent. Real estate agent whose turnover is more than or equal to 20 lakhs per annum. This is almost all real estate agents. So they also have to report any transaction. And also dealer in precious stones. This, they, these are all new provisions yet to come. Right? Dealer in precious stones and metals, cash transaction, single or linked transaction, more than or equal to 10 lakhs with effect from 28-11-2020. If there's a single transaction or a linked transaction, cash transaction, more than 10 lakhs, all this I have to uh, do the needful is what they are trying to tell. These are all, you know, we have to do the needful. This is what reporting entity is all about. Next, moving on. Uh, duties of reporting entity. Duties of reporting entity. Section 12. Maintenance of records. Transactions. Maintain a record of all the transactions furnished to the director of FIU. All the information and you should verify the identity of the clients also. This is what the reporting entity should do and documents have to be maintained. Now in MCQ they can ask you how many years should you maintain these documents for? Five years. Transactions rather, five years. What if the business is closed down? From the date of closure, five years. And that is, shall be maintained for a period of five years after the business relationship between the client and reporting entity has ended or the account has been closed, whichever is later. Both the cases. Access to information, director FIU to call for any of the above records or any additional information as he considers necessary. Then verification. Now, this is one new thing again. Again, in MCQ, they can ask you. The reporting entity will verify the identity of clients through Aadhaar authentication. Aadhaar authentication. Notified reporting entity, which has the responsibility of Aadhaar authentication, is the National Payments Corporation of India. National Payments Corporation of India. Then offline verification also will be there. Then passport issued under Section 4 of the Passports Act. Use of any other official valid document or modes of identification as may be notified, all these things. So, this NPCI, National Payments Corporation of India, will be the main other authentication thing. Enhanced due diligence. So, every reporting entity shall, for every specified transaction, verify the identity of the clients through Aadhaar. If Aadhaar is not mandatory for the person, then authentication to be done in some other prescribed manner. Take additional steps to examine the ownership and financial position. No specified transaction can take place if verification is not done. So, this is extra thing, 12AA. They can also do it through Aadhaar with the proper verification system. The prescription, the prescribed things has not yet come. However, this, these rules that I am showing you, they are not part of your syllabus, it's part of 6D, but institute can give it in MCQ because institute now says all regulations are there. But these regulations specifically are there for 6D as such, but don't take risk, just go through this, very simple it is. What all you should uh, disclose? Maintenance of records, nature and value, how much? All cash transactions more than 10 lakhs or it's equivalent in foreign currency. All series of cash transactions integrally connected, 10 lakhs or its equivalent. All transactions involving receipt by non-profit organizations of value more than rupees, 10 lakhs. All cash transactions where forged or counterfeit currency or banknotes have been used as genuine or where any forgery or valuable security has taken place. All cross-border wire transfers of the value of more than 5 lakh rupees or its equivalent in foreign currency. Basically, only this cross-border wire transfer is 5 lakh. Everything else is 10 lakh. Then purchase and sale of immovable property, 50 lakhs or more. So, if you are doing 50 lakhs or more, then all these reporting entities will have to report all these transactions. So, everything is 10 lakhs except cross-border wire transfer, 5 lakh. Only that you remember. And your immovable property is 50 lakhs. Then the director FIU will make an inquiry into all these things. So, this question also was asked in the exam for 4 marks at least 2 to 3 times. Uh, what is the power of the director to impose fine? First, he will make an inquiry with regard to the obligations of the reporting entity. So, on his own motion or an application made by any authority, officer or person, he will make an inquiry requesting the reporting entity why you have not submitted any document yet. 
then I will audit the records. Director may direct the concerned reporting entity to get its record audited by a panel of accountants maintained by central government. Expenses to be borne by CG. Then non-compliance. Director FIU will inquire if no cooperation from reporting. They will inquire as to why you have not given any documentation despite asking and I will get the books audited. If you have not done any of these things first, they will give a warning. Then I will direct you to comply with the provisions. Third, I will send reports. I will direct you to send the reports immediately. Then penalty. Director or employee. This penalty, if possible, try to remember. 10,000 rupees to 1 lakh for each failure. Mind you, each failure. No civil or criminal liability for not furnishing information. No civil or criminal liability for not furnishing information. First, there is a warning. Second, direct them to comply. Third one, direct them to send reports. Fourth one is a penalty. So, director, employee, 10,000 to 1 lakh each failure. No civil or criminal liability for not furnishing information. For not furnishing any information. So, this is one thing. What are the things that the director will do? First one, he will give a warning. Second, he will direct them to comply with the provisions. Third, he will direct them to send reports. Fourth, if you don't do it, penalty. Other type of question that comes in PMLA would be attachment of property related stuff. Attachment of property plus adjudication plus confiscation. So, everything basically is given here in this uh, master chart. So, if you read this chart, it is more than sufficient. So, this chart is uh, sufficient compliance for us to understand. So, all the three sections are actually covered in this particular chart. So, the uh, section actually is uh, section 5 and 8 both combined. So, let us see how it is. First of all, before going here, if you understand what do you mean by provisional attachment? Uh, what do you mean by provisional attachment? So, basically here, provisional attachment. So, before that, they will also ask you relating to search and uh, seizure. Let's quickly understand that also. Uh, so, that, you know, that will also be clear, that part. Just a sec. Survey, search and seizure. So, section 6 is, 16, sorry, is about Authority authorized by anyone who has the right to enter material in his position if he has reason to believe and reasons recorded in writing. Then section 3 is activated. That person in the course of his search, he can enter any place, furnish information, check and verify proceeds of crime, place will be the way, where the place of activity is happening or any other place. Now, what they are trying to tell is one dangerous part here. Section 16 and 17 of PMLA. So, 16 is about power of survey. So, when I am during this course, if I feel that, you know, I have to, at, you know, uh, inspect the accounts and enter and search. I can do that under section 17. During the survey, this 16 is linked to 17 then. If I feel that evidence is likely to be concealed or tampered, I can record reasons and I can also seize the document. Whatever document you have, I can definitely seize. So, 17 is where I have reason to believe and material in my possession and any person has committed money laundering. So, for example, that uh, CA Jagannath case. Committed money laundering, 62 year old CA uncle, I can search him or seize all the property. Possession of proceeds of crime, drug peddlers employed by him. All the records of money laundering, accountant or assistant who assisted the CA uncle. Then, possession of property, scooter used for drug peddling and shisha used for inhalation. All these things, all these things I can seize is what they are trying to tell. The best part or the worst part, so to speak, if you see section 17. Should I take permission of the court or can I just enter? So, guys, one more Nirmala Madam's change here. See, 
omitted by finance act what permission the entire permission has been omitted this again is in the supreme court as we speak deeming it to be unconstitutional this has given incredible powers to the officers and they are giving fake cases like this somebody doesn't like somebody and that officer is somebody's friend they will go and tell just go do a raid without any head or tail they will say i have reason to believe yesterday i got dream reason to believe so i will now what do you say enter your uh, premises dangerous it is then i can also search the person also i can search any person sees any record i can do anything that is possible dangerous provisions and what whatever i see is material i take i will in a sealed envelope give it to the double a that is adjudicating authority and then i can also arrest the person if need be and within 24 hours i can detain the person basically and 24 hours produce him before the court all these things i can either take so for example the dunzo guy when snake you found the snake there before asking the dunzo guy dunzo guy can say sir i will not speak i will speak only in front of the magistrate he will not know but generally anybody if you arrest now before that you can tell that i want to speak before the magistrate not before you so then in that case if he make such a requisition within 20 i can detain him and within 24 hours i have to produce him before the magistrate who will record the reasons properly so this is one more provision which is there otherwise section 19 is arrest arrest with two witnesses so the problem with this is here you see first is what this section adjudication if i have seized any property under 17 and 18 that's what we did now it will go to the adjudicating authority or if i have made a provisional attachment under section 5 what do you mean by provisional attachment so yeah temporarily if i have attached anything temporarily if i have attached anything provisional attachment under section 5 so property which was already provisionally attached so i will go to a particular place and see their provisional attachment so that is section 5 but interesting to know under section 5 attachment of property provisional attachment temporary here also where a director not below the ranks or and so he feels that there is any proceeds of crime he may by order in writing provisionally attach such property for not exceeding 180 days that is what is given in the previous thing if you see here provisional attachment reasons in writing if you see director or any other officer reasons in reason to believe recorded in writing material in his possession that he feels that it is uh, you know i have to provisionally attach the property then he can do so that's why we had to do that to understand and here how many days i can provisionally attach 180 days 180 days i can provisionally attach that is the precursor to this so one i have already seized in seizure no permission needed as discussed provisional attachment you should uh, take, give a letter to the magistrate both these cases will lie between the before the adjudicating authority that is what i am trying to tell that's why we explained history of 1718 and section 5 both parallelly it goes 1718 unfettered powers you can do whatever you want then section 5 both it goes to the adjudicating authority reason to believe reason to believe that the usage of property which is provisionally attached seized or frozen there is something called freezing of assets also seizure is taking over the possession of the goods freezing means what i enter a ship ship belongs to you enter a vessel i can't seize the vessel so what will i do i will freeze the assets i will put a lock saying that nobody should enter without permission yes bank records everything that also will be seize bank locker things stuff kept in the bank locker there's confidentiality but i can seize the locker also and it's uh, uh, you know whatever is there inside so all these things can be done there are huge powers given for this particular inspector under pmla so that's what one is seizure route one more is provisional attachment route provisional list is temporary if i have reason to believe that whatever i have provisionally attached seized or frozen or and there is existence of proceeds of crime in my opinion i will give you 30 days to show cause as to why there were the sources of 
income show me your sources of income or earnings and then why it should not be confiscated why it should not be confiscated why it should not be confiscated and then i will make an order basically i am trying to tell tell me why i should not confiscate the same so the thing is if you have not received any reply so first whatever was provisionally attached will first now be attached so temporary attachment will become I mean, little permanent attachment whereby i will now seize all the documents take more control over the same when it is provisionally attached you can still use the goods you can still you know be with the goods whatever it is but the moment it is attached then they will come and take over the property the records were seized or frozen will now how many days will it be attached see provisional attachment is 180 days that is different final attachment this during the entire investigation attachment will be done because investigation would have started correct first when i have a doubt what will i do provisional attachment then when i give you a show cause notice and you don't give me any reply what will i do or any satisfactory reply what will i do attach when i attach investigation will begin and how long can it be attached don't write 180 year how long 365 days 365 days it can be attached or if there is any court case pending etc until it is over i can do it till that time also what if they you bring about a stay order when i am about to attach you will bring about a stay order stay order also is excluded you bring about 4 months stay order i will do 365 days plus 4 months 365 days plus 4 months pending proceeding court whether it's india or abroad whatever the case may be all these uh, until such time attachment will happen so i repeat guys first is normal unfettered power under seizure then under attach provisional attachment provisionally i would have attached for 180 plus 180 but if i have reason to believe that this provisional attachment property seized property etc is proceeds of crime i'll give you a show cause for you to give me a reply as to why it should not be attached and eventually confiscated you don't give me anything so i will open my investigation and then attach well attachment how how long will i attach for 365 days and during that attachment i will now continue with what the investigation and now director will now take possession of the goods because from provisional attachment has gone to attachment and then it will go to special court special court investigation will go on now that's what if the special court orders confiscation and that same property is in ibc also what to do maybe this is what happened in rotomac vikram kotari's all assets were lying with the company when I mean, that is the rotomac company's uh, thing was their assets were there the special court said i want to attach everything i want to confiscate everything rotomac their liquidator said no i will not allow went to supreme court supreme court said both should be seen hand in hand but now 32a has come and destroyed everything as per 32a even if special court has confiscated ibc will override this one pmla which will definitely go to court something will be struck down we have to wait and watch so director to take possession director to take possession of the entire thing and special court if it is not proven that there is money laundering then it will be released but if it is proven that it is used for money laundering then it will happen what confiscation the moment it is confiscated ownership now rests with central government and whatever you do nothing can be done it is free from all encumbrances encumbrance means charges nobody will have any right over it but now unfortunately subject to 32a subject to 32a because of that now that entire house etc all that is there house belongs to somebody else or that bike belongs to somebody else see uncle example bike belongs to somebody else and that has been unfortunately attached seized and now confiscated also that guy will come and beg sir i thought this was teacher he was teaching something else i didn't know he was a chartered accountant he said give lend me your bike for some days i had one bike sir so i gave him i really did not know he was doing all these things 
he has to prove to the satisfaction of the court that he was genuine and he had no idea about that then what do you think you will will they give you that bike they may is what the law says not even shall may so special court may tell the cg to restore to the person who has in good faith has legitimate interest in the property which has been confiscated for example bike and was actually suffered loss and is not at all involved in any way not at all involved in any way special court will consider the claim during the trial may consider may consider the claim during the trial too that's the amendment they may consider okay maybe fine let's see they'll release the property this property belongs to you take it you have to prove your ownership though and also prove that you had nothing to do with it only then they may do so this is again one more important chart this is provisional attachment 180 days and here also stay order etc will be taken excluded one more amendment came in this in that 180 days 30 days from the date of conclusion of stay order also won't be counted this is for court delays stay order is excluded today do you think the court will release it today only no it will take 5 6 days it may take 10 days if when holiday season is there 15 days so that 30 days is also added excluded from that one basically stay order is let's say for 6 months so your 180 days will be 180 days plus 6 months plus 30 days plus 30 days plus 30 days so that is one more point here so apart from that what else is there let's see then they will speak about the adjudicating authority here the adjudicating authority is whenever i say double a adjudicating other who is the uh, adjudicating authority here it is the chairperson and two members one member will have account law administration finance or accountancy other person a, uh, a person or shall not be qualified for appointment as member of adjudicating authority in the field of law unless he is qualified for appointment as district judge or he has been a member of the indian legal service the jurisdiction of the adjudicating authority may be exercised by benches thereof bench may be constituted by the chairperson of the adjudicating authority with one or two members the benches of the adjudicating authority shall ordinarily sit at new delhi and such other places transfer of member transfer of cases all that the chairman feels it can keep on changing the main bench is at new delhi but there will be multiple benches across the country special court is nothing but a criminal court guys a criminal court only will be designated as a special court a sessions court civil court is normal civil court sessions court is criminal court they will hear multiple criminal cases across various laws but a criminal court which is designated as special court under pmla will only hear pmla cases that's why it's called as a special court so main bench will be in delhi many other benches can be there across the country term of office chairperson and every member 5 years maximum age limit 65 years i don't understand the point of these questions but institute will ask this who cares whether the chairman dies at 63 64 he lives by no one cares but nobody will know also but they are asking this in the exam right filling of vacancies appoint another person resignation from office yes until the expiry of 3 months from the date of receipt of such notice or until a person is duly appointed whichever is earliest that is what it is so unfortunately one more question that they have asked which i'll see which i'll show you appellate tribunal yes these are the only parties here guys one adjudicating authority then appellate tribunal then it will obviously directly go to the high court special court will be for confiscation and other things appellate is actually adjudicating appellate tribunal then directly will go to the high court but this is the hierarchy which is there anyway what are the powers of the civil court same they are the powers of the civil court summoning and posing evidence receiving evidence issuing commissions and all these things so this is you can go to this nothing at this they are all this we studied one deadly bouncer they asked once three people i mean two people were hearing the case on pmla both of them started fighting what to do yes so chairman will come into the picture 
this was four mark question if a member of a bench consisting of two members differ in opinion on any point they shall state the point make a reference to the chairman so either here the points himself refer the case for a third member so three members will decide then so one for one against the third will obviously be a deciding vote and it will be decided by majority of the members of the appellate tribunal who have heard the case including those who first heard it then appeal to the high court will file an appeal to the high court within 60 days on question of law and fact and high court also can pardon if i am going beyond 60 days also they can pardon so who will be the main person in the uh, you know special court central government in consultation with the chief justice for trial of offences they can designate one or more criminal court as special court jurisdiction of all these things will be part of that if the same offences basically that offence for example ndps case one ndps case is happening in one court ndps pmla is happening here is it a joint trial no trial of both the sets of offences by the same court shall not be considered as joint trial similarly the same guy is being tried in the same special court for some other offence which is a pmla offence only is it a joint trial no each case will be separate each case will be separate but now coming to the most deadliest point again section 45 same copy paste as 212 212 subsection 6 this was where in 2018 or 19 there was one case law where rowington f nariman the same person said it is unconstitutional what happened was in uh, for example in wildlife protection act the amount was imprisonment was let's say 2 years and bail was easily you know you can get bail but the same offense in pmla because even though it's a predicate offense here they are telling you should first prove your innocence same dialogue see prove your innocence reasonable grounds for believing that he is not guilty you have to prove your innocence under this section you have to prove your innocence and here following can be released on bail based on direction of special court without following the above points is an exception to the above point what the same thing one is 16 years woman sick or infirm fourth one no sick woman no fourth one fourth one fourth one is what fourth one you see this is the amendment guys if accused done what in a, if accused either on his own or along with the other co accused is accused of money laundering sum of how much 1 crore rupees less than 1 crore rupees less than 1 crore rupees this is the thing uh, how much money will you will they telling 1 crore this is important guys you have to remember if the amount is less than 1 crore i can let you out on bail no problem normal rule no need to prove your uh, your innocence you just have to tell that you are not a flight risk you have to prove that you can you should promise to come and keep signing every week and all those things the accused is either on his own or along with other co accused is accused of money laundering sum of less than 1 crore rupees this is okay. no nobody can release that's what what happened was that's what coming to that thing now can anybody release these people on bail these people of course you can release but what about the other people here no that's what this supreme court said not possible i mean supreme court said this entire section 45 is not at all constitutional and one deadly amendment has come which they have not asked till now guys they have not asked this amendment so here an explanation was added this was to strike down that supreme court judgment in 2019 only it came but still they have not asked this in the exam they have told because the judgment said one offense will be somewhere uh, in ndps or in other laws it is nothing but here you know you are charging so much why but then you see the removal of doubts it is hereby clarified that the exp expression offences to be cognizable and non bailable 
Rowington F. Nariman's point was the offense under the main act is bailable. Just because it is part of PMLA, you are making it non bailable. How fair is that? It's not fair because underlying of main asset, main offense is bailable. But here you are making it non bailable. So at least there has to be some basis, is what he told. But you see, for the removal of doubts, it is hereby clarified that the expression offense will be cognizable and non bailable shall mean and shall be deemed to have always meant from beginning that all offenses under this act shall be cognizable and non bailable even though something ulta simple words even though something ulta is given in code of criminal procedure and accordingly officers authorized under this act as empowered to arrest anybody without warrant deadly so sorry No, that's what I'm saying. This special court, it's here. It is always meant to be the same. So, that high court power also was struck down by the recent amendment. It is not there in the syllabus, so I'm not doing. So, new amendment has come. Again, I nobody, basically full power is given to whom? Special court. Full power is given to special court. Recently only, Rowington F. Nariman is, no, is retired now. He went to the Mumbai Bar Association and he told that I had released, I had made one nice judgment which is very fair and it's very, very sad because now he's a judge, he's no longer a judge. He can actually freely uh, tell his views. He told that it's very sad that the government struck down my judgment. I'm not sad that they struck down my judgment, but it's actually against the Indian constitution. So one more amendment government has made that is still not appearing in your, uh, in any of those things. So it is not applicable for our exam. Later. So, basically everything power is with whom? The special court. Special court has the power. So, that is what it clearly says. So, offenses are triable by special courts. Ultimately, the bail provisions of the special court, same thing. Nobody is getting bail anymore because you have to prove that you are innocent. So it's a most dangerous thing. Last part, this is very easy. Reciprocal arrangements for assistance. I Can I go to, what do you say, other country? and say, sir, this particular fellow's asset is there, can I take over? Yes, they are trying to do it. That's why Narendra Modi goes and uh, speaks to so many countries, diplomatic relationships, so that tomorrow it will be very easy for us to do. So, for example, they, he went to Malaysia and he was speaking about one guy called Zakir Nayak. So, Zakir Nayak is an Indian. He, in India, he started talking a lot about various religions. So, you would have seen about Jakir Nayak. He had a TV, he had called, he had a channel called Peace TV, Indian televangelist, this fellow. So, he had something called Peace TV. In that, basically, if you have asked any doubts, no, he used to tell, according to this uh, para number 3 of Bhagavad Gita, line number 2, word number 3, I am not joking, check out his uh, videos. Read with what? Bible. Verse number 3, right number 2. Then again, uh, you know, your uh, Quran. So, tell all these things. But then he used to misinterpret the religious scriptures and then slowly entice people or, you know, invoke people, provoke people into doing something. And because of that, actually people listened to him. In India also, they started doing some terrorist activities. And in Bangladesh also, terrorist activities happened. He was the main culprit to Peace TV. And the irony is Peace TV. Yeah. So, then what happened was, that's why he ran away to Malaysia. He is wanted for what? PMLA transaction. He's, he ran away to Malaysia. When Narendra Modi went to Malaysia and met the Malaysian Premier, he said, I want to bring back this guy, you know, Zakir Naik. So, like that. So, Ravi Puchari, there was one Don, underworld Don. So, he also is from Mangalore. So, he, what do you say, was uh, in Senegal and South Africa. They brought him to Bangalore. All this under reciprocal arrangements. You can do that. Then this guy, Nirav Modi, was found in UK. Somebody, uh, you know, identified him. He was wearing a, you know, jacket, where, you know, which was of an ostrich skin. Ostrich skin. Almost some 25, 30 lakhs worth of jacket. He was living in a house, which is almost uh, 20 lakhs per month rent. Right, imagine, he has duped the banks of 7,000, 8,000 crores and is chilling there. 
So that ostrich skin also, they said, I want now to take over all the assets of Nirav Modi. They are still trying. Vijay Malya also, they are still trying. Vijay Malya openly told, I did not do anything. King Pisha did. Solomon versus Solomon. Right? He had the audacity. And he also told, I cannot, don't want to come to India because in jail mosquitoes are there. I am not even making it up. You can, these are all actual interviews, you know, of Vijay Malya. Mosquitoes are there, I will not come. So, but that's why these, the, they are strengthening the PMLA provisions. This is the part. Anything outside India, you should, you can have an agreement with these countries. So, basically, contracting state is the state where you make an agreement with. Then these are all easy. So, if you want to take over assets from there, you have to contact the court there, investigating agency there, reciprocal arrangement, diplomatic, uh, all these things should be there and then you can bring it back. Reverse, they want some property from here. Same thing they will do. What about persons? Can I bring a person? Transfer of accused persons to India, Ravi Pujari. That is what, through this it happened. Summons I gave there, warrant was uh, released there, then he was brought into India, arrested and brought into India. Reverse, from India can I transport? Yes, that also can happen. Can I, I can transport or transfer, prisoner transfer they call it, accused persons from India also. So, this is reciprocal arrangements which we have to do where it is from another summons, warrant, etc. from another court. That also they can, you know, keep asking in the exam. These are all very simple stuff. Same. What about attachment, seizure and confiscation of property in a contracting state or in India? That also I can do. To some extent, Vijay Malaya's properties have been attached abroad. Vijay Malaya's properties have been attached abroad. They are trying to do it for Nirav Modi also. You have to wait and watch. So, this is the next part of the story. Apart from that, these... Uh, these areas have not come, that's why I have included it here. These people, no, sometimes they can ask you, the, uh, what do you say, the officer simply has some problem against you, that's why he is constantly annoying you with various search, seizure, etc. Is there any punishment against him? This question has not come. Is there any punishment against him? Yes, section 62, vexatious search. Vexatious. Vexatious means what? Causing annoyance to the other person. Any authority without recording any reasons searches or causes to be searched any building or place or detains or searches or arrests any person shall for every such offence is liable on conviction or imprisonment up to two years or fine up to 50,000 or both. Imprisonment up to two years or fine 50,000 or both. Punishment for false information or failure to give information, section 63. Any person willfully and maliciously giving false information and so causing an arrest or a search to be made under this act on conviction shall be liable to imprisonment of two years or fine up to 50,000 or both. So, who is what? Willfully and maliciously giving false information. So, this also, when I ask for information, if you feed wrong information, this is what is going to happen. And if any person being legally bound to state the truth but refuses to answer and refuses to sign any statement because when I go and search, when I give the documentation, you need to sign. These were the things which were seized. If he says that I do, will not sign, he will also have to pay a penalty of 500 rupees to 10,000 rupees per default. If I go and summon him and ask him to give evidence and produce books, same thing will happen. Then, when I am giving a notice, correct, some spelling mistakes if it happens. For example, in my name always people make mistakes, punar, wash and all, they will write. It has happened many things, correct. So, at, in one place they had written wash. Now, th let's say that fellow has written Punar Wash, superb, I will give the thing to me. I will say, sir, this is not me, spelling mistake. It is not me, some other fellow you want, I am not the culprit. Can I claim like that? No. Section 68, if there is any mistake, defect, omission in a notice, summons, order, document, it is a valid document, even if it is made according to the intent and purpose of the act. Recovery of fine or penalty, where any fine or penalty under section 13 or 63 is not paid within 6 months. From the day of imposition of fine or penalty, the director or any other officer can recover the amount from the said person. Can recover 
and as far as companies are concerned when i say company is the culprit who will be the culprit i will lift the corporate veil and make the md md or the concerned person provided if it did not take place without his knowledge is not liable to punishment if he proves that it took place without his knowledge basically he should say that i did not commit this i did not know about this is very difficult to prove then if he, then he can escape otherwise md and concerned person will be liable there is this uh, for example it's not money laundering generally i'm saying that this any uh, liability on the company means i lift the corporate veil and make the md liable but i need to see whether md is directly liable or if there is any something called second hand liability called vicarious liability so basically there was one uh, higher regency case law where that fellow was uh, smoking and drinking there in an area which was there where there was no power so this fellow was a non smoking zone he was there they he asked for the smoking zone he said sir there is no smoking zone but there is construction going on on top you can go and smoke there is what the steward told so this fellow when he went up he slipped and fell he was drinking true story next day he put a case against md md of higher regency saying that construction is not done properly went to court is md liable no md is not liable for these kind of things there is no vicarious liability on the other hand there was an upahar cinema tragedy in 1990s when that movie border came so there what happened was in upahar cinema in delhi the owner the directors themselves blocked all the exits and had put chairs there also for people to watch the movie there was a fire that broke out and completely all the people inside the cinema hall were charred to death it was one of the most what do you say sad saddest what do you say uh, incidents in our country i hope you have heard it upar cinema i think netflix one show has come trial by fire trial by fire show by netflix this this fellow is there in that uh, abide you all correct so that show i mean i used to tell this example long time back thankfully they made a show also apparently it's good i had to watch it so that show is based on upahar cinema tragedy so yes all now in that case that both the directors are in jail criminal liability so it depends on the facts of the case so here offences by companies concerned person they will be taken into record section 71 act 11 overriding effect but then 32a overrides this also after you after the person dies will anything uh, continue yes basically the legal heirs or representatives will continue but they can also prefer an appeal against all these things that is what they say very very simple so that is regarding pmla anything they can ask guys it's quite simple actually whatever we have done uh, study and go anything they can ask you four to six marks and off late they are asking for nine marks also so we'll take a short break you want or no i have no problem i can continue no yes no yes no how many of you want break video okay only few people want okay video then video video cool so coming to fcra foreign contribution regulation act so fcra just a brief quickly fcra came about in 1976 first actually fcra came in 1976 uh, it was introduced by indira gandhi because people uh, you know the cia the intelligence agency of usa they were actually pumping in money and helping bjp to be very honest with you that's how it is whereas russia that is kgb they were you know helping the congress so it was introduced fcra to completely prohibit these dealings and in a way uh, give permission to some agencies for this where kgb agent uh, kb kgb organizations from outside money could come and that could be used for various things we have to understand the history because from 1950s onwards these cia and kgb both were pumping in money and buying politicians buying judges and that time there was no tv as such it was only radio and more than radio newspapers so they used to buy columnist artist editor everybody so those things are still relevant today that's why we have to do this so what 1976 they did was they completely prohibited this from outside anything coming into india but 
they said organizations can take this organizations can take this but i will give a license i will give a license so so many changes happened and then eventually in the year 2010 one more fcra came about one more fcra came about and during this time one more menace happened that was terrorism terrorism and one more menace of conversion conversion from one religion to any religion it can be any religion it can be hindu to muslim muslim to christian hindu to christian whatever the case may be conversion activities were happening rampantly money was coming from outside so they had to stop that also they had to stop stop that also so that is one part of the story second part of the story is uh, if any ias officer or any judge etc wanted something uh, basically from outside to pass a judgment in your favor there were some corrupt judges and some corrupt people who were actually taking not money directly but indirectly they were taking hospitality how they'll say that basically if you come to an ias officer and say sir can you please ensure that this uh, particular project is passed under my name he will just say yeah sure anyway i was planning to go to south africa that's all i'll not tell anything planning to go to south africa i generally travel business class and i want to go with my full family for 7 days planning to go that's it the other fellow will understand he said sure sir it will be done next day all the fully expense you know paid trip is ready this also used to happen so the briefly the basics of fcra is one is the menace of foreign contribution foreign contribution second one is foreign hospitality foreign contribution is one foreign hospitality is one more these two things must be stopped that is the intention of uh, you know fcra foreign contribution for what foreign contribution for coming money coming in using it for political purpose using it for judges using it for artists using it for uh, tv tv uh, your entire editors etc all this should be banned so here they said some cases it is prohibited and in some cases i will allow it in very some cases foreign hospitality they say it is it is never prohibited it is always restricted so this basics if you have then we can do the uh, chapter very simple foreign basically this is what it was and also i will not give any money to any ngo etc which is known to do proselytization proselytization means conversion conversion activities and if it's uh, you know spreading communal disharmony all that i will not do so basically you need to understand this this and this and many changes have been brought forward in this particular law especially if money is coming to let's say lions club can lions club transfer that money to rotary club and rotary club transfer to some other club all was allowed before now everything is prohibited they said if you are taking money from outside india you should be registered fcra registered or only for this particular item one once your money is coming only for this one item i will give you special permission that's it after that i will not allow you to transfer it elsewhere then one more deadly change came earlier people used to take money from wherever they wanted open bank accounts anywhere and take they said i am going to centralize everything where sbi yeah anyway they will sleep sbi new delhi only in that particular branch correct one branch is there in sbi main branch there only you have to open an account the one rupee also outside if it's coming means it should hit your sbi account in delhi deadly problem. all these amendments came in 2020 21 22 dangerous right it should be that is before at during covid these things came money because now in the name of covid you'll start sending it to any random things and they'll start using conversion activities during covid it happened you convert to this religion covid will go that fellow only went before covid went right so that used to happen correct there are so many you know uh, people who do the conversion activities hindu babas there is this uh, ram rahim singh insan one fellow is this no ram rahim singh insan he made movies and all msg messenger of god msg movies so that fellow he was he's in jail now he came out on parole actually if you see under his ashram 250 skeletons he has murdered 250 minimum 250 people ram rahim singh insan you can check him so that, that, that's what it is then you have many there was one uh, rara rara baba correct 
His name only was Rara Rara Baba. So he used to convert everyone. By he was used to be a kidney specialist. He used to touch that person's kidney, and he said, "Yeah, he used to tell Rara Rara is to shout." So kidney, you know, kidney only gone. So the same lady used to come in all videos. That's a different thing. But yeah, that is what Rara Rara Baba used to be there. So that Rara Rara Baba is uh, what is it? Father Sebastian Martin is a chartered accountant, right? So Rara Rara Baba was into conversion activities, unfortunately. But then later he was found dead, and the irony was when they did post mortem kidney failure, right? Yeah, Rara Rara Baba. So by healing other kidneys for him only it happened. So this uh, Ram Rahim some insan also used to convert this uh, Sebastian Martin also conversion. So all this nonsense, all money is coming from outside. So it is believed, it is still happening every day. There is this uh, movie, trans. If you see trans movie, it's a very bold movie to be made. So that shows clearly how the entire thing happens, right? So if you see, either way, they believe, and all of us should believe that religion is something which is very personal. You may be born into some religion, but what you accept is your choice. But you cannot be forced into it. Paid money to do it is what they believe. So these things should be nipped in the bud. That is why so many changes came. One is, first of all, this. I'm doing the changes so that then we can, when we do the law, you'll understand properly. If money is coming to one organization, it should come only in Delhi. Sir, from there can I transfer other accounts? That's up to you. But the money, one rupee, if it's coming one dollar, it should come only to Delhi because I can track. It is linked to FIU already. Financial intelligence unit will be seeing each and every dollar that is coming in where you are using it. Second part, unregistered entities and all I will not allow. Register, take a certificate, take money. Sir, can I transfer to anybody else? No, not allowed. And then if anything goes wrong, I can suspend the certificate. I can cancel the certificate and do other things as I feel necessary. So dangerous provisions. So on with that uh, background, let us study. Foreign contribution. With I have given some highlights also. What all is there? And now again, KYC norms have been strengthened. Aadhaar card, Aadhaar number, OCI number, all that I need to take. So, Foreign Contribution Regulation Act. The FCRA was enacted to regulate the acceptance and utilization of foreign contribution or hospitality. So, important to know what is foreign contribution. Important to know what is foreign hospitality, and everything is linked to one dialogue. Foreign source. What is a foreign source? Is what we need to see. What is the foreign source is what we need to see. So one by one, uh, these are all the uh, highlights of the changes that have happened. No foreign contribution can be accepted by employee of any corporation or any other body corporate owned or controlled by government. They said government corporations cannot accept anything. Amendment Act completely put prohibition on transfer of foreign contribution to other person. This is what Lions Club to Rotary Club prohibited now. Central government can restrict or prohibit a person from utilizing unutilized foreign contribution. You have to utilize for the purpose. Government comes to know you are utilizing for conversion activities. Suddenly they can come and say, I'll freeze your account. You will not use one rupee also. There are there is some ten thousand dollars in your account, one lakh dollars in your account. It will not be there. So almost one billion dollars came into the country in the last four five years for conversion and terrorist activities, as per government reports. So they say. FCRA, I will tighten it in such a way that nobody will come inside the, no money which is through Havala transaction will come inside the country. Aadhaar number, passport or OCI card is mandatory now. OCI is the overseas citizen of India. That is mandatory for prior permission or registration under FCRA. Restriction on administrative expenses. What they used to do was they used to take money from abroad and then use it to pay salary etc. They got, let's say, one lakh dollars and sixty, uh, fifty, fifty thousand dollars. They were using it for what? Administrative expenses. So now they have reduced it to only twenty percent. These are all the major amendments that have come in the last uh, couple of years. Opening of SC FCRA account before making application for registration. Yes, you can open now. Provision for surrender. Let's say you are not fulfilling the. Provisions you can surrender your certificate as well. All money should be received and spent from FCRA account only. Money cannot be transferred to any other account than FCRA. It applies to whole of India, applies to citizens of India outside India, and it applies to associate branch subsidiaries and all these things. So most important definitions are these. Is what we are going to do. First one. What is it? Foreign contribution means what? Foreign contribution means DDT. 
donation delivery transfer by foreign source who is foreign source we will see is your auntie foreign source your auntie is living abroad is she a foreign source it depends is she a citizen of india or citizen of usa or wherever which you would have stayed for a long time and become a citizen there that i have to see is she actually getting me the whatever giving me those uh, articles currency etc or some other company is giving it to her and she is giving it to me all that i need to check foreign source part we'll see later let's just understand what do you mean by foreign contribution these are the keywords write this you will get marks in the examination ddt donation delivery transfer donation delivery transfer transfer is transfer of ownership delivery can be transfer of possession also and donation is obviously where she is giving the money of what any article any article my auntie is giving me a what do you say when i go we can i go abroad so she gave me one small gift which is worth some 10000 rupees what she gave me what do you think will fcra come no why because there is an exemption less than or equal to it was 25000 before now it is 1 lakh up to 1 lakh no problem gift i can take so my auntie gifted me a drone worth 2 lakh rupees is it a foreign contribution yes assuming my auntie is a foreign source i will still have and come to foreign source assuming my auntie is a foreign source then that article also whatever which she has given 2 lakh rupees will be foreign contribution foreign contribution to only people covered under section 3 is prohibited that is most important so basically that drone whatever i told you should be used for a people who are covered under section 3 we'll see that otherwise no problem otherwise no problem if my auntie brings me some 10 lakh rupees item and i declare it in customs and i'll tell that i'm using it for my personal purpose no problem but if it is used for whom section 3 people then it is prohibited why section 3 it comes from the history all that judges politicians and all those people next currency currency also indian currency also foreign currency also for this there is no 1 lakh limit for this there is no 1 lakh limit so i go abroad meet my auntie put one dive generally before going she in one envelope she gives me 1000 and 1 dollars 1000 and 1 dollar i am bringing it back is it actually foreign contribution yes assuming my auntie is a foreign source that's all simple or any security she gives me tesla shares she gives me shares of tesla yes it is a foreign contribution assuming my aunt is a foreign source we'll see that foreign source later so ddt delivery donation transfer article currency or security going back here now if you see now any donation delivery or transfer by any person has received it from any foreign source either directly or indirectly to one or more persons will be deemed to be foreign contribution interest accrued on such foreign contribution also if i am deposit that in a bank interest accrued also will be deemed to be foreign contribution now on the other hand there are many such uh, colleges where you see uh, people from other countries are staying people from underdeveloped countries like kenya uganda all these people will be staying the students will be studying here you would have seen now their parents and money to the college is it foreign contribution citizens of other country definitely they are foreign source so they are sending money to an educational institution foreign contribution when that be the case it will be very difficult to manage and what if for their uh, staying etc they are uh, opening what do you say uh, hostels etc host for hostels they are sending uh, money that's why one small exemption here it is not foreign contribution any amount received by any person from a foreign source in india by way of fee including fee charged by an educational institution in india from foreign student or towards cost in lieu of goods or services rendered by person in the ordinary course of business export consideration and i am providing some foreign consultancy services they are sending me dollars it is not foreign contribution so obviously if you you have some item you are selling some goods exports money is coming in not foreign contribution ma regulations will come of course but it is not foreign contribution that's why exemption is there it is legitimate ordinary course of business trade etc no problem fee will also include any professional fee or including fee charged by educational institution no problem either within india or outside india no problem 
any contribution received from an agent of a foreign source towards such fee or cost it is not called foreign contribution next is foreign hospitality foreign hospitality again guys this foreign hospitality should be done only by certain people for example i have my my dad's friend is a famous surgeon for him whenever he wants to go out also very it's very free for him always why right? this pharma companies will come pharma companies you are a you know transplant surgeon and if you if i say this pharma companies tablet you buy that is lifelong medication imagine for the pharma company how much money they'll make so this dad's friend of mine every time he wants to go abroad he will catch hold of a pharma company and he'll say boss i want to go abroad i will he'll say sir you should please recommend my uh, tablet i will get me get me the expense paid trip to so and so country he does it really he does it is that foreign hospitality no because foreign hospitality is only for few people people are specified in the section that we will have to see not for all so if i and you do it no problem but if a judge does it member of parliament does it then it's a problem if ias officer does it then it's a problem so if you see foreign hospitality means this was asked in the exam three marks define foreign hospitality foreign hospitality means an offer which is not a casual one you will meet some fellow who don't want to meet on the road why don't you come home sometime that is a casual offer right this is not casual offer this is a genuine you know offer where i am saying boss i will give you this foreign uh, abroad you come i will take care ias officer they have to pass a project that fellow says my mother is ailing i need treatment cancer treatment abroad no problem sir it will be organized yes it is not a casual offer it's quid pro quo you do this for me i will pass the you know entire thing for you so means an offer not a casual one in cash or in kind from a foreign source who's a foreign source we'll see to a person where in a foreign country what all is free cost of travel he will give or boarding lodging transport medical treatment all these things if he gives it is called foreign hospitality if to me if he gives no problem but if he gives it to an is officer ips officer judge member of parliament then it's a problem so we need to now understand we understood what is foreign hospitality we understood what is uh, foreign contribution but we don't know who's a foreign source that's the most important thing once you understand foreign source still it's not over you need to understand who are prohibited right no normal fellows are not prohibited only certain people are prohibited that's why because of the history 1976 history 2010 history right now moving on now what is a foreign source this is my auntie foreign source let's see check this this is the definition of foreign source page number 280 all these people are foreign source first government agency of a foreign country obviously cia kgb all these are foreign source that's the reason why this section came into force anyway any international agency international agency bill and melinda gates foundation an international agency money coming from bill and melinda gates foundation into india what do you think foreign source or what yes but there are specific exemptions in income tax act for that no problem but is it a foreign source of fcra yes but i am begging for money from world bank world bank is bringing money into india assume shall i say foreign source that's why they have said not including un world bank imf right un world bank imf though it is foreign source is not a foreign source correct though it is actually a foreign source as per normal english but it is not foreign source as per two clause jfcra yes then any foreign company or any corporation or a mnc multinational corporation so if you see what is mnc if you see anything having operations in two or more countries now tell me infosys is giving salary to its employees in india is infosys foreign source in what is mnc uh, mnc definition here is company incorporated outside india just to confuse i can give company incorporated outside india is the definition of mnc indian mnc also is there infosys is an mnc right so if you see whether a company incorporated in india under companies act having its operations in two or more countries treated as mnc no next one whether earnings from foreign clients by a person in lieu of goods sold or service rendered by trade as foreign contribution no 
I can earn money, no problem. Can foreign, foreign contribution be received in rupees? Yes, any donation, Indian currency or foreign currency, any donation, uh, you know, delivery, transfer. Such transactions even in rupees are considered as foreign contribution. Will interest or other income etc. be added? Yes. My auntie's NRI, she gives donation. Is it foreign source? You see this list here. Auntie covered or not? If auntie is citizen of foreign country, then yes. If auntie is a NRI, no. So if you see, point number uh, 5. Whether donation given by NRI treated as foreign contribution. These are all taken from ICI material only. These uh, question answers, it's their recent material, they have added all this. Recent means like a couple of attempts before. Uh, only speaks about citizen of foreign country. Therefore, contributions made by citizen of India living in another country, NRI, from his personal savings, etc., through normal banking channels is not at all foreign contribution. However, while accepting any donation, it is advisable to obtain the passport details. Now, next. We will come to this here. Trade unions, trade unions, trade unions. So, Kudalkulam nu nuclear plant is there. There, the entire nuclear plant was shut down because the labor union strike happened. Then, when they investigated the matter, they found out money is coming from USA. USA labor union has sent money to these people and said, I will pay you your salary for three months, don't work. Then they analyzed why. Then they realized because this entire deal was given to Russians. The nuclear plant entire reactor work was given to Russians. Americans cannot take it. So the American Labor Party actually sent money to this nuclear plant. Practical case. Asked in the exam for four marks. American Labor Party made donation to India for something. What do you think? Foreign source? Yes. Foreign contribution? Yes. Foreign source. Trade union. Trade union. Now, if a government of foreign country or citizens of a foreign company or corporations or trust or societies AOP having more than 50% of face value, greater than 50% of face value in an Indian company, then it is a foreign source. For example, Vedanta PLC. Definitely, it is a company which is incorporated outside India, right? They transferred money to Sesa Goa, one more uh, company, subsidiary company in India. And they started giving money to various people. And mind you, these should be people who are prohibited. So, they actually paid BJP, they actually paid Congress, true story. They paid both Congress and BJP. So, now tell me, this issue went to court. This guy, AAP, Prashant Bhushan of AAP, he raised this issue it, during 2014. It went to court. They said, boss, it's a foreign company, any company incorporated outside India, foreign company, and it has its more than 50% it is controlling Indian company. An Indian company is giving, it is deemed to be foreign source as per the definition here. Foreign company, government of foreign country or citizens or any foreign company also, all put together. Foreign company, if it has more than 50% Indian company. In that example, Vedanta PLC. Vedanta PLC. Right? You remember I just discussed in cluster number 8 on definition of foreign company. In that I told you, if more than 50% is held by Indian, then it is deemed to be Indian company. Or, uh, you know, Arun Jaitley changed that section. Whatever you read was a change section only. So, he, because both were caught, correct? That is Chidambaram and Jaitley. So, they were like, now Phil, it is Avengers, now Avengers all coming, Avengers assemble, right? So, what happened? They said, now they changed that section, 379.2. Where they said, anything if it is owned by Indian, Vedanta PLC is owned by an Indian. 
you see in that indian citizens owning more than 50% right of uh, the uh, face value or that whatever paid up capital will be what deemed to be indian company so they went to the court and said sir it's indian company only you said foreign company it's indian company but then if you see the definition of fcra this is only one part of it one part is what foreign company as per companies act but this proper definition what is a foreign company any company incorporated outside india any company incorporated outside india is a foreign company so the court said boss okay you may have changed this i agree fine but do you agree that vedanta plc is a company incorporated outside india yes sir so it may be an indian company under companies act but it is a foreign company under fcra it's a foreign company under fcra it happened so most important change right what did they do they said even if it is for it won't even make sense to you that's why when you when i tell you this logic and why it came only then you'll understand in the exam also so vedanta plc actually is a foreign company it may not be a foreign company as per companies act 100% it may be an indian company but as per fcra any company incorporated outside india is foreign company so this is 100% foreign company and they have already taken money here both are guilty it went to court because of prashant bhushan now the problem is what to do best is change the law only right so in 2014 they changed the law with retrospective effect from 2010 with retrospective effect from 2010 they changed the law they said even if i have taken from foreign company if it is through legal channels as accepted under fema then no problem so they had taken money through that route only fema so no problem so retrospectively that judgment was nullified so if you see now you'll understand here check this part question number 6 whether 100% subsidiary of a foreign company in it sector can give donation to a trust who doesn't have registration under fcra yes it can as per proviso to 21a6 since the investment is within the limits of fema though it may be a 100% subsidiary of a foreign company it is not at all a foreign source observed it is not a foreign source right it is not a foreign source so basically this is a foreign source 100% but if through fema regulations if it goes through then not a foreign source not a foreign source so that was the uh, deadly amendment which was you know made under this particular legislation so as i told you there are many such uh, you know cases which they have done yeah, that is one part of the story yeah that change was there in the finance act 2016 as i told you what does it say here with effect from which date guys 26 september 2010 inserted with effect from 26 september 2010 so retrospective appointment retrospective uh, amendment from 26 september that's what nominal value if it is within fema then it shall not be a foreign source shall not be a foreign source but if you see this was only from 2010 to 2000 i mean that was, this happened in 2017 so only this retrospective uh, appointment but then chidambaram must jetly bro what about us From 1976, also we have to do something, right? Let's cleanse the sins of our fathers. Uh, everything, so my father, mother, everybody. So we will just cleanse everything. We will cleanse everything. Let's do something. So again, Arun Jaitley, I told you now before he died, deadly amendments. 2018 on small amendment he did. Nobody saw it. Yeah, in the opening paragraph for the figures, 26 September 2010, the figures. 5th August 1976 shall be substituted. Very simple. So it is amendment is from which retrospective 1970. So whatever you may have done from before, everything is cleansed. It doesn't even make any sense. A foreign company donating into India and India and company giving to many other people, it is 100% foreign source. If I did not explain this logic to you, you would be wondering what is this logic? This is the logic. They are basically nullified the decisions so all the sins made committed by bjp congress and all political parties cleansed no need to go to ganga go to jetly and chidambaram right they'll do the 
they will do the need for you, right? That's what. Yes. So, but the thing is, what goes around comes around. Unfortunately, Jaitley passed away. And this Chidambaram was jailed in the INX media case. So, what goes around will definitely come around in some way or the other. Yes, but even when he was going to jail, he was so sure. He said, I will come back maximum in 120-130 days. He came out also. So, it's very simple. He is yeah, brilliant. He is one of the Avengers. Lungi man. Right? <laughs> yes. Uh, so, if FEMA, it is not a foreign source. Very simple. So, this is not a for. It is absurd. I cannot explain the logic. You will ask me why it is not a foreign source. That is the logic. It is purely a political decision. Best part was after doing all these things, now they are tightening everything. You can't give money here because they are they are completely clean. All the political parties are clean. Trade union. Next, foreign trust or foreign foundation. Again, that Melinda Gates Foundation, all those things. Any society or club, foreign society, foreign club. Citizen of foreign country. So my auntie giving again. If she's a foreigner, you have a US citizen, then yes. So, you are a citizen, then definitely it will come. It does not matter where you got the money from, it should come from a citizen. It can come from India also. So, it is citizen of foreign country. So, that is what it is. Again, I repeat, just because it is a foreign source and just because it is a foreign contribution, it will not be prohibited. Prohibited people are the next list now. The following people are prohibited. Here. Whether an individual of Indian origin who has acquired foreign nationality stated as foreign source, yes, Priyanka Chopra, right, yes, Priyanka Chopra is an individual of Indian, Indian citizen, then she became PIO, person of Indian origin, now she is a US citizen, so yes, money received from her, etc., now she is stated as a foreign source, so person of Indian origin is what, even a spouse of an Indian citizen is a person of Indian origin. So, let's say a person called Mr. Rajiv, just out of the blue, he went, goes to Italy and marries somebody, right? So, will that somebody, will that somebody become PIO? Yes. Why? Right? Spouse of an Indian citizen is person of Indian origin. That was inserted that time, during Rajiv Gandhi's time, so that Sonia Gandhi and others could take by property. True story, guys. You should know our history. All are crooks. Uh, there is nothing about BJP Congress. Everybody are crooks only. Everybody are smart. Everybody is smart. Should understand what all they did. Everyone, or everyone for that matter. So yes, so they changed the law only. Person of Indian origin, right? But Shoaib Malik is crying. Why? Shoaib Malik is also a spouse of an Indian citizen, Sanya Mirza. But they have clearly mentioned Pakistani fellows not allowed. So they have mentioned there Pakistani Bangladeshi fellows not allowed. So those people crying. Yes. So that is what. All citizens of a foreign country are treated as foreign source. So, I again repeat, foreign source is one we have seen already. They can give this also. Foreign hospitality they have given for three marks many times, two, three times. Then this also they have given. But all these things will be prohibited only for certain people, not for all. Even foreign hospitality is restricted for certain people. That certain people who are there, we need to see. Let's check that now here. Yes. This is for what? Prohibition to accept foreign contribution. These people cannot accept foreign contribution. Now, what is foreign contribution? We know. These people cannot accept. Candidate for an election. Candidate for an election. Will this include your uh, college election? Because college election is the most important thing. That is the breeding ground of the future politician. Really. So, but that is not covered here. They have given candidate for election. That is legislative. Councillor Assembly, not there. Now, this is the amendment, guys. FCRA Amendment Act 2020. Public servant, IAS, IPS, IFS officer, your sub registrar office, everybody covered. Correct? Yes, public servant as per section 21 of the Indian Penal Code. So, all these people are covered, public servants, covered under that particular section. Any editor of a registered newspaper, correspondent, cartoonist, cartoonist and all was added in 1976. People used to blindly follow cartoonists, right? R.K. Lakshman and all that, if you have seen, their, their cartoons are so relevant even today. So, that time, there was no entertainment. So, newspaper, when they see the cartoons, they used to get, you know, influenced, whatever their thoughts are. Yes, that's why, cartoonist, editor, columnist, owner, publisher, everyone. So, money given by a foreign source, 
or in contribution to a registered newspaper not allowed because that time russian government held all the various newspapers they only controlled so to you know to stop all those things over the years so many changes were there judges and government servants ias ifs ips there are other things in public servant yeah that is your uh, sub registrar office election officer all that is covered under public servant whereas government servant is what ias ifs ips irs all these government servant government employee of a corporation hindustan aeronautics limited employee is a government employee of a government corporation bhel all these people right so these people you cannot give member of legislative assembly political party or office bearer political affiliates rss vhp bajrangdal all these things or anything that is tv or radio owner of a tv station the uh, main producer of a tv station radio station all these not covered i mean basically they are covered if these people accept gone prohibited so again what is prohibited guys this entire thing what this entire thing this one we saw no this foreign contribution which is done by a foreign source given to these people only is, is prohibited you and i can we take yes only given to these people is prohibited that's all now they give it to me i give it to political party then now they have taken the final benefit is them only so prohibited or what yes that is what we have to see that is this that's why they have added this that's why they have added this so i tell my auntie my friend will come and give you something you please get it for me so my friend who is a foreign source he will give something to my auntie auntie is an indian citizen is auntie a foreign source no or ultimately where it came from foreign source so my auntie comes to bangalore airport and i am there standing behind me 10 bikes are there with all various flags and all carrying so she gives that money or whatever to me she knows for sure that i am going to use that whatever she has got for a political purpose so is that foreign contribution 100% yes that's what they have clarified here person resident in india me and citizen of india resident outside india my auntie shall not accept any foreign contribution on behalf of any political party or from any prohibited person who is this prohibited person one more list any person who brings disharmony to the country zakir naik is giving that to my aunty right then that is what it is then person resident in india or citizen of india resident outside india shall not deliver any currency whether indian or foreign which has been accepted from foreign source to any person if he knows or reasonable cause to believe that such person is likely to deliver such currency to political party so my auntie when she is giving the thing if she comes to know that this is 100% going there immediately she has to report otherwise she will also be liable so ultimately only to these people and end user she may be giving it to me but if i give it to political party yes very difficult to track but no choice now government also has made an amendment where they say they can only declare who are the organizations of political nature so they have to check the moa in the moa or the bylaws if there is any trade union whose objective include activities for promoting political goals any voluntary action group with objectives of political nature abvp front or mass organizations like students union workers union youth forums correct then your uh, congress youth wing whatever it is all these things are political affiliations women wing of a political party then these are all inserted recently the farm laws against that people were fighting right you know couple of years ago one year ago so that the company government banned them again in this under this because they are organization of farmers workers students youth based on caste community religion language or otherwise they are not directly aligned to any political party but the objectives are the activities which they are doing with material evidence includes advancement of political interest so they said that the farm farmers who are uh, you know fighting for their rights under the farm laws so they are political party so rather they have avowed political objectives is what they had claimed 
any organization and again our uh, watal nagraj here you know our fellow hero and when, when for uh, people who have come from outside there is one guy watal nagraj right so on topi he'll wear and glasses right sometimes when i don't get sleep at night three o'clock i'll be searching watal nagraj without glasses right i'll be so i'll not get i didn't get even one picture till today watal nagraj without topi and glasses that fellow will be always doing what band uh, then karnataka band Hartal, Rasta Roko, Rail Roko, are these also political affiliations? Yes, that's also they are given. Any organization, by whatever name called, which habitually engages itself or employs common methods of political action like Band, Hartal, Rasta Roko, this will be uploaded, so you should watch it, Super it will be, yeah. Rail Roko, Jail Baro, in support of public causes, in support of public causes will be obviously. Uh, part of that. So, these are all new additions actually. Then, central government will give notice to our organizations. They will have to reply within 30 days as to why it should not be considered as political purpose. Final order is made within 120 days from the date of issue of notice with reasons recorded can only extend by 60 days. So, when uh, during that uh, farm this thing, they had sent a notice to these farm associations telling that tell me why I should believe that you are actually genuinely supporting, I mean genuinely against a farm, land, farm bill and not through some other political means is what they are told. Now, persons to whom section 3 shall not apply, means the same fellows, candidate election, public servant, registered newspaper, judge, member of legislature, etc. Number 22 question, candidate for election got money from his brother something like that they had asked, got money from his brother from outside the country, brother is citizen of foreign country, what do you think, brother is relative, uh, that's what say here, from his relative, if receipt is more than, now this has changed guys, important, it has become 10 lakh per annum, this will come from May 23 onwards, 1 lakh has become 10 lakh. File form FC1 within 3 months. This 1 lakh has become 10 lakhs per annum. Don't see suggested answers. Now it is 10 lakhs. If receipt is more than 10 lakhs per annum, form uh, file the form FC1 within 3 months. 30 days was there. Now it is 3 months. So if receipt is more than 10 lakh per annum, file form FC1 within 3 months. So, within, I mean, up to 10 lakh, no problem. If it is more than 10 lakh, I need to file. If I don't file, then it is deemed to be violation. Salary, wages or other remuneration from any foreign source. The person, what do you say, a government servant is also there, no. Government servant, forest officer, he is sent to Sri Lanka. And they are telling, please study everything there, the entire how ecosystem works. Because in Sri Lanka, there is a very famous, uh, what do you say, leopard sanctuary. So, go to that leopard sanctuary, study the habitat, come and replicate. Uh, you are on deputation there, you will be getting salary. Now, he is getting salary there, foreign source. Sri Lankan government is paying him. What do you think? Not a foreign source, that is what. Salary, wages, other remuneration. Payment in the ordinary course of business transacted in India. Payment in course of international trade or commerce. This politician is an exporter. He is an exporter. So, he is doing export dealings, ordinary course of business, no problem. As an agent of foreign source, gift or presentation made to him as member of an Indian delegation. So, they have gone there, they have given him some gift, trophy, etc. No problem. By way of remittance received in the ordinary course of business through official channel under FEMA. Basically, they are telling you, you can take any money if it is through FEMA. Ordinary course of business. Export, import, all that you can do because it should be FEMA regulation. Then, by way of any scholarship, stipend or any payment. Correct. Institute and all, if it does, you go abroad and do. Over, over. Institute does go abroad and do article ship. Stipend you will get in dollars. Yes. So, all those things. Anyway, that is a relevant example because you are not part of these people. Candidate, public servant and all those things. You are a servant, not public servant. Yes. Uh, scholarship, stipend or any payment. Next. Ah, that is done guys, that is all. So, foreign contribution to this section number 3 and this section 3 prohibited. Now, we have to talk about foreign hospitality. 
what about foreign hospitality given to what do you say uh, public servants or it, it is given to government servants so same almost same people are covered here also check it out restriction on acceptance of foreign hospitality it is restrictions on foreign hospitality so if you see section 6 section 6 speaks about the restrictions on foreign hospitality so i'll just show you that one second so this is again so all these people are covered here no member of legislature judge so if you see here guys public servant is not there public servant is added for what yeah so do not get confused it is section 3 only public servant is added here Whereas section 6, if you see, public servant is not there. Small, small points generally we miss out. That's why I'm saying. Is he there? Public servant is not there. In the Bear Act, I'm showing. Check it out. So, what I'm trying, they can confuse you. Public servant to foreign hospitality. Can you take? Yeah, no problem. Right? So, it is these people only, member of legislature, Office bearer of political parties, judges, government servant, employees of corporation. My dad's friend taking foreign hospitality, no problem. Not covered under FCRA. These people, it is not prohibited, it is restricted. Mind you, foreign contribution to people covered under section 3, prohibited. Foreign contribution to other than people in uh, section 3, it is restricted, allowed but restricted. For example, NGOs. NGOs, are they judges? No. NGOs can take money but restricted. What should you do? Registration. Right? I hope you are understanding the structure. So, if it is these fellows, not allowed. But if it is other than these fellows, take registration. One rupee also if you take, registration you take. Foreign hospitality. Normal other fellows, you do whatever you want. These people, not prohibited, but restricted. Judges, government servant, all these people. Now, whose permission you should take? Amit Shah's permission. Yes, you should go to who? Ministry of Home Affairs. So, Ministry of Home Affairs, you have to take the permission. Prior from here only. Following categories of people require prior approval from Ministry of Home Affairs before accepting foreign hospitality. Ministry of Home Affairs, undoubtedly. Right. So, let us say one uh, member of legislature, Lalu Prasad Yadav, he has gone outside India. Heart attack happens. He will call Amit Shah. Bro, heart attack. That fellow, hello, 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 cut over. You die. Right. So, yes. So, that is an exception. Medical emergency allowed. Correct. Emergency medical aid, that is allowed. Prior approval, not needed. That prior concept, it is not needed. But I will intimate the CG within one month with the receipt and approx value. Whatever, how much I spent, how much others spent on you, you should tell. That is assuming you did not pay for it. If some foreign government paid for you, you have to intimate. But no intimation if it is less than 1 lakh. This is only in case of emergency medical aid. So, in all other cases, you need to take the permission of these people. So, yeah. Which one? Which one? Da? This one. 60 days. So, the uh, rule says 60, this says 30. So, what will follow, guys? What will you follow? This says within one month, rule says 60 days. What will you follow? Act. Act will override the rules. Act will override the rules. Rules are always within the act. Yeah, there was that confusion. Now I remember. I removed it also from the material. Yes, because act will override the rules. No permission needed for below people. That is first. Where the entire expenditure on the proposed form is met by the central government or state government. Modi is going abroad. He will call. Mota, why I am going? No, not needed. Why? The entire expenditure is borne by central government only. No need to tell. Where proposed foreign visit being undertaken by a person in his personal capacity. If he is going on a personal trip with his own personal money, a government servant, no problem. 
where the foreign hospitality is being provided by an Indian national living in a foreign country or territory. Indian national giving uh, foreign hospitality, no problem. So, if you, a uh, judge goes abroad and lives with his children, no problem. So, everything you cannot say, it is prohibited. They will give, you know, accommodation, everything free, no problem. Cases involving acceptance of assignment on salary, fee remuneration, no problem. Cases involving visits undertaken by members of Indian parliamentary delegation under bilateral exchange. That and also bilateral agreement between government of India and government of the country concerned approved by Ministry of Finance. Long term, short term foreign training courses. All our ministers had gone abroad from Karnataka to study the you know, transport mechanism in Europe and all. They had gone. The fellows came back. They asked, what did you learn? They said, Disneyland was very nice. <laughs> right? They really told on TV. Shameless fellows. So, they had gone to actually understand, to learn how the entire transport mechanism works and all that. So, all these foreign training courses, etc. Yes, you can go, no problem. Now, I told you foreign contribution to other than fellows covered under section 3 is what? Allowed, but Restricted in what way? Take registration, that is section 7, registration. According to this section, person who is registered and granted certificate or has obtained prior permission under the act and receives any foreign contribution. So, either you should take a certificate or if it is a one-time thing, prior permission and receives any foreign contribution, shall not transfer such foreign contribution to any other person. Earlier it was allowed. So, do not get confused. Earlier it was allowed. Now, it is not allowed. FCRA Amendment Act 2020, not at all allowed. Earlier they said, if you are uh, Alliance Club, you want to transfer to Rotary Club, you can. If Rotary Club also takes permission, no, no permission will be given. Barred. You cannot transfer at any cost. Entire section only changed. Then, now they will ask other type of questions. Anything they can come, guys. Only this much is there. Easy. So, study everything and go. Six marks in your pocket. Restriction to utilize foreign contribution for administrative purposes. Now, that money that I get, an NGO get 1 lakh dollars. What all I can use it for? Can they use it to buy shares? No. Can they use it to uh, keep it in a fixed deposit? Can they use it to buy risk-free government bonds? Yeah, yes. So, if you see here, that money cannot be used for speculative business. Any activity or investment that has an element of risk of appreciation or depreciation of the original investment. Can they give it to CA student? No. Speculative business. Yeah. Right. Appreciation or depreciation of the original investment linked to market forces. Yeah. Including investment in mutual fund or in shares. Not allowed. Participation in uh, scam, sorry, scheme that promises high returns like investment in chits or land, chit fund business, land and all, not allowed. That's what here. But a debt free, debt based secure investment shall not be treated as speculative investment. You can invest in debt securities. And as I told you, not spend amount exceeding 20% for administrative expenses. But if it exceeds 20%, prior approval of CG. If it exceeds 20%, prior approval of CG. Up to 20, no approval. Beyond 20, prior approval. So, up to 20%, no approval. You guys have sat for like 9 hours, guys. Awesome. It will be more than 9, I think. Super energy, awesome, awesome, brilliant. 100% you will pass. Yes, yes, 100%. 100%, undoubtedly. So much concentration is very difficult. For me, no tension. It's been more than 10 years, 12, 12 hours and all properly, I'll, 12, 13 hours, no tension. But you guys, to sit, difficult. If it exceeds 20%, then it is prior approval of the CG. Prior, yes, yes, leaving. <laughs> yes, leaving, leaving, over, over, almost. Almost there. Prior approval of the CG. More than 20% prior approval of the CG is needed. Now, they can ask you a, a problem which they have never asked in the exam. It is there in one of my mock exams. One question they had asked whereby they will say, what is administrative expenses, salary and all those things? Now, 
you have a school ngo is running a school they are giving salary to the teachers here administrative expenses so th they are let's say 1 lakh dollars they have, or 1000 dollars is the donation they are giving 500 dollars salary to teachers ideally it is admin but uh, specifically excluded so you are not to be counted as admin expenses that's what they can give us some on this just to play with you so the ad expenditure incurred on salary or remuneration of personnel engaged in training or for collection or analysis of field data primarily engaged in research or training so this what one of this again all these practical things now if you read like that you will not understand that's why you should travel a lot you will meet people who will teach you this connecting that to this is you know our uh, what is a uh, whatever our skill but you they will teach when i had gone to go off all the places to go i had gone and then morning i woke up it was you know boring so i thought let me go for a goa walking tour so i booked a walking tour in middle panjim they will take you one fellow also had come he was traveling i said what do you do he is like he goes to each of these villages in villages government hospital will be there where people will be you know government doctors will be taking care of the patients there are uh, people who look after the patient their relatives he said imagine this was a harvard fellow who has same fcr only harvard person from usa as invested in india in this ngo they are doing this so they go to this uh, caretakers because if the person is discharged even post discharge care is most important otherwise the person dies the mortality rate of in, in india of post discharge care is almost 60% because in villages people don't take care they feel the moment you are coming out of the hospital you are fine so this pe person the harvard guy through indians are training those other people you know the relatives because the relatives don't know what questions to ask the doctor and doctor is busy so through various drama skit and normal basic you know what do you say using very very simple language they are training them and that fellow was getting 70000 rupees per month salary now tell me that salary is collecting all the data going that salary admin expense or not no that's what it says salaries are remuneration of personal engaged in training or for collection of analysis of field data in engaged in the research or training he was doing this research so he has traveled the length and breadth of the country he was predominantly from chennai but yeah, his family was in chennai but he has traveled across in all villages he has lived in uh, in, in normal trees and all he has lived tree houses so he has gone to each of these you know places so that i met that guy there he was telling then of course salary to doctors salary to teachers etc all these things yes so during this covid it became very difficult to get money into india one of my uh, friends wanted to he was a stinking rich fellow he wanted to get money into india because he wanted to convert one of the dilapidated you know uh, wedding convention hall into a hospital he said let me apply sbi account opening took 3 months by then half the people died here right sbi opening they are not opening the account only right horrible so it was very bad scenario that time so then he was telling that i want to invest in these doctors etc give the money to them so that they can spend they are not 20% guys full you can spend no problem then salaries to teachers of school etc all these cases what are administrative expenses other salaries wages telephone expenses normal um, normal other people managers and all with that those things electricity water charges all these things travel expenses at accounting that is your uh, accountant salary and all these things vehicle filing the reports legal charges rent all these should be maximum 20 more than 20 prior approval of cg so they can give you a problem where they'll mix you, mix this and they'll mix this and then you need to compute then it so happens that when you remove these uh, people it will be less than 20 so you have to write the answer then they'll ask you a question what if it is more than 20 then prior cg never asked in the exam these are the other type of question that can come is what i am saying next uh, you know power of central government to prohibit in certain cases as i told you they, here there is on dialogue prohibited people who are those prohibited people these are the prohibited people that is anybody who affect the sovereignty and integrity of the country correct anybody who is like for example ajmal kasawa any terrorist recently you saw a dangerous person has entered india have you seen that news 
a dangerous person has entered India through Nepal. So then government caught him. The Ministry of Home Affairs caught him. So that dangerous person is there to obviously create some havoc here, terrorist activity. So yes, public interest. So anything, acceptance of foreign contribution. So for instance, in PMLA, I was talking about it. That, that, that's why I wanted to show it here. So my friend's best friend, I all happened to me only. That's the awesome part. I know all these people because of them. So my friend's best friend was a doctor in MS Ramaya Hospital, this fellow. Doctor in MS Ramaya Hospital. I have also met him once, right? Doctor in MS Ramaya Hospital. One of the best ever, you know, uh, postgraduate. He was doing his PG, postgraduate after MBBS. One of the best ever, very, very soft spoken. And my friends, really, very, very good friend. They have, you know, spent almost like weeks and months together because they are working together, right? Suddenly, one day, you know, the anti terrorist squad comes and takes him. Later they come to his fellow from ISIS, trained in ISIS, correct? True story, Bangalore doctor Abdur Rahman, National Investigative Agency took him, links with ISIS. This fellow was developing an app for ISIS terrorist across the world. Whenever any ISIS terrorist is injured, he will send a link on that, uh, you know, app. It's an encrypted app. Location will come so that doctors can reach. He was building it in Bangalore, MS Ramaya. Your only it is, by the way, yeah? three kilometers, right? So he was built. Crazy guys, my friend went into depression. He was investigated for some three months. Not joking. Why? How is your best friend? How? Biryani and all you were eating. He didn't tell anything. He didn't tell anything about uh, this thing also even once. Crazy. It's shocking guys. It was, he was really shocked. He said, I cannot imagine that this guy was a terrorist. Now tell me. He was getting money from abroad. He spent three months in ISIS also. He is an actual terrorist. And very, very soft spoken, people could not believe it. Right? So, if you see, what I am trying to tell is that is these are the people who will do what? Impact the sovereignty and integrity of the country, freedom or fairness of any election, any your witness tampering, your uh, you know, EVM tampering, and all those things, who will hamper the friendly relationship between friend, foreign states, harmony between religious, racial, social, linguistic, regional group. This is what? That guy, Zakir Naik, that is called sedition, telling anything against the country or any religion in the country, that is called sedition. I will prohibit these people. And you have to obtain prior permission before accepting any foreign hospitality is what they have told. These are prohibited people. Prohibited people. They have to furnish information and all those things. So, yes, where the central government is satisfied that after making such enquiry, person has in his custody any article, currency, etc., it may deliver an order in writing saying that the order will be sent via registered post, speed post or affixing on the outer door. This also can be MCQ question. How will they prohibit? If you come to know that somebody is paying somebody and you come to know that tomorrow this is going to happen, I can send an order via registered post acknowledgement due. Means what? They will send an acknowledgement or to sign on it. Speed post to last known address. Third one, affixing on the outer door. And it should be witnessed by at least two persons. On the outer door, they'll say, this is going to happen tomorrow. Please do not do it. We have information. They can ask the question. The order will be sent by the following, except courier will be fourth option. Courier is what you should choose. So anything they can ask, guys, you should be careful. Last part, registration has to be done. Uh, this is this is all you know, normal forms FC 3A, 3B. Registration under FC 3A with along with an affidavit. Prior permission under FC 3B. I told you if Rotary Club is getting money, they should either take prior registration or prior permission. Otherwise, not allowed. And they will central government also make make an enquiry if they have reason to believe that this person is not following the provisions properly. And this is the thing. What will you do? They will say you will not utilize the unutilized foreign contribution or you will not receive the remaining part. For how long? Without my approval, you cannot do it. Until I approve, you cannot touch that unutilized amount is what they say. Can a private limited company or partnership firm get registration on prior permission? Yes, anybody can get. Whether an individual or HUF can get? Yes, person includes everybody. Whether organization and a central or state governments are required to obtain registration, yes, they have to. 
then this was asked for four marks who are, what are the conditions to be met for grant of registration same when the person who is applying should not be fictitious person should not be benami should not be prosecuted or convicted for indulging in conversion activities should not be prosecuted for creating communal tension or disharmony propagation of sedition see against the country you cannot speak all these things and it is not likely to affect same dialogue sovereignty and integrity security public interest freedom of fairness election friendly relation harmony same what is the procedure for granting registration you should give it to a open an fcra account under section 17 without fail where in new delhi scg will grant an account you have to open will grant certificate within 90 days the certificate will be valid for 5 years is what they say if the value of the deposit obtaining prior permission is 1 crore or more rupees 1 crore not dollars cg will permit receipt in installments because 1 crore is coming they will say okay i'll allow it in installments now the second this is one new provision not asked in the exam let's do it a little slow basically how many years you will get 5 years second part i will they will ask me how much money is coming i'll say sir 3 crores is coming sir 3 crore inr not dollar okay will government say no to it no but for 3 crore let me allow installments first i'll allow 1 crore let's see what you will do with it i will track it once it receives 1 crore this institution should spend minimum 75% for the purpose for which it is coming in once you prove it to me then i'll allow the other installment this question has not come right so how much 1 crore that second and subsequent installment shall be released only after submission of proof of utilization of 75% of the foreign contribution received in the previous installment and after field enquiry of the utilization then along with that i will take your citizens of india aadhar number for others passport or oci card passport or oci card now i this question has not come as i told you any time it can come couple of things suspension cancellation surrender and renewal this also is an important exam question but before that if you see there is one more amendment here uh, can i change the can i make a revision application under section 32 yes there is one more new added for may 23 any order passed by central government what order it can be a cancellation order it can be a registration cancellation order suspension order can i obviously go for a revision petition yes the central government may either on its own motion or application call for an examine record of any proceeding any order that they have passed and they can revise that order now this section has never been asked in the exam they have given it in the amendments new point revision of order an application for revision of order passed by the competent authority in the 32 shall be made to whom secretary ministry of home affairs government of india so if you want revision of order who will you apply apply to secretary ministry of home affairs so who is eligible to submit revision application a person who is registered under fcra can go for revision application how can an association file an application for revision it will be made to secretary ministry of home affairs can revision application be sent through physical mode no from 15th august 2022 only electronic mode what is the procedure yes this this is like very very theoretical and very what do you say you go to that particular uh, website and do it yes you have to go to this particular website under the head what services under fcra subheading revision application you need to do it is there need to send physical copy no what is the format scanned copy and proper justification fee is 3000 what is the time limit for making application of revision this can be asked in the exam mcq how many years one year from the date on which order in question was communicated or date on which otherwise come to know of it whichever is earlier so within how many years can i make the application one year this can come in the mcq from which so you will pass a suspension order to me i receive it from the date of receipt one year either where it was communicated to me or on which it otherwise i came to know about it i should do it that's it these are some of the points last part last part is this 
cancellation, suspension, surrender. So, this also they have asked guys, what are the grounds of cancellation? How can I cancel your certificate? When can I cancel? How can I cancel? Yeah, false or incorrect statement. You have violated the terms and conditions. For example, I told you to spend 75%, you didn't spend. So, I will cancel it. But before cancel, I have spent more than 20% you have spent, administrative. Yes, and you have not taken my permission. Then it is against public interest, contravening the provisions of the act. And you have told me that you will do it, you will spend it, but since last two years, you have not spent on anything. It is simply lying there in the account, you have not spent at all. Before cancellation, however, I will suspend. Cancellation is the last part. Before cancellation, I am going to suspend your license. For how many days? 180 days. Suspension is 180 days. Plus further period of how many days? 180 days. FCRA Amendment Act 2020. I will follow principles of natural justice. And finally, foreign contribution. Basically, when I suspend, no? New foreign contribution, if I want 1 rupee also, prior approval of CG, I have to take. Or if I have already utilizing, already have, let's say I have more 1, la 1 crore is coming, take prior approval of CG. 1 crore is already there lying inside. Can I use it? I can use only 25% debt to after prior approval. Remaining 75% only after revocation of suspension. Until then it is frozen. These are small, small things which they have not asked, which they can, like only vaguely they have asked, so they can ask that again. 25% of the prior approval, 75% after revocation. Last part this side, cancellation. Cancellation, what is it? Cooling period of 3 years. So, if you cancel for 3 years, you cannot apply again. Cooling period of 3 years, cannot apply. Surrender of certificate. Again, a request made by, maybe made to the Central government for surrender of certificate in form number FC7. Surrender. This is voluntary. You will feel that you are not doing justice to this entire thing, whatever you took. So, you will surrender the certificate under this. Central government shall make enquiry as it deems fit and satisfy itself that person has not contravened any of the provisions of the act. Thereafter, the central government may permit any person to surrender the certificate. Renewal. Can I renew? Here. If it is not cancelled or suspended, I can renew six months before the expiry. Each it is valid for five years. So, four and a half years I can go and uh, renew it. But I have to submit an affidavit and all those things, normal. Then before renewing, they will check all those things, whatever we discussed. That is, should not be uh, against the sovereignty and all those provisions. That's about it. Then, apart from that, yeah, the central government shall renew the certificate ordinarily within 90 days from the date of receipt of renewal. That is what they will do. Apart from that, uh, the certificate of registration was granted to an NGO on 1st January 2014. A request for renewal was received by the central government on 30th June 2018. But the request was not accompanied by the renewal fee. Comment on the validity. So, what will they do? Although the application was made, it was not accompanied by renewal fee. Hence, it will be lapsed. When? On the day your 5 years are over, it will be lapsed. You should make a fresh application. Basically, 4 years, 4 and a half years before, 4 and a half years, when you touch 4 and a half years, you can go for renewal. And even this, as, as already discussed, it should be opened in State Bank of India, New Delhi. You may open one account, but you can transfer to any accounts of your choice later. And SBI New Delhi will keep on reporting within 48 hours of every transaction. Every dollar coming in, they will report. No funds other than the foreign fund should come there. That is the thing. Last part. Intimation of foreign contribution by the recipient. Yes. If you receive foreign contribution, any recipient, you should submit FC4. November 22, this only had come. You receive it from a relative, so for that is FC1. If you receive some normal other contribution you receive, NGO, then they have to do under this. Every person who receives foreign contribution under the act shall submit FC4. So, first of all, SBI will be reporting here. And Aish also should report, these two should match. That matching will be done by the agencies. So it's very, very strict. 
and then if the foreign contribution relates to only articles or securities intimation shall be submitted in form number fc1 every report will be certified see here also you can make money certified by chartered accountant there is lot of you know here things also you can certify but go, but this only you can do your juniors cannot do because icai has removed law right yeah every report submit because if you don't know all these things what you'll certify think about it so they are you know shooting themselves in the foot very very foolish decision so every report uh, submitted certified by chartered accountant you have to troll wherever possible the accounting shall be preserved this is an mcq question accounting shall be preserved by the person for a period of 6 years 6 years only 8 years they'll give first option don't choose 8 6 a nil report shall be furnished even if no foreign contribution is received but here in this case ca certificate is not needed because it's nil no money is received but 1 dollar if it comes in ca certificate is a must audit will be done by general or special order they will do the needful then intimation by candidate for election this also they asked in the november exam every candidate for election who has received any foreign contribution at any time within 180 days immediately preceding the date on which he is nominated shall intimate in fc1 this was number 22 question paper same to be filed within 45 days from the date on which he is nominated as a candidate for election some similar question had come may or november one of the two adjudication and appeal finally it the court will confiscate if the if it is up to 10 lakhs minimum rank assistant sessions that only can do so if there is any limit then court will do it order is passed by court of session appeal can be made to the high court any other officer you can make it to the court of session that is the sessions court offense and penalties good luck that is the thing last part compounding offenses all these things are fine guys this is okay all this and uh, will the act apply to government of india transactions no obviously no it will not act at all as such will fcra override fema like that they had never asked this question but if they ask like that they'll give fcra and fema and say what will override what so you should write this provisions of this act shall be in addition to and not in derogation of it will never override it is side by side correct it will go hand in hand biryani if you are eating that raita etc that is fcr right it will not override it correct it will not override so the provisions of any other law for the time being in force is what they say so these are all the yeah over over done yeah these are all the when you are studying now i mean this is just some you can close your books and all what i want to tell is one dirty habit all of us have guys this habit is what you know asking my friend macha how much you studied correct especially in the last next two months it will happen how much you study then that fellow will says for me law is already over revision over for you vision is only not happening the problem is each of us is different is you know has uh, capacity in different laws different subjects please do not compare next two months please do not compare with your friends this guy is what virat kohli no this guy is called hokkaido zimomi he is a nagaland player Player of Nagaland, he actually played for uh, Kolkata Knight Riders, but he only was a ball boy, and he got bottles of water, etc. But in his village, they were all waiting for the break to happen. Why? Because they wanted to see their childhood, their their hero. This guy, a 22-year-old kid, is the is actually revered as a god in his village. Honestly speaking, nobody knows about Virat Kohli. Virat Kohli once had posted a picture. He had gone trekking with Anushka Sharma. No one knew knew him there. He had gone to northeast of India. Nobody recognized him. So he said, "For the first time in my life, I went in India somewhere, and nobody recognized me. It felt so nice, right?" So if you see here, Hokkaido Zimomi. If Hokkaido Zimomi goes anywhere in the northeast of the country, he is actually a god. So the thing is, he is not Virat Kohli. He can never be Virat Kohli. Now what I am trying to tell is, problem is. we think uh, others may be virat kohli but we can be okaito zimomi i am also a player you are also a player ultimately guys 400 out of 800 also is a ca 600 out of 800 is also a ca so i just want to take some 10 minutes can i take uh, you, if you say no also i'll take yeah so because it's important please do not compare it's one dirty habit we sit and compare with our friends how much you studied you are different you are good in some subjects he is good in some subjects 
do not even think about studies you just discuss other things after exams where we will go all those things you can discuss but definitely not this dirtiest habit and then of course we know this uh, you can read this clearly according to research at cambridge university really doesn't matter in what orders the letters in the word are only important thing is first and last letter all other letters can be a mess because human brain recognizes the first and the last so actually the first letter is what is important that is ca foundation last letter is ca clearing ca and getting those two letters before our name beginning and the end is what matters in between no one gives a damn so if you come to, if you go to your friend and say i could not clear ca because of girlfriend problem boyfriend problem financial problem they all listen to you and say okay i'm very sorry uh, you could not clear the moment you turn around and go i'll like stupid fellow only excuses on the other hand if you say that despite in front of all the problems still i have cleared today you know then of course akshay kumar will come and make a movie on you <laughs> right so if you see that's what it is so beginning and end end you have already died you have been dying for so many years are already dead nothing left actually so remaining that two letters just that guys after that your life is settled to be very honest i am not saying your life is settled in the sense that you will be chilling no way till today i work 16 hours a day it's awesome but tomorrow if i want to write an exam there is no what do you say i don't have to write only because i have already passed correct the thing is if you and i write an exam today i will still pass you will not pass even though you have more knowledge in other subjects because of the one factor tension correct you are sitting in class today the ticking i was seeing when i told this is important some people started opening your you know your highlighter and started marking all these things but if you listen to a class without this uh, burden of the exam you will actually understand more so the thing is it's all about the burden and ca is just the beginning of a wonderful chapter honestly you will still work hard you will still slog it out but there is no pressure and the financial freedom that you get is amazing you can try whatever you want even if you fail at the end of the day you can get a normal job anywhere with 60 70000 rupees salary no problem so you're almost there i know you will pass but then sometimes it so happens that we end up flunking it's fine and nobody will ask you the number of attempts to be very honest unless you want to join some top 10 companies in india initially you will not get in because you should be a rank holder in fact even if the first 10 ranks are only taken others are not even considered there are some companies which do like that apart from that what really matters is the knowledge so begin you have already begun you have already ended nobody will ask your number of attempts to be till today nobody asked me has asked me my marks nobody has asked me the number of attempts it is just that once you clear that get that two letters before your name that's it life is settled and of course all your parents your uh, loved ones will be extremely happy because till that day only they are all dying Uh, we always you know learn actually we are not doing they are not doing ca but it feels like they are also doing ca we just have to write exam they have to do ca your entire life revolves around their entire life revolves around you you told this fellow is in bangalore i will go to bangalore like those of you have come from other places also i have come thank you so much you would have told this fellow is taking in bangalore i'll go so your parents have completely changed their entire time table and everything for you today morning if you are come at 8:30 i change the timing to 8:30 so probably your loved ones probably should have, would have gotten up by 6 now because of me they have got up at 6 right so basically what i am trying to tell is it's all about you know giving back to them so i am a nature enthusiast and definitely we can learn from mother nature so quick pointers quickly so at the beginning of studies when i am doing now there is apprehension anxiety curiosity especially be- before the classes maybe for the revision session there will be a new dawn a new beginning and you're all uh, you know bubbling with energy initially first day now i'm seeing your face yeah but now you are ready to fly the thankfully i'll have one coffee headache is there i'll go home you'll be thinking we are determined to make a mark like this tiger and uh, determined to shine as well in our life but of course all we need to do is uh, be vibrant like this uh, peacock always be pleasing like this uh, bunch of trees but firmly grounded because ultimately we should be humble guys however much however we fly our feet should always be on the ground like this joke falls even if we fall down we will fall down many times we have already fallen down you should do it with grace because ultimately we should always be obviously get back up so i am a nature enthusiast and also do dabble in a little bit of photography that's why all these pictures i have taken and along with my dad my dad is obviously 1000 times better than me in photography yes so if you see and keeps keep our uh, you know ideas afloat like this 
and obviously we have to take that uh, giant leap wherever we go and it's not about being serious as ca final students please don't be serious but of course we need to take some time off <laughs> right and also soak up the sun whenever playfully fight with our friends which i'm sure we do toss up all our inhibitions and glide through gleefully but all, obviously we should always need to make sure that after all the tossing after all the fighting all the dancing that we do like this flamingos we need to shake ourselves up because two months are there to go for the exam and remind ourselves of our goal those two letters before our name that's just a simple goal exactly uh, if i want to climb mount everest what do i need do i need oxygen yes do i need uh, proper gear yes do i need to climb properly yes do i need strength yes but first we don't understand we need the mountain we, we need mount everest <laughs> correct so that we don't know so we understand we don't know what is our goal is our goal ca or is our goal something else right don't know it's easy to tell for me i also didn't have a goal even after clearing ca i had no clue what to do i swear i had no clue what to do i had no idea what to do but one thing i always enjoyed was teaching so that okay good i'll let the torture continue so and remind ourselves of our goal and so that we can spread our wings and chase our goals like this uh, wild ass from run of kutch to majestically triumph like this elephant but of course you all know there's nothing to tell our path will definitely not be easy though it appears to be very colorful it is laden with what webs of deceit you won't even know where you will get caught see movie script <laughs> huh? because though we carefully pick up the nesting material for all our ideas right startup you want to do in in bangalore so we fly down to ensnare our prey but if you see after skimming through in the presence of all these other people around who are all predators like that crocodile there waiting with the hope of catching success and sharing it with our loved ones when we finally think that we have got whatever we want see results at nsc.in when you hit that submit button predators who rest icai who rest while we work hard suddenly attack us and take it all away that's why we should always be alert of the danger looming close by we can never rest because the danger will always be looming close by because sometimes sometimes people your friends etc who feel that we feel that they have our back sometimes betray us happens and bring us down also and at that moment we should think of all other people who will support us all the other monkeys around us right and all our good friends who are our backbones and of course we should fight back with all our might in such a way that the moment we climb down only to climb up obviously to face our aggressors like this and conquer all our fears as well to leap to greater heights and to blend with the surroundings if you see it's completely camouflaged blending and of course camouflage see there's a leopard here right it is beautiful art of camouflaging natural camouflage effect and charge at people who really deserve it and fight for our rights be completely aggressive wherever needed yet be considerate and compassionate let's base our lives on the canon of integrity only then definitely we can walk with pride and confidence and of course at the end of the day guys we can be our own boss even if you are working for somebody else we will work on our terms is what i am trying to tell i am not saying when i say be our own boss start a business no i am just saying that wherever we are working it's a business based on our terms like dave for yesterday i met a guy who was in deloitte he's already reached the his age 34 and has already reached the director level so he said i slog for almost 10 years till 3 am 4 am and then i decided when i became director that i will not work one day also i will get things done brilliant statement yesterday i had gone to the match correct yesterday i had gone to the match evening i met him i made the friend first time i had never met him before he told i have came to the match on a monday i said monday morning how come you are in a match so he said i came because i decided i have slogged enough now i will get things done and my bosses have a problem with me but i had to bring 2 crores business i bought 4 crores so they shut their mouth so very good thing that is the concept of being your own boss right so be strong and yet be different correct don't show this picture to salman khan gone yeah next be indispensable and what because in the sunset of our lives when we look back like 65 year old uncle when you are thinking about your life then the good old days we know that some things it will go wrong and sometimes you can smile but all we do is you know sigh rest if we must guys but the next two months we should never ever quit even not two months even later also because life will teach us to be audacious and survive against all odds it will teach us to find the strength to flow and at least for the sake of our loved ones we should walk with caution and with pride because some day we will mushroom ourselves actually there is nothing there it's actually shit from shit we will mushroom for sure and i definitely end up being a masterpiece of our own life 
so we should never fear because as much as life will you know uh, reprimand us it will teach us also to face the world with our heads held high and wherever we go now will be the center of attraction like this rantambo this tiger everywhere it goes some 30 jeeps will be following and uh, this was one poem which i had read many times you know you also know this the woods are dark and deep and there are many promises to keep so enough sir i want to sleep no is <laughs> what but there is a long way to go before we sleep correct but along the way follow the heart and ultimately in your own way you can rule the world now there are adyu first of all emotionally numb yes we are all numb now 3 days romantically starved yes creatively challenged 100% artistically void yes my drawings look like amiva even mine socially outcast yes we don't have any world we are definitely what ca students correct and life was here quickly 5 minutes cpt we were like this ca students qualified only one person will come out governing bodies are very happy ipcc books do you remember guys dwayne johnson going to icai and getting the books like that correct once i went to for cpt i went there with in my scooter ipcc i couldn't fit only i had to get an auto ca final now they are sending earlier we had to go mini truck yes then in accounting class in class question will be solved like this by the faculty in exam the last like that we know that obviously after account this is the pakka well everybody is arguing whether profit is 2 lakh 50 or 2 lakh 65 i am the only person getting loss 5 lakh 35 all right 5 lakh 35 loss i'll get always and i'll be all, i'll only be right actually during registration ca students please come join wonderful course during exams brock lesner costing where are the working notes in the problem in costing and all if they ask i'll tell sir in the calculator i will not write all those things exemption in costing and all if you get yes four kinds of people in that dirty subject called iska earlier only four there is no other way ipc inter student accounts group 1 full josh by the time itsm comes <laughs> aissm right? this is how it happens itsm first three first one 60 minute don't know what to write i hate that subject that's why i troll it last 20 minutes chumma write whatever then who is a ca student who updates writing my ca inter exams in may again shares the memory one two years later because he'll be writing the same thing after inter what starts after inter ah, this is this picture itself <laughs> ah, article chain. you all know you all faced it nothing to explain pictures speak louder than words right so client will get so much money he will throw trainee we will get this much only these are bank statement 2000 next day 2000 24 entries now 2 has become 3 4 5 but ultimately it's the same so will they increase the stipend what tense is it in english future impossible tense holidays the only holiday we know is what the no new christmas no new year only previous year assessment year that's all these are christmas tree will decorate sleeping position engineering is sleep like that teacher full straight programmer the ca what sleep <laughs> eh, you are dying there somewhere no sleep correct then before uh, behind every successful man there is a woman we know but be, behind every successful chartered accountant who there is an articled assistant all of us are like that only love life if any do we have any love life so we ask our girlfriend do you want to do dinner that where you are going to take me we'll say shanti sagar like are you mad i it's my birthday take me somewhere nice you are a ca student she doesn't know what we are going to so take me somewhere so shanti sagar is not there so where will i take new shanti sagar that's all we can afford no that's it next obviously slap all that happened today my gf said tell me about your relatives now i should see the income tax act <laughs> company is act relatives where two clause 77 no uh, that is the problem now what is one uh, this you leave then next student uh, proposes uh, a girl so the girl says no how can you love me i am one year elder to you so what will you say especially if she is doing say no problem i am your assessment year and you are my <laughs> previous year simple and you will take your girlfriend to watch interstellar movie have you watched the movie interstellar there the hero is telling that one month on this planet is 6 years on earth you will feel okay i should have done my ca year <laughs> anyway it will take 6 years one month i would have finished the only gf i know is what gratuity fund that's all it is then your girlfriend wants to just test you if you are actually husband material and just ask you a simple question osama has five wives and 20 children lalu prasad yadav has one wife but nine children who is better you are a ca you what will you say osama's npv is good <laughs> but lalu's nrr is better correct that's the problem next she also says i read in the newspaper that a widower with nine kids married a widow with seven kids what do you think about it is it good to marry after having so many kids finding love again you said that is not marriage that is amalgamation in the nature of merger right that's how it is then ca final comes syllabus is like that law syllabus you are like this 
right other course students are all enjoying we are dying there so some people will ask what are you studying ca first question which college <laughs> appa one more question deadly which year what which year every year every year we are studying so three years later also we'll be studying the same thing current situation two months to go for the exam this is how we are during ca final last three days i'm seeing i am dying you are laughing exam ulta will happen yes <laughs> but nothing will happen you will also smile don't worry so that this is the best part in law exam everybody is using calculator you have no clue why question also they have not given nothing they have gone then you will ask why you are using yesterday i was calculating whether i will get 39 42 that's all so if you ask a ca student it is you guys what is happiness first is of course when the balance sheet tally second is of course sitting on the chair when no one is uh, you know go to the partner's chair have you done it go to the partner's chair and sat on it yes you should do it if you have not done when no one is in office so heated gold is called ornament beaten copper is called wire compressed carbon is called diamond but all mixed heated beaten and compressed person is called what chartered accountant that is what we want to become how to pass the exam search in google they say we are also searching sundar pichai also doesn't know ca final see cpt <laughs> final obviously we will lose air we will put on weight all that will happen it's fine no problem and then some people obviously after marriage after children the children are like dear ca please pass my daddy correct right? then this is actual picture of the ca uh, books is actually old syllabus new syllabus will not even fit that entire picture there that's how it is it is definitely not easy if you see the actual thing chartered accountants are rich leaders best ca course is very tough difficult so it's not easy guys first year in other courses first year you know we are all pavam final year deadly in ca it is reverse guys <laughs> all right cpt full josh by the time we come to final which temple will go tomorrow we we'll go to tirupati temple yes that all happens reverse complete reverse will happen only in ca so five years there are 50 laws 500 lectures 5000 case laws 50000 sections and almost 5 lakh rules normal person cannot do it rest of us are called what chartered accountants we will definitely do it there is a wonderful definition that i have seen definition of a ca student living a few years of your life like most people won't live like whatever we've been living now so that we can spend the rest of our lives like most people can't correct very simple so the money is one thing guys money will come money will go but really the respect that you get is something different of course if you are coupled with knowledge if you have knowledge they'll respect otherwise you'll like how did this fellow become ca i didn't become he has become that is what happens but if you have knowledge people would respect you and with respect of course money will come money and all is nothing so we should work so hard that one day our signature will be called what normal signature is normal signature but the normal signature on documents will be called as what audited financial statement so basically last part of the discussion there is a tea bag very important discussion here what does a tea bag do first of all what counts is what is inside and not as what outside so you may be you know fat thin whatever you don't care about your appearance now what is inside the stuff that is inside is what matters no one looks at your face anymore leave it you only don't look at your face and what others will look so just concentrate on studies and finish the damn thing off later you can do all this grooming and all that it's up to you later so what counts is obviously not your appearance but definitely what is inside that matters your stuff that you write is what matters the real flavor actually of a tea bag will come only when it gets into hot water the next two months obviously is hot water for us the real flavor will obviously come now only then we should look forward to get into hot water only then our flavor will come out because under pressure we will definitely not succumb but definitely we will do well all indians are op operate on the principle of rockets actually when our behind is on fire we will fly simple so in the next two months it's going to be like that only right anyway yes so tea bag must be porous so though you are you know or, or we are all tea bags we should be porous in the sense that the flavor should come out so we should ensure that we work towards it tea bags will work wherever the they are so you may be in a different position now different uh, mental framework but it will always work sometimes it's better to have one more tea bag so you can discuss with your friends at times if they are like without you know discussing about the how much you studied and all that at least if you have some doubt in certain areas of course you can ask your friend it's always better but one thing we should always remember that somebody always holds the string in a tea bag you can just get thrown out so here in this case ici we should write all the answers which are acceptable to ici you can't write your own you know things in the exam please don't write i feel 
that I think by your thoughts and feelings you should control. After you clear the exam, then you can let out your thoughts and all those things, no problem. And it's all about how good the T is and definitely not the T bag. And eventually, when T bags will need to may, make way and get out. So even I will consider myself as a T bag. So now it is my time to bid goodbye to you guys. All the very best. First of all, it is uh, for me, there is really no tension because I have been doing this since a long time. But for you guys to actually sit for over 20 hours over three days and concentrate for almost six, six and a half hours is something which is amazing. So first of all, hats off to you guys to actually sit because YouTube videos, you can obviously see that particular topic, etc. But I've seen you guys are pushing, you're pushing and sitting. Though your eyes are closing and like, no, let me sit. I'm seeing, I can observe everything here. Though my focus is here, my vision is, I have some other vision here because of these glasses, right? I can see because you, though, though you are obviously, you know, uh, it is difficult for you to sit is after covid etc you never sit like this maybe you never sat down somewhere like this but still you are doing it that shows that zeal that you want to somehow this attempt be done with it and second important thing that i really liked is you have invested three days of your life you know in me you have actually invested see it's not about money it's about investment in time investment is the biggest investment see anyway for me i had to record for me there's nothing I have to record because I have to upload on YouTube. So whether you are there or not there for me, it really doesn't matter. But the thing is for you guys to actually invest three days, which actually shows a lot because though you have just two and a half months, three days you have given. That is a trust that you have in me. I generally don't, uh, you know, have any uh, idol worship, etc. I do not follow. But to me, I am not getting all sentimental or putting some dialogue here. But for me, my student is my God, to be very honest, because if I like buy a house, if I buy a car, if I eat two meals a day, three meals a day, it's only because of you guys, right? When we released a summary book, I, I told my printer, you will uh, print some 300, it's okay. That fellow says, no, I'll print 1000. In one day, 400 got sold, right? And now in two weeks, 1000 got sold. So the thing is, it is not anything that I did or something, it's the blessing that you have given. So I always believe that some random student, that each of you, all of you, there's no face to it. But a student is a teacher's God, to be very honest with you. The thing is, obviously you have pay, uh, placed that faith in me and they have come. You have invested time. Actually, if I had charged 50, 100 also, you would have paid. That's not the point. But you have invested time. Time will never come back. So 20 plus hours you have invested. So I genuinely would want you to not only clear the exam, but also minimum. How much you want? To, how much you want? Ah, six, 65 plus, let's be realistic, 65 plus, 65 plus is something that I genuinely want you to definitely score because to me, you are like my God. Generally, when, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, Bhakt will go, Bhakt means don't take the other meaning, yeah, the real, when he goes to the temple, etc., he will see the God here. For me, it's reverse. I am standing on the stage and I am seeing all of you here. It's genuine, it's genuine feeling from my heart, guys. I'm not, I'm not a liar. I don't you know, all do all these dialogues and all that. But the thing is, you guys also have actually spent that time, which is incredible for me. So thank you so much. Actually, I, that time I told you for me, it doesn't matter. But for me, it matters. It's easier to record when people are there because I don't concentrate on this at all. I tried recording on my own. I died. It, nothing went in. It's very difficult. But with all of you around, it's very easy. Time will just fly. I don't realize how time flew. It's already almost five o'clock every year, every day around six and a half, seven hours of recording. So thank you for coming that way in Bangalore, uh, you know, na navigating the traffic. So on that note, all the best guys. So keep in touch. Don't be strangers and all that. Keep in touch. I may not recognize, I'll definitely when I see you, I'll recognize your face. But somewhere outside when you see some time, come and talk. Don't act like strangers. Because even I don't realize, like that day I was there, somebody came and told me I'm from a student from Kerala. Obviously, I've never seen that student, right? But of course, definitely we will. Top. So keep in touch and I am 100% sure this is just a means to the end. You will definitely clear CA. There are larger things waiting for you. All the best. But please ensure that you clear the exam. Do not give up at any cost. Okay, this attempt maybe you cannot do. It's okay. Next attempt, do not give up. Wonderful course, personal experience, wonderful course it is. You will get that financial security which no other course will give. You are already there, invested 4-5 years of your life. Let's say you're getting married now. Let's say something is happening. That's all secondary. Finish the damn course, whatever it takes, right? You have to finish it. 
because then the financial security you get nobody can beat it sir my father is loaded my mother is loaded it's okay you do it for your own good because the financial security that you get if you earn money that is something different money is not everything but without money you cannot live but apart from that one more extra thing is respect that you will only get if you get those two letters before your name if you are knowledgeable but not a ca you will it will kill you there is no need to die only you are already dead you will be buried 20 years 30 years later but you are already dead that's a problem you all are knowledgeable but you are not cas you will become cas very soon but the other way around qualification without knowledge that is also very dangerous right on that note thank you so much guys see you all the best bye all the best thank you study well do